welcome to Sewing Court. So it's been a whirlwind of a morning here today. I can tell you, we've got people running around, things going on, but unfortunately wearing a dress that Paul Clark is demonstrating this morning. So I've been very lucky to uh, not have to worry about wardrobe. And I've also got this gorgeous cushion that Jess is making in this first hour. So we've got this lovely Dresden cushion that we'll be focusing on this morning with Jess. Should we have a look at the menu of what's coming up on today's show? Let's see. So at eight o'clock, as I said, is the Dresden cushion with Jess Entwistle. I'm spoiled, we've got two guests today. Then nine o'clock is the dress that I'm wearing. It's the Ponte Roma dress with Paul Clark. Then 10 o'clock, we're doing a Tilda person bag, again with Jess. And 11 is an infinity scarf and bag with Paul. So we have got bags galore today. In fact, I could do a bit of a, a, bit of a catwalk of all the bags. I'll, sh I'll show you a few of the bags that are coming up this morning. We've got this gorgeous little Tilda bag. We've got a clutch bag as well, which are really lovely. These are from the springtime Tilda book, which we'll be doing at 10. And then I've got some more sneaky ones under here. We've got another bag that we're doing at 11 with Paul, which is a nice, slightly bigger bag, more of a, uh, it would be lovely for sort of a shopper. And then we've also got the infinity scarf, which is one of those really, you know, the big loops. So when the scarf is a circle rather than, it's a good time of year for a scarf, isn't it? It always just jazzes up an outfit a bit. So this is the one that Paul's made. Sort of a transitional scarf as well with this cotton. So as it starts to hopefully get a little bit warmer, you can obviously loop that over if you want to and wear it wrapped around or just hanging, draping all the way down. Quite a nice way to jazz up a plain outfit as well. So we're doing that at 11. So we've got a really lovely morning coming up. Let's just pop all of these back in the trolley. We've got things everywhere. But as I said, we're doing the Dresden cushion. This is the first thing that's coming up this morning. But first of all, we love to hear from you. So if you're new, maybe you're joining us on Sky, we love you to get in touch. So if you head to the Sewing Quarter website, and you just click on the watch icon at the top of the page. So that's sewingquarter.com. And just there on the right hand side, so underneath that live feed of today's show, there's a message to the studio box there. So you can, you can send us a message if you've got, maybe you've got questions. As I said, we're really lucky to have Jess and Paul in this morning. So any questions for them, you can do that there. And then on the left hand side, you'll see there'll be all of the products from today's show. So as we go through, they'll be loaded in like a big long shopping list of all of the products. So at the moment, those are yesterday's. Now we're live on air, those products will start to update with, with the bags and the scarf and the Dresden cushion and things. So if you want to add things to your basket, you can do that at the top of the page and then check, check them out. Now also you can get in touch via email. So if you want to send us a picture, Come on, let's do bags today. Spoil me with your bag pictures. What, what, what have you made? Send us your pictures of your bags, studio at sewingquarter.com. I want to see box bags, tote bags, clutch bags, whatever you've made. I'd love to see those and we'll show some on air so you can send them in this morning to that address here at the studio. Now that goes straight upstairs to our producer, Hannah, and then we have a tablet on our desk on the other side so I can read those here live in the studio. So like I say, if you've got questions for Jess or Paul, we can get those answered on air as well. Now, we've got a special offer for you this morning, so I'm going to kickstart with that. So I'm just going to move these bundles just a little bit over. They're all beautifully folded by our floor manager, Chris. So our bundle this morning is a really fantastic saving. This is absolutely brilliant for building your stash. It's all about fat quarters. Now, we know you love your fat quarters. Great for your quilting, but also great if you want to mix and match some fabrics, maybe um, for patchwork, for lining things, as blenders. So you can add these to your stash. And this bundle... I'm going to pop all of those. Look at those. You're going to get all of these in this. So you're going, it's sort of an essential collection of yellows, greens, and blues. But you don't just get solids. You also get some batik style uh, prints. So I'm going to show you some of those. Let's go for the lovely sunshine yellow. So this offer is for today only. So it's only till eight o'clock on Saturday morning. So it'll be 24 hours. So that's an example of one of these anthology, 100% cotton fat quarters just as an idea for size. So you get 36 spring colors. So you get 12 yellows, 12 greens, 12 blues. You've got some lovely solids in there as well. I'll just flick through the yellow pile so you can see. But some of them have got that really lovely, almost like a tie dye effect. So it, ha it just adds a little bit of something a bit more interesting, a bit more depth and something to catch your eye. So not only do you get all of those in yellow, you get the essentials in greens and blues. And then you also get in this bundle pinking shears. 
So these are the sewing quarter pinking shears. These are our own branded scissors. So these are great for finishing off edges, perhaps if you don't want to um, overlock them or if you don't want to hem something, it's quite a quick, easy way of making sure your edges aren't going to fray. So these sewing, sewing quarter pinking shears and the 36 essential fat quarters, so in those three different colorways, these are anthology fat quarters, all bundled together for you, a special price, today only, here we go, 124.96. So you save 25 pounds. We're incredibly limited on stock on this bundle, but we wanted to bring it to you today. Let's cheer up your Friday mornings. We know the anthology fat quarters are really, really popular, particularly in these essential colors. So ones that you're always gonna need. Look at these gorgeous blues as well. All of these lovely different shades. And these are colours that we're really finding the most popular at the moment as we head into spring. Obviously your yellows and greens as well. Just cheering you up. You've got forest greens there. You've got spearmint greens, lime greens. Really gorgeous. And these are lovely cut quality, 100% cotton. So ideal for quilting as well. So we thought we'd just start with that. A special treat for your Friday morning as we head into the weekend. So maybe if you want to treat yourself, I'm just going to pass those over to our floor manager, Chris. Here we go. There we go. Look at that massive bundle, loads of them. I want to stash with all of those in. Thank you. Okay, so today we're making this cushion with Jess. So this is the Dresden cushion. A really lovely, it's a really traditional design, that Dresden design. Some people maybe call it a sunflower or a sunburst. And it's, um, oh, the cushion's moved to the other side, but we're making it from this book. So this is from Quilt Petite. And there are loads of different patchwork projects in here. So I'll show you the page. This is a new book to us here at Sewing Quarter, but I'll show you the Dresden cushion that you can see there. Really beautiful design. This is a very pretty book. This is how I would describe it. It's got really beautiful photography, nice clear color instructions and diagrams. Look at you as you're going through all of those steps of those. I love when it's broken down into detailed steps rather than just sort of skimming. It really does go into some nice detail, but loads of different patchwork projects in there and that quite a few of our designers have done as well. Let's have a look at the bundles that we've got for that cushion this morning. Now I'm going to start with the pink bundle. So this is our pink and green. So we've got three different bundle options for the Dresden cushion this morning. All of these have three meters of fabric in. So you get six fabrics, you get half a meter of all six, uh, six designs. So you've got these beautiful um, Macau solids on the bottom here and your linear textures. And you've also got designer prints included in these. So that's beautiful in your powder pinks and peaches. Introducing more of a, a, um, a dusty pink there and your greys and polka dot too. So that's your greys and pinks. The next bundle, another three meter bundle, so six fabrics. So you've got your tilde fabric in this one. This is the cushion that, Joe's, um, that Jess has already made up. So you can see that there with your floral. And this is a tilde print here too in your spearmint. Tilda, Tula, and then you've got your linear look fabrics and your spot-ons and ginghams as well. So lilacs and mint. And then our last three meter bundle, this is um, what Jess is making with this morning and I'm pretty sure she'll say what she said to me this morning. This is like an Oreo bundle because you've got lovely sort of creams and then also some um, charcoals as well. But you've got um, honey colors too, which are really lovely. So you've got this ochre fabric with the blossom and then you've got honey bees. And then you've got your black and whites. So some nice monochrome colors there as well. A really lovely collection of yellows and blacks. That one's already going in baskets. It's kind of like a bee, isn't it? Black and white. You've got all your lovely yellows there as well. Now I'm going to take the uh, book over with me. This is the one that's got the Dresden cushion in. So this is the quilt petite book. Let's go over to Jess and get cracking with that. So this is what we're making. That's the cushion that Jess has made. And we've got that here on our desk this morning. That's in the lilac and mint bundle. Morning, Hello, Jess. Mm. And we're back. We are. Back you look in, very nice in your in dress. Full dress. It's a lovely I like dress. That I don't have to think about what I'm going to wear. Just come in and get spoiled. No, it looks really nice. I actually really do like that one. I thought it's also the fact that it's got panels on the side. It's quite slimming as it's, well. Yeah, it's a flat. Not that you cut. need that well, at all. But no, it's, it's, it's a flat. Really cut. nice cut. Neckline as well. Fact, it's got little darts there as well. I think it's lovely. Really nice. Nine o'clock. This one. Nine o'clock. Nine. Nice, nice neckline too. Yeah, it's like. lovely. A bit more interesting. Right. Okay. This book. Is, yes. It's a really. Book. Oh yes, I will set one. Um, I love it when I get sent a book because it, you, you go, oh, you go through all of it. <laughs> Not it's, a photocopy. No, it's really, really, it's a really nice book as well. It looks really pretty on the shelf. It's got a lovely sort of 
that lovely soft pink on the side, on the spine. But they've got some lovely projects and some really nice templates in the back as well. I always love a template, as you know. <laughs> so, um, oh, little, little things. What are they? Cakes, I suppose. They've got houses. So many different ones at the back. And, of course, your, your, your basic templates are always really useful to have those. Look, see, really so the, nice. With all of these, you've got your templates in the back of the book yes. ready to go, so you don't have to worry about... That's lovely as well, yeah. That's, yeah, that's really kind nice. of a twist on yeah, the dress. Yeah, really like twist. shortened. Really, um, have like a little daisy or something. That's yeah. really pretty. That's cute. So they've got some really nice um, uh, templates, as you can see. Uh, those are the ones which we actually use for the Dresden. Okay, talk yeah. About. That reminds me of the rugby. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a rugby, isn't it? So the actual Dresden one is on page 24. I think it's one of the first ones we come to. Lots of instructions in the front about how to do things. Um, so you've got English paper piecing te techniques, all that sort of stuff here. Uh, always useful. It's just so we're starting with techniques in the front yeah, of the book and then the moving into projects. I mean, it's always really useful to have those just in case because sometimes you may not have them or if you're giving it as a gift. So we, and there's, there's, there's the cushions here. You can see it's a slightly different colour way as well. That's but I, lo I, love, I love the way they've actually got little details here as well. Really pretty the, the way they've actually both. Yeah, the styling really, yeah, is lovely in this really book. Nice. Really, really nice. Um, it's a pretty book. That's it is. It's a pretty book. I love it when you get it. It's yeah. pretty. I love pretty books. Pretty, pretty as well. Like. So all the details are what you actually need to cut out. Um, and then really clear instructions of how to assemble your various pieces, put it all together and finish off. So I love that. Because to me, 19 steps means that's comprehensive. Yeah. That means it's actually telling you, holding your hand yeah, through the process. Yeah, and some of them are really quite small, like do this, and you think, oh, right, ticket. You, you, you but you feel satisfaction yeah, going, oh, it's strike that one off the list. Really, really nice. Done that yeah. one. And then, of course, you've got the next project, which I love. Oh, there's the rugby. Yes. Um, I think so, Lucy might have done. I think Lucy might she might have done, done that one. Yeah, Lucy's Liberty made Prince, that one. Gorgeous Liberty Prince. So it's, it's a really, it's a nice eye candy book. I yes. thought. It's a really nice, pretty one. We all need a bit of inspiration, don't yeah, we? Yeah, especially in January when it's a bit... A bit drab. Yeah, it's a bit boring and horrible and a bit... <laughs> no one's got any money and all that lot of hate it. I know. Anyway, so um, Valentine's, of course, coming up in two weeks and it will come fun again. This is what I just was thinking with heart, with sort of hearts and, and oh, reds. Oh, sort of I know. Really, really pretty. So... How do we get started with how the we get started? Dresden then? Um, obviously, you cut out all your fabrics. First, we choose which ones you're going to do. So we have, as we've got... We've got this it, one the, that you made. That one's lovely in the sort of lilacs. I love this one. Can you see... Can you zoom in? If you turn that round, you zoom in on this print. Really pretty. You think it looks like marble, then you loo and you've got a bug and a bear and, oh. a, and a bee. Oh, is that? No, it's a hair. Oh, no, there's a hair there. Can you see? Really, I mean, you get that detail. There it is. There's the little hair. And then really, you've got really nice fabric. This is a fabric. Tudor pink fabric. It's really different. Um, so you can either keep it, and you start go and you think, oh, I love that. It's a little detailing. That'd be lovely if you picked it out in embroidery. She's coming in. Is she? Yeah. Oh, she is, isn't she? Yeah, in, in, in February. It's the 7th of February. We've got Tula Pink, the designer of this fabric. We have loads of her fabrics here on the show, so oh, we can do, ask her you? sort of her sort of inspiration and what you, inspires you think her something to... oh, that's really su quite subtle, and then you just put that in. I think, oh, I love that because it just goes, ooh, it's a bit of interest. And that's the joy of fussy cutting as well, yes. isn't it? Because you can take that section, and in terms of, like you said, when that sits up like that, you, you just can go, see oh, that print. Your, your eye goes just go to straight it. into it. It's really, really nice. But the mint and lilac bundle, so you've got that Tudor fabric, but you also get a Tilda fabric in this one that's in the main, uh, the circle section. Then you've got your uh, ginghams and spot-ons and linear look fabrics as well. So those are all Macawa. So what I decided to do was I decided to keep it quite sort of... Um, sort of neutral on the outside and then have the pop of colour and then when you turn it over with the envelope back... There we go. There you go. Um, so, so whatever you actually want is just whatever you floats your boat. I actually quite liked it on the um, on the linear. I thought that really quite pretty on this this lovely. What colour is that? Like a soft mint? Yeah, maybe sort yeah, of. Yeah, I was having so much grey. Got grey yeah, tones. It is to real it. nice grey tones. So I was having fun sort of playing with that. It's that, that's part of the fun. Is is just playing how you actually want to do. And you do have because you're fussy cutting, you do have quite a lot of fabric depending on what you use left over for your stash. I was just about to say, so you've got three metres of fabric, you yes. get half a metre of each of those. Did you have a fair, a fair amount left? Oh, yes, a fair amount. Because um, a lot of the, apart from fussy cutting uh, sort of these details, I was got a little heart on there. I've just realised a little heart on the, on the little bug. Um, <laughs> you can just see a tiny little heart. It's very cute. There it is. But it, it depends on which one you actually like. You do use for the quilting, you've got the plain, you do actually have that as a sandwich. So you're actually quilt uh you've actually got the cotton on the inside as well yeah but you've still got enough of that left over it's, there's loads there's loads left over especially if you're only using little bits of this so it's a really nice stash builder and of course with this design bonus. you've got it coming off you could decide to have one in the middle however you actually want or you could decide to, to sort of like scale it up and make quilt or centralize it it's up to you yeah it, whatever you it? actually fancy because it, it's it gives you the templates for both so what i, I would so the fun you're making with yeah I, mean, I, I, I call this when i first saw this fabric 
Come I on, thought, what do you call it, honey, Jess? Honey, because this is gorgeous. I hadn't seen this one before. This is really cute for fussy cutting. It's got little... It's a bit quite sweet. It's got things like my queen bee, be my everything. It's quite, so it's quite. <laughs> I love it's the little really, part, like, twists on words. Yeah, what's that say? Be, oh, be, be welcome in our kingdom. In our king, love that. Oh, I love that. Can I imagine like that embroidered? <laughs> be welcome in our kingdom. You are my queen bee. It's really, really that pretty. Is lovely. It's really, really pretty. So I quite like the idea of that. As, you can have that as the back. Um, but I decided to have this just as a cent central circle, and then sort of decide which saying I want people to see. We're just going to look at the bundle. So this is everything that you get in there. You've got three metres of fabric. So you've got that bee fabric that uh, Jess just mentioned. But then you've also got the um, other, the, this is the most popular one already, flying out this morning. So if you do like that one, please do check it out. You've also got the ochre fabric there with that lovely blossom. You've got some geometric prints in uh, black and white as well. So that's Tim Holtz. And then you've also got your yellow spot on. So a really lovely uh, yellow and black collection there as well with some white team teamed in with that too. It is really lovely, and this, I, I, when I first saw this, I thought Oreo biscuits. Yeah. It does look like Oreo <laughs> biscuits to me. And this looks like peanut butter. So this For is breakfast. my, this is my, yeah, a bit, bit much, but hey, there we go. <laughs> so the, what's the first step we've making? The first step is the, you actually piece everything. So you follow your templates. I know we've been talking about this the other day, so we'll just do it very quickly. Yeah. Um, for English paper piecing. So let me just get some bits out here. So English paper piecing, we've done a lot of this on the show recently, but this is all about, it gives you that precision, it gives you really lovely crisp edges so that that shape's maintained on the front of the cushion rather than the, the petals sort of becoming a bit skew with or yeah. a bit slightly misshapen. So it's also a really nice thing to do if you want to do something by hand. It's a nice technique. Yeah, yeah, I mean, sort of you just sit, I mean, get cosy and do yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, um, I did the, the prep work for this yesterday afternoon off the show and I just sat there and was chatting to people and was actually sort of uh, piecing the actual sample I'll show you in a minute. Um, and it was quite quick, really good fun. So first of all, you trace your templates, however you actually want. I know we have that lovely, um, I don't know what the paper's called, but I don't know if we still have it, the plastic sheeting we've had before. Where yes. you can do temp I don't know if it's still stuff in stock because I know we did it the other day. Okay. So if you have, get it because you, you can just keep your templates forever. Otherwise, you end Whip up with bits of... Out. Otherwise, you've got your tracing paper. I tend to then trace, cut out my trace and then transfer it onto cardboard because I don't have the plastic sheeting. I'm going to get some when it comes <laughs> back in. So those are my templates. There we go. Um, the circle ones, you don't need to cut that out. I'll tell you that in a minute. So that's a slightly separate one. So these two here, you've got the small and large petal. This is all in the book, which is that bottom graphic on your screen, uh, the Quilt Petite book. So you can take both of those petal type shapes. What I was saying as well, it almost looks a bit like a sunshine or a, sun, it does. a sunburst. It you does. call it different things. Um, not just you could also, them. if you wanted to, just do like three petals and a little one. So it looks a bit like a dandelion puff or something. Oh, that would yeah, look really gonna, pretty. Yeah. That's, that's pretty. So um, what you then do is you then use your template to trace your outline. I know when Victoria did English paper piecing the other day, she used a ruler to, to add on an extra quarter inch all the way around for your fabric. Yeah. Um, I don't tend to do that because I uh, hadn't actually thought of it. I thought that was actually a really nice idea. But <laughs> also, my, tem yeah, my templates, I tend to, to sort of like do it by eye. Um, but if you're actually keeping your templates, that is a brilliant idea. I love that. And I do actually have that ruler. I did actually buy that, that at um, Quarter's quarter. Ruler. At a Quarter Ruler from Sewn Quarter when I saw it on air. <laughs> I use that a lot. So I've actually traced mine, um, the outline bit here. I was just going to cut one out. Okay. So just um, by eye writing just, a quarter of an inch. Uh, no, no, no. Sorry. You're not going just, to, yeah, not, no, I'm doing that on fabric. Sorry. I'm just going to cut this out very quickly. Well, you cut, we've had a message in from Rachel. Morning, Rachel. And you're in the West Midlands, so you must be near us. Um, morning, lovely ladies. I've got this book. So this is the uh, Quilt Petite book. And it's such a beautifully illustrated book, and I can't wait to make everything in it. So yeah, absolutely, is what we were saying. Oh, it it's is a, lovely. It's a really beautifully styled book. The photos are really, really pretty and lovely bright colours. And they don't skimp on photos or pictures of, you know, the part makes and step-by-step -step instructions. They're just, they're just so, and a lot of those fabrics I've actually seen, and some of them I actually own. Uh, when you sort of a fabric hoarder, as I think most of us are, then you say, oh, I've seen that one. Oh, I've got that one. Oh, Take pride and be like, I've yeah. got that. Oh, I'll have a go. I've got the fabric that's in the book. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Look at me. Um, so what you then do is you have your paper piece. I'm going to use my Oreo because I love the Oreo. Okay. But you use your, as you can see, this card, as you go along, it gets a bit sort of, ridged around the edge Something because it, a little yeah bit this is why the plastic ones are brilliant yeah so you can get your hands on one get get some sheeting it's a brilliant idea especially if you're doing a lot of templates so i'm just going to uh draw around that make sure you've got a, enough around the outline outside so you can actually fold that over okay so um this is the bit where you fussy cut which is why if you do actually uh have a plastic sheeting really good way of actually working out where you want your prints to be so you can see through 
That's particularly relevant when you're using, say, that print we were saying that had the B um, yes. sort of quotes on. You really want to be fussy about which section of fabric you cut for that because you want to get, you know, like with the um, the Tudor pink one where you've got the bug and the little rabbit, you want to choose Yeah, you want to see, exactly. Which is why when you first trace, if you don't actually have the sheeting, when you first trace it onto tracing paper, you sort of put that around and have a play and then you yeah. work out how you want Figure it. Figure out where you want it to be. So I'm just um, cutting about quarter of an inch to... Uh, quarter inch to a centimetre on the outside. This you actually don't see, so it doesn't have to be completely exact. So I'm just going to do that. And then using this is brilliant. I have a, this is a glue pen. Yeah. I used a different one for, um, because I, I couldn't find this. Let me see if I've got um, And I don't, I didn't actually have one before. Uh, I used a different one no. to do my piecing on that, which uh, was fine, but it was nowhere near as quick as when I pieced this yesterday. This is genius. It is a blue pen. Um, the colour vanishes, it dries. It doesn't leave any residue or anything at all. The it's designers like, always washy, requesting. Washy, washy this is why I'm laughing. This is They're always brilliant. like, can we get the sewing line pen? Oh, I <laughs> love this pen. So I, that is funny. I, as I say, I do buy from Sewing Quarter. I will be buying this. <laughs> so it's very important to buy a kit for your stash, especially well, if you're going to do oh, more and more of this. You can't do the job properly if you, you can't haven't do got the right properly, pen. No. And of course, this lovely uh, brown pen, I use, use it all the time. It disappears. It is brilliant. So, so the glue line pen, this is from Sew Line. There so you go. It, as Jess was saying, it's blue. So you can see exactly where you're putting it on, but it does dry. It's not going to leave yeah. uh, a residue on the... And, it, and even, if you, even if you get glue on the fabric, or you get glue on the fabric, obviously, it, it doesn't leave any mess at all. You can wash it. You can sew through it. It doesn't gunk your needle. It is fab. So I'm just going to place that on the line. Uh, it doesn't have to be too exact, as long as there's enough fabric going around the outside. And then I'm just going to glue on the paper, do a line. Obviously, the other option over. for EPP or English paper piecing is to baste it. And that some people really, you know, do really enjoy doing that and to sit in front of the TV and sew it or whatever. But it's a bit obviously it's more time consuming. And if you are trying to do this slightly more quickly, um, you can see how quite just how quickly Jess is able to apply the fabric to the template, to the paper inside. And it holds, this thing, you press it down and it is holding. And um, the wonderful thing about this is I did find with my, the, my own, the own glue, the only one I could find, I had to sort of leave it a while before I could sew. With these, you can sew as soon as you stuff it Straight down. Straight away. Straight away. There's, there's no faffing about. So I know um, for anyone who, who commutes on a train, you've got a little train. Yeah, like, just take brilliant. it on the go. Absolutely brilliant. And you actually feel well, like you're doing something. it's just the size of a something. pen. You can see it there. That's the fabric glue pen. You get a refill in there as well. Um, so you can, you know, no different if you've got a a little, um, I wouldn't say compartment in your bag. You can just take it on the go with you. Yeah, it is fab. I mean, look, there you go. Done. So pop that back really, in. That I know is, Victoria said great. the other day, she tends to, when you, it comes as a flat, obviously, like a, like a, 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 pre, comes, a print stick or a yeah. little flat lipstick. Um, so do it on the edge because then you build up a nice point. I know that some people do it flat and then you end up with residue of glue going around the outside and yeah. you waste your glue. So better to just yeah. try and create a bit of a point with it. But so five ninety nine, it is just a really simple, easy, and it's not, you know, it, it doesn't have a smell or anything. It's no, not like a toxic glue. It's not like a, a, te a strong textile glue. So here we have one I prepared earlier. Here we go, blue piece um, style. So One other thing, just quickly, you can still take your paper out afterwards. Some people leave yeah. their paper in, some people like to take it out. It doesn't stop you from being able to tear that if you want to. It, it isn't. It's really, um, really quick. So um, obviously, before you actually start cut, cutting out, you work out your design. So once you've actually worked out all your design, when I've actually done all mine ready like this, I'll always lay them out in front of me so I can refer to them. Because when you start piecing them, sometimes you might get them in the wrong order. Yeah. So work out how you want it to be. So just find it in the book. In the book. 24, I think, the page is. Okey doke. You got there it? Go. There, we there you go. And this one, um, so I'm just going to this lovely thread which comes with the bundle. I think you can see the thread on. There's a thread with the bundle? I'm not sure if there is. It's just fabric in those bundles. It's, it's three fabric. meters. Yeah. So yeah, I'm use because obviously using lots of different prints, you don't actually see your thread. So I'm trying to thread this um, under lights. Let me cut that end off. Um, you don't actually see your thread. So you use a neutral or anything which actually blends in with your fabric. So this isn't about drawing attention to the... Um, yeah, no, because you, you're just piecing to it together. Blender. So I'm doing it. I've got it. So you've got this. You, you put them to, to actually piece this one. You're piecing along the long edges. So what I do is I place them on top of each other so I can see that the edges here line up. Just make sure they do actually line up so one's not longer than the other. It doesn't matter about the end bits. That's going to be covered up by your lovely uh, circle focal point. Line them up and then start at the top where the, the, the long edge is in there, not en on the end of your, of your thread. You're not going to see the knot, so it doesn't matter if it's a big knot. And then just piece it through. Nope, go through too fast. 
and just go all the way down like this. Now, straight away, the thing that people love about English paper piecing is it's therapeutic. It is the sort it of thing is. you can just... I always think sewing is therapy once anyway. You, once you get into that rhythm of doing it and you you can quite quickly start to build something, but you know you've got the precision and the accuracy because you put the paper in there, so you really get that lovely yeah. shaping. And you can do... I, I like, like these ones because it's, it's quite, quite a big um, piece. I have uh, an ongoing hexagon quilt, which when I... I'll, I'm not actually doing anything else, which unfortunately I'm doing loads of stuff. <laughs> um, I go back to, and that's tiny little he hexagon pieces of paper, and it is therapy. You just sit there, glue a whole load. Um, and with this, with this paper, I just want to say... Um, they say, you know, th sew through the edge of the fabric, not sew through the paper. You usually end up sewing through the paper. It doesn't matter. You're not going to see it and it pulls out because it's just okay. paper. So, and this is just ordinary, plain photocopier paper. And as you were saying before, the glue isn't leaving a residue on the no. needle. It's not becoming sticky. It's not becoming difficult to go through. Jess is still able to quite easily... Very easily go all the way through to the end. So once we've stitched all of those together... Yeah, what's it... We're running out of time. Once you stitch, imagine you go all the way through there, to the end and just not at the end. And then you end up with something like that. So Lovely. you can see you don't actually see any of the um, stitching. So then once you do that and you make 12, however you actually want to do your prints, with that particular one with the Dresden cushion, I mixed them. I, I did, I think I did uh, three of some, four of others, that sort of thing. So I did... Just pick and choose. Yeah, just pick and choose. So... Is, and and I sort of, then I sort of change the different order how I actually want them to do that slightly sort of slightly more different, should we say? Whereas the one I've actually they made change now, more quickly, don't yeah, they, they do. The one I've actually made here, I follow oh, the actual pattern. I love those colours together. Really, really pretty. I decided to do these, the actual prints here, and then the honeybee for the centre, and then uh, layer it on the white. So I'll just get the just white. Just to interrupt you, Jess, this one is flying out. The yellow and black bundle is really, really popular. So just to warn you, um, you get three metres of fabric. So you get six different prints. You get half a metre of all of those. You can see them in that... Um, in the flower there that Joe, uh, Jess, why do I keep calling, I've got Joe on the brain. Oh, well, well that's a direct Jess. thing, I don't mind. <laughs> Sorry, about? Sorry, Jess. That's all right. um, so yeah, you've got those six fabrics there in black and yellow and, and your whites as well, but that's really, really popular, that bundle. So if you do like it, you can give the call centre a ring, 0800 112 4433. And you can see them just how they come together really beautifully there in the Dresden. I know that Paul said he really liked um, this, this, this particular print. The, uh, the Tim Holtz, but you can see on the white, it looks really nice. And if you wanted to do, if you wanted to do cu a cushion, if you w wanted to get some more plain fabric, because you, you have enough of this to carry on fussy cutting to m make loads of little plates, you could make a little mini quilt, sort of that sort of size. It would look oh, really pretty. In. Yeah, and, and just change the, the different sort of um, look. So that, that is that. I've given that a quick press. Okay. You can see the back looks like that. So you still got your paper in there at you the moment. You your paper in there. Um, so I tend to give that press and just put it to one side and then you do your central bit which is the um, honeybee which I printed yeah. so you can see that's going to look really pretty like that so what you do with this it tells you in the instructions to cut a seven inch square of this and a seven inch square of that um, just so you've actually got your fabric so I've just actually cut a little bit you need um, your fabric and then you need a piece of iron-on interfacing so one with the sticky side yeah I've just, this is actually cut off from my 10 o'clock show. <laughs> you see, that's from a bag. We spoil yeah, the spirit we go. Of yeah, I just put a whole pile <laughs> of stuff. So um, what you actually do is, I'm just give that a quick press so it's nice and okay. smooth. With this particular oh, design... Oh, the iron isn't on. I don't know whether that... It's, it goes really quick though, that okay. iron, isn't it? Um, what you actually do is you... Let me just cut a bit, slightly smaller bit. You trace around your circle template. Yeah. With this particular one, the big um, circle template is for the big flower and obviously the small for the smaller. If you, if you wanted to, you could make the small one to go around there. So however it just depends you, how much of yeah, the Yeah, however you, you actually want to, want to do. Um, so I'll just give that a quick press, not that obviously, just okay. give this one a quick press. I'll just show you those size options. So you've got the, um, the two circle template in the book. Both of these are in the back of the book, but just depending how much of the, the petals really you want to expose, you could just pop a different circle in the middle. And I'll just show you there those templates in the back of the book. Those are all here. So you could just photocopy those or trace them straight off. So it's at this point, um, if you were deciding to fussy cut your middle, depending on if you've got a plain print, doesn't matter, but if you've got an, an image you really like, uh, you work out where you want it to be, so what, what you actually want to see. Because the thing about this is because it's going to have interfacing underneath it, 
it will it will be quite solid. Yeah, so it'll be quite yeah, prominent. Quite to read that yeah, text. exactly. It's not going to be so sort of see through like that. So I'm just going to pick one with. It's got little crowns on and everything. It's <laughs> really pretty. I'll just Although, pick that one. Let's not get into hay fever season just yet. Oh, are you, do you suffer from hay oh, fever? It oh, I mad. don't. It drives me absolutely oh, no, mad. Oh, that's horrible. Put it that way around. Um, oh, no, that's, I, I think... Uh, yeah, I love of, bees, but I just do not enjoy them. <laughs> one of my like friends suffers fever. really badly with hay fever. That's, oh, that's I never horrible. had it as a child, ever. Really? I only oh, developed no. it in the last couple of years. Really? I yeah, you could get it, Jess. You could catch it. <laughs> oh, but I'm, I'm really ancient. Surely I've missed all this now. While you um, just trace around that, I'm just going to show you the pom-poms as well. So we've got, you might be able to notice on the uh, finish cushion that Jess has done here on the front of the desk, if you can just see those there. It's got that lovely trim on it, which just gives it that nice professional finish. It goes with, they, these pom-poms go really beautifully with loads of little projects in the book. So if you wanted to maybe add them to a quilt, you could add them to the trim of a bag, you could add them to a dress. Yeah. Even you could oh, have... Oh, cute. I've, I've, I'm quite... Cat quite like for summer. Yeah. Oh, yes. That'd be really nice. So we've got three different colours in the, um, the pom-pom trim. So it comes on a nice wooden spool, which I really like, just as a decorative thing you can have in your workroom. Lucy collects wooden spools, one of our designers. But this is the cream one, first of all. So this is what we um, have used on the lilac and mint cushion. And you ha did you have enough on one spool for the whole cushion? I did, enough, and then there was about that much left so over. So a small length was yeah, left over length. as well. So you've got your cream. You've got your grey, which is what I would, would look definitely love. Oh, that would look so pretty. That, yeah, I did like that. It looked really lovely. So this is the, the yellow and black is the really popular bundle this morning. If you do want to add a trim to it, the grey would go beautifully. You get two metres on this spool. In fact, let me just show you. That would look divine, wouldn't look it? Look at that. That's really, really nice. Really and lovely. And even if, if you want to just put, oh, can you imagine it on the edge of this? That would look, oh, look, look at that. Oh, Ooh, isn't you that, could even can trim you imagine that, yeah. if you've got like sort of an elephant velvet cushion? Oh, I mean, no. so far, that would look really pretty on you there. You could even do the body of the cushion in that fabric. Well, I, and then I you almost just, did it. Yeah, yeah I undernarred and I thought a little shirt better on white. But it does, I mean, if you look at the actual fabric, let's have a look. It is. Let's have a look. On. It's just gorgeous. Let's get that out and then we'll put this on top just so you can see. So you could mix and match in your bundle. Look at you could, that. You could play, yeah, that's that is, that, And then you put the trim on. It's just, it's just heaven, isn't it? Sorry, I just love That's this That's the print. thing. You can, with the three metres of fabric, because you've got six and you've got half a metre of all of those, you can interchange them as, as you wish. So you can, you can choose those. And I've just got the green pom-poms to show you finally as well. Oh, we're just going to show the bundle of fabric first. I'm being instructed to me because it's going really quickly. So you do need to check out your baskets on the yellow and black. J-O-G-C-88 for the yellow and black Dresden cushion bundle. You get six different fabrics there, three metres in total. It's, the time's going so quickly this morning. Know, we'll we're, we're, we're running out of time. That's all right. We'll be very, very quick. So We've got green pom-poms. Just last thing. If you do want to add those, then you've got that as an alternative option. So you get two metres again on that wooden spool there. It's a lovely lime green, isn't it? It's like a pistachio. It's, yes, pistachio. I love, can imagine making paint colour names. That'd be great. Mm. Um, anyway, so <laughs> this, this particular part, um, I'll just show you this, this, this bit, because I haven't seen this bit before, um, is to make your circle, what you do is you have your iron-on interface, and this is just the standard medium, in, medium weight interfacing that we sell here at Sewing Quarter. Uh, okay. So you draw your circle on the wrong side of your fabric, having decided how you want your print to look. You then place it right sides together onto the non-sticky side okay. of your interfacing, pin it, and then you sew all the way around. So I'll do that very, very quickly, and then I'll show you what This happens. is an unusual mm -hmm. technique. I know, that's why I thought, oh, I'll show this, because a lot of these things you think, oh, I've seen that before, I've seen that before, but I haven't seen this before. So anything that you haven't seen before, I think it's important to show. And something that you can introduce into another project. If yeah, you, if, you know, really, in terms of it's, a, it's a really nice way of introducing anything like this into, the, into a project. Let me just go back. Uh, there we go. Um, because I think it's it's a really it's a really quite unusual um, way of doing anything. So if you've got any template, I think we're coming up to to Valentine's Day. It's a nice way of sort of doing adding heart applique. Any tips for sewing in a circle? Some people are I sort of freak out at the thought of <laughs> go curves. slow. Yeah, this 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 machine, the 540, has got this fabulous button. I don't know if you can zoom in and put that down. It's got this hair and tortoise yep. button. I love that. Lots of that. the other machines have these. Yeah, hair and tortoise button there. You can see there's the tortoise. The so you can go slow or fast. Just going right down to the tortoise speed for a circle. So going, yeah, so, and just hold your fabric still um, and go around. Any particular like, stitch or is there anything? No, just, no. Stay, just stay short, um, quite a narrow um, uh, 
running stitch, go a little bit faster. This might be a slightly wonky surface because we want to get this in. Just so I can show you the technique. This is where your lovely pinking shears come in into, into focus as well, because I think we're doing those as well, aren't we, today? Yes. I always have pinking shears. I have um, very ancient, very heavy ones, <laughs> which I could probably do with updating. What Jess is referring to is we've got a special bundle on the show this morning. This is for today only. And so we've got sewing quarter pinking shears, and they've been bundled with 36 back quarters. I don't know if you can just see um, these essential colours here. So you've got greens, blues, yellows, and then also your pinking shears as well, all been bundled together. So you save £25 by buying those all as one big bundle. We'll just show you the picture of that, actually, if you did miss it at the top of the show this morning. So you've got the... Um, lovely sort of batik prints in those and they're really essential colours that you can mix and match and that you can stash build with. So this is for today only. As I said, you get 12 yellows, those beautiful bright sunshine yellows and then you've got some paler powder, sort of more powdery they'd lemons. They'd go well with some of these as well, wouldn't they? If you wanted to interchange yeah, them. Yeah, the bright sort of yellows, it would be really nice for the honey. And then we've got the blues. Just so you know, the, we're, we're limited on stock on these bundles this morning. As it's for today only, they've been put together as a special offer today. So if you do have it in your basket, please do check it out as we haven't got a guaranteed amount of stock. Great to mix these, mix and match these in as blenders. Great for quilting. They're 100% cotton and they're a nice weight for, um, for quilting. And obviously fat quarters are just a really useful size if you want to cut smaller sections of fabric. But you save £25, so you get all 36 of those all of those, plus your pinking shears that Jess is using. Yep. So these are the uh, sewing quarter pinking shears. These are flying out. So if you do want the bundle this morning, as I said, it's only for today. You will need to check out your baskets now on that if you do want to secure that this morning. I love pinking shears. You can use them everything. It's really nice when you've got something like felt to sort of give you an edge to something. They're really do you know what pretty. I like? It looks like you've gone to a lot of effort. <laughs> Not very much work. I have gone so much effort. <laughs> And so, also for clipping, if you want to clip yes. corners and um, for turning things through, oh, yeah, much, then they're great for that. Yeah, because otherwise it's been ages going this. And it's, when you, I find I do a lot of sewing, my hands get quite stiff. Um, it's a mix of old age and sewing. So using something like picking shears just goes around really quick as opposed to snip, 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 snip. Coming in and so out. I always use those on a curve rather than actually going snip, snip, snip. It's much quicker, much easier and much nicer on your hands. So I'm just, then you, then you have this so, and, and you pink around the edges. And you can see your shiny sides up here. What you then do is you separate just trying to separate them slightly with my finger so you can get a little puffy bit there. Find the sort of middle-ish point, it doesn't have to be completely middle, and you cut a, a um, cross into the back, going almost up to the edges, but not completely. And then what you do is you turn it inside out. And this is all explained in the book yeah. as well, isn't it? but it's a really technique. nice little technique. Let me just find my, my Derek the Dobber, which is my chopstick. <laughs> so you've got your snip bit there and you turn it inside out through your, your little hole. So now we'll be going the fusible side of the interface into the be, back of the fabric. Yeah. yeah. Um, so... It looks like a shower cap. It does. It little, <laughs> well, you can make a little shower cap. You yeah. can make a little teddy bear, a little shower cap. <laughs> That's the thing. When you actually do anything like this, so you, you make a little... Everyone makes mistakes. You I always make. a little thing. Yeah, you think, oh, I'll just put it on the side. The amount of that, that random little things like this, which end up little bags or pockets. Like tidbits. <laughs> so for, 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 for the toys, for the kids. But yeah, I'd make that as a little shower cap. That's really cute. So what you do is you then poke out your, um, your edges. Can you see? To make a, a circle, you do it absolutely perfect because you've got more time when your radio is on. You know, that sort of stuff. And then you can see your fusel bits on the inside and you just give that a quick press to flatten it. Lovely. And that makes it nice... And what that's nice doing is it's not only backing the fabric, but it means that the, you can really enjoy the design of the fabric without seeing anything else through yeah, it. Yeah, it's a really nice way of doing it. Um, also... Uh, you, you may worry that you've got the brown pen. Don't worry about the brown pen. It disappears because it is that lovely um, brown. Good old test first. I always say test first, but it will disappear. So there you have your, your centre part. Lovely. Like that. And that's how that goes. Then what you actually do, this is the part where you um, would quilt. We haven't got time to that, but we'll just talk about it. So you remove your, your so papers. The basting spray. Um, yep. Yeah, so that, I love this. This I recommend to, I mean... I use it, I, I do do quilting, I have done quilting, I've done a, a couple of quilts here, but I use that for basting cushions, for basting anything, anything you actually want to just stick for a bit, it's brilliant. So this is an adhesive spray, we can't use this in the studio just because obviously we haven't got windows in here, um, but it's fantastic for patchwork and quilting if you want to base things together, just to save a bit of time if you can just see there. So you give it a good shake, you spray it about 30 centimetres away from the fabric and it just holds that in place and secures it. 
So maybe as well, if you've got layers of quilting, as I said, you want to pop those together. But for example, with this, you would base the um, flower onto the body of the cushion. Yeah. I mean, what, what I, ha I know you, you, you do it outside or ventilated windows. What I've done with things like this is I've just sort of held it up and gone like that. Give it a, give it a yeah. spray. With this particular quilting one, what it tells you to do, because you want it nice and, and sort of thick, is you, um, first of all, you take one piece off because it's, it's double sided. What you end up doing is you um, do your applique part first. You do your basing, however you want to stitch it on. In the book, I think they've hand sewed it. Um, yeah. I actually machine sewed mine on, so you can see it's got sort of double stitching going around the petals, however you actually want to do it. So you do your applique. Um, I'll just show you quickly because we're getting we're running out of time. That's fine. So what you actually do is you pull all your papers out. So you can just see here, I've pulled two of them out. And you can worry, might, might worry the edges are, are not particularly holding. That's fine. You just turn it over, give it a quick press, and then when you stitch it down, it will hold. It hold. Yeah, you just put it in, and then because you basted it, or however you, I mean, you might decide you don't want to spray. You just want to hand do it. Because my, my mother's quilts were always hand done. Took her a year. They were brilliant. <laughs> but she will you, do it by but hand. But they were everything was done by hand. So however you actually want to do it, you you put this on, and then you then. Um, applique this on so it holds and then you applique that on on top what they've done in the cushion is they've had one sort of going off that sort of angle and they had one a smaller one over here um, I like the idea of doing the center because then you can see all your fabrics um, and then once that's applique on your ever method you actually want to do you then put it this this big square just before we go to quilting go I'm on. just going to quickly do these bundles because okay, someone's asked to see the other colors I'll and pull we'll some come more back and out. we'll carry on I'll, I'll pull some more of these <laughs> out too much to do I know, know. Out of time. Let's take the cushion with me just so I can show you. So you can see that um, cushion there, the one that's still on your screen. That's this uh, cushion that Jess has already made up this morning. So this is from the Quilt Petite book, which is the one you can see on your screen, the graphic on your screen, which is this lovely book here. And we've got three bundles for that this morning. So the Spearmint and Lilac, which is this particular cushion that's already made up. So this is the, you've got the beautiful Tula fabric. You've also got your Macawa solids. You've got Gingham Lilac. You've got a Spot on Lilac. There we go. You can just see that there so you get three meters of fabric so you've got six different fabrics here plenty of different fabrics to pick and choose how you interchange them with the petals or with the uh, lining of the um sort of the backing fabric to the dresden now the pink we've neglected a bit you've not seen this so much and it's actually a really gorgeous bundle again three meters so you've got powder pinks dusty pinks you've also got some charcoal grays as well with that lovely little bird detail on it there Nice if you want to add a splash of colour. JNGC44. And the most popular bundle by far, there's now less than 20 of this in stock, is the um, yellow and black bundle. So this is the one with our lovely bees, and you've also got the blossom detail there. Really gorgeous ochre colours. You've got geometric pr um, prints as well. You've got that Oreo linear look fabric at the bottom. So again, three metres of fabric, but please do check out your basket on that one. J-O-G-C-88. Jog. Jog to your basket and check it out if you do want that one this morning because it's incredibly popular. $32.99. Now, something else that's been really popular is another cushion that we've... Um, I'll show you the book, first of all, that this comes from. So this is the um, Sweetly Stitched book. So again, it's a lovely, a nice little cute name. And the cushion that comes from this... We had this yet the other day with Lucy Brennan. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. A really lovely, playful bear cushion. How beautiful would that be for a baby's nursery? Or on your first bed? Maybe if you could have the grandchildren to stay. So the book that that one's from, in fact, it's on the front cover. Jess loves this cushion too. She was saying this morning in our um, prep meeting. Oh, I saw that one. I love it. And I'll just show you the page where that is. So you've got that lovely patchwork detail on the main body of the cushion itself. And then that cute design as well with the little nose there. And it's almost like he's wearing a shirt with his buttons. But you've got lots of nice um, projects in here. It's all about making things for you and your loved ones. That's the focus of this book. So you've got loads of nice new projects. And they range in difficulty as well. So if you're a beginner and you're looking for a project to get started with, you'll find something in there. But if you've got more advanced skills, then you can... Go for something more advanced in there too. So the bundle for the bear cushion, we'll show you first of all everything you get to make the cushion. So all of your fabrics. And you also get the felt and the thread in this bundle. So you've got everything to do the, the face detail and the eyes there and the little nose. 
So we had a couple of people asking if we could get this back in stock, so we've just bought them on this morning. So you've got those six fabrics in your blues, your felt, your thread. Beautiful florals as well in that lovely soft blue. So you can mix and match those for the patchwork section of the bear. And let's, let's join our cushions together. I love this one. Um, I was just He's thinking, cute, isn't he? this gorgeous print here, if you do get Simply Sewing, this is, I use this print in the current issue with the gym set. So I've actually, my, my, my so you're test, a fan. I love this one. Uh, my, my test, one of the ones I use the fabric for is a little zip pouch to put your headphones in. Oh, that's a good so idea. So I've actually got, I actually have that in my bag. My test is actually in my bag. It's a really nice print. And I love the, the padded, it's just gorgeous. It's really you tactile. You want to just give it a squidge, don't I you? I mean, we're, we're all tactile people, aren't we? If you're a stitcher, you, you love touching things, don't yeah. you? And it's really, it's gorgeous. Especially if you've got a small child, it's really malleable. It's kind of a toy. It is a, a toy. It, I, I love that design. Who did the actual design? I think it's lovely. It's I'm really sure if in the um, might in be the book. I don't know what it actually says, but it it's in which book does it come from? The Amy Cinebaldi, I think oh, it is. Oh, right, I I might have to have a look at that because I think <laughs> that that is a G, especially if you've got um, a new baby on the way. I think it's for a nursery. It's or gorgeous. Probably, I will probably have it in my sitting room anyway because I, I love <laughs> working. Anyway, can you imagine? Because it's a bear, but you can also change it, make it however what particular animal you like. Do whatever you want. <laughs> I think it's gorgeous. We've got two minutes left on this okay, project. Cool. Anyway, so, so um, to quilt it very very quickly. Obviously, I've taken all the papers out so you can see. It's it's it holds its shape. Uh, it's really, really good. So what you actually do is you applique your details on, and I've just, there we go, however you actually want it to be. Once this is all sewn on, applique however you actually want, you then quilt it by, you have a back. Yeah. You have your wadding. This is the wadding I used. You can use whatever you want. Okay. Um, which is the same. Loads of waddings on the website. Loads of waddings. Um, I base this with that lovely 5, um, with 505, 505 spray. spray. Um, and then that on top. So once that's all basted, just a quick question from Linda. Do you have to yes. wait for this to dry before you... Um, no. No. No, because a, a lot of the times I'm working to a deadline really, really quick, you don't. I spray, put it on, spray, put it on, and Straight it's away. done. It is brilliant. And ah. it's repositional. So if you put it on, you're like, oh, you take it off. And especially if you're working on a big quilt and you've got, I have a dining room table, I don't have, I'd love something like this. Um, so you have to sometimes have to move it, it is superb. And I have, I've been using the same can for two quilts and I've still got stuff left so you over. you get a fair bit in there as well. <laughs> you get a fair bit in there. If you overdo it, <coughs> sorry, um, if you overdo it and it feels a bit stiff, it's washable, it's okay. brilliant. So once you've actually done that, you then quilt it however you actually want to do. In the book, they um, quilted a little bit on the petals and then did loads around there. On the, my particular cushion, I just followed the outline however you actually want to do it. It's your choice, it's your okay. quilt. Do whatever you like. So you just quilt it? I just quilt it, quilted it just there, um, just a few bits, so it looks a bit like waves. However you actually want to do it. I mean, you can carry on, you could put someone's name in. And then as you can see, when I actually decided to, to machine applique mine on there and just go around there. And if, if you had really padded wadding, you could make it all puffy. So it just depends what yeah, you want. Yeah, it just depends. And you can see the, the, the contrast in fabrics. I mean, that's really, really cute, isn't it? Really, really pretty. So that's that for quilting. Beautiful. Okay. okay. So we've got um, a few little tips from you, Jess, as well, on a cushion from the other day. I'm yes. going to show the bundles and then we'll come back over cool. and I'll get, get the out. tips from you. I will. That's okay. That's fine. <laughs> We're going to rob Jess of all her tips for these embroidery cushions as well. So have we got the cushion here, first of all? Look at this. We're going cushion mad this morning. Home sweet home. So lovely. We know January. You all like a bit of, maybe a bit of a spring clean, a spruce up, some new home decor. Maybe you're going for new curtains or you're going to revamp a room in the house. So this was a lovely project from Jess. that would make a really lovely um, addition to perhaps the lounge or a conservatory or even, even on the bed. So it's a really gorgeous cushion with those sort of rustic colours. So what you get in these bundles are you get, I'm just going to remove the book because it's not from there, I'll show you the instructions. So you get a template like this and you actually get two in here. So you've got the uh, home sweet home with the bird uh, sort of bird houses and then you also get, you can't, it was the house that was just on the front of the cushion that I showed you as well. You get both of those templates so you could applique with those, you could patchwork them, you could embroider them. And you also get two metres of fabric and the thread. So you've got your red gingham, you've got your greys, you've got a floral, and you've also got a lovely ivory on the bottom there as well. A nice Scandi feel to that, that colourway. 
So that's the Gingham Cottage cushion bundle. Then another bundle, this one's a bit more playful. It's kind of got some neons and, and it's a bit, it's a nice, a nice bright one if you want to add a bit of zing. Particularly, I can imagine this um, would be nice in a bedroom. So again, you get your template, again, you get your thread, but here we're going for much more, um, you get both templates in there, but you've got that lovely birdie print. You've also got your squares and rectangles and your two Macauers in your green and cream. With all of these, you do get both templates in this, uh, in the sewing called to template pack here. And then the last one is really gorgeous. Peak oh, I've not seen this one, this fabric before. That's good. This is a Lewis and Irene fabric, really gorgeous. It's kind of got a shimmer to it. Can you see that gold there where it just catches the light, almost like a iridescent um, gold? It's not foiling, but it has got a really lovely metallic sheen to it. Now, it's also teamed with a coral spot on and two linear look fabrics. So over to Jess. Run, run, run as fast as you can. Right. Catch, catch me. I'm the that Lewis, and time, Irene, man. That Lewis and Irene, by the way, is being, it going to be an issue 41 of Simply Sewing because I'm actually doing a story from it. it it's gorgeous. It's I'm not a fan. Copper and gold print. I love Lewis and Irene. I bought Lewis and Irene from here um, for Christmas. So. These are the actual samples uh, mucking about uh, we did last week. Yes. Uh, this obviously is we the cushion. We loved this project the other day. It was a really popular, popular well, project. Because the, the thing about the templates, it's do whatever you like. And of course, the bundles mean you can, you can have a play. Uh, you can do big ones, you can do small ones. These are my own hoops. I know we sell packs of hoops. I don't know if we still have Again, them on online. They were, they were on the I know they're really, absolutely brilliant. So you can decide, because um, we have hoop art obviously on the wall. Yes. Um, you can do it as a cushion, we did it there, or you can do it as hoop art, whatever you actually like. I like the idea of doing like a little one like that would look really pretty hanging on your wall. So you could just take a small yeah. section. Yeah, you could do a little bit, you, you could do that, do that. It just look really, really pretty. And of course the fabrics lend themselves to how, whatever you actually want to do. I don't actually have the samples of fabrics here, but I've got the, the fussy cut bits. Okay. Which I use the bundle in the, the middle, middle with the birds, the birds, the birds. Which is nice for the little birdhouse. They, one, yeah, that's really, really cute. And also, uh, it comes with a little bird template. Um, but uh, I think Tasha was saying last week what she liked the idea was you could actually just do a hoop. You could actually make a piece of art and then you could actually just have the fabric. So you can see your actual fabric is cut from a bird. Oh, okay. Yeah. So a bird from a bird. A bird from a bird. Yeah. So this particular part here, I don't know if you can zoom in, that is actually part of a wing of that particular fabric. Oh. And then um, if you look on the actual drawing, you've got all these little sort of holes and bird houses. And one of them, I decided to actually cut the actual face from the bird. So you can see that. So it's, it's got however, like an eye and a, yeah, eye and a so however you actually want to do it. And then last week we were talking about the various different stitches. I just kept this fairly simple um, with um, running stitch, back stitch, um, chain, uh, chain, there's a chain. I did a seed stitch, I did some French knots, and then we have... Um, so it's a great way to try blankets. different stitches. This is the rainbow bundle that has been used for this particular one with the green backing, and then you've got those lovely uh, birdie print fabrics. Which day was this last week? Do you remember? Uh, I was only on day Thursday. Thursday, Thursday. the 11th, I think it's the 11th. Okay. So you can always watch all of our shows back on YouTube. If you're new to us, you've just discovered us. You can go onto YouTube, you can search the shows by date. So you could go back to last Thursday and you could watch Jess's show on this to just see the, um, the detail with the, with the embroidery and things. We've got three minutes, Jess. So okay, what cool. would you like to um, well, focus on? Well, I know that Tash last week was talking about blanket stitch. Um, we did some French knots. But with this, it's, it's how, whatever you actually fancy doing. So what, what, if you actually look at something like that, what would you, actually, what would you like to see? I like this. Here. A little birdie. little birdie. Okay, cool. I'll do a little birdie. This little birdie detail, as you can see, I just applicate the actual fabric and then you can um, draw on with your thread your little details. This, this has been, um, as you can see, well loved yeah. um, with a piece of paper. So a pencil. What I would say is if you have got access to a photocopier, take a clean copy so you've got reference. Otherwise, yeah, you're going to end up with um, something a little bit battered like this. If you can, just, or trace it, whatever you actually fancy doing. So um, what I'll do, I'll try and do it from a weird angle. Let us us do his little face first. So we can just get a pen and draw his little beak on. You can just see with this has been ironed so many times and you can still see this little bit of faint bit there and then you can just wet it and it, it goes. Be, yeah. So I'll just do his little beak and he's got a little eye and he's got his little feet. So again, once you've appliqued this, you can do all the hand stitching on your lap. You Which can. Nice. I would um, say use a hoop. You can do embroidery without a hoop. I say use a hoop because okay. it's much easier. Um, 
whatever size you prefer. If you use a big one, it means that you sometimes have to sort of move, maneuver your hands around. So what I, I do with something like this is I'll have a, a, a big piece, everything applique on with Bonder Web, loads of Bonder Web. Yeah. Um, and you can sew through two, three layers of Bonder Web easy with embroidery thread. It's absolutely fine. Um, tough enough. Tough enough. So you find which particular part you want to um, embroider, pop your hoop on top, push it down, just make it nice and firm. You want it to be like a drum. So um, tighten if you need to. I tend to um, use my husband for things like this if he's around <laughs> because he's got stronger wrists than I have. Um, and just pull it taut. When you're pulling it, make sure you don't pull it against the sort of grain so you stretch it. Make sure you pull, you know, so it's nice where, and straight. Where, it yeah, where the actual threads are sewn, shall we say. So make it nice and taut so it's like a drum, like that. Oh, can you can play. hear it. There you go. <laughs> um, I know some, some people, when they embroider, they always knot on the end. I don't. I tend to have a long bit of thread at the end, and then I don't think this is slightly sort of scatty, then sort of weave it through at the back, because um, okay. then it, it, it's neater and less bulky, especially if you're actually sitting on it or, or you've got something, you haven't got knots on there. But it depends what you actually fancy. If you're going on the wall, it doesn't really matter. We've just got one minute. Okay, well, cool. Less than one minute. In that so case, just I'll a, do one quick French tutorial. knot. Very, very quick French knot. Go through your hole. You've got your thread like that. Put it to one side. Do one. Two, go back, oh, hang on, some weird angle. There we go. One, two, go back to the hole, push it down tight, push it through, hold it tight, and slowly pull it through to make your knot. And we've got an eye. You got an eye. <laughs> I'm just going to do this little beak. I'm just going to show if that's okay. Really cute. You can do whatever you like. I mean, you can cover in French knots. You can make him a speckled bird. Look. But that's the wonderful thing about embroidery. You can just play with it. You've it's got the freedom brilliant. to play with it, freedom. which is really lovely. And if you've got something like this, it's a nice that if you're going somewhere, if you're going on holiday, you're going away for a weekend, you're going in a car. I'm, my mum used to sew it my extra down in the car. We're going to run yeah. out of time. But you can watch that back on Thursday. Thank you so much, that's Jess. Okay. And you're back at 10 at anyway. 10 so don't go anywhere. We'll see you in three minutes. Sorry we've run Bye. out of time. See you in a sec. <laughs> <laughs> Follow us on Pinterest. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to discover sewing work we create and love. It's official. Sewing Quarter has arrived on Sky TV. You can join us on Sky 678 seven days a week. Add Sewing Quarter to your Sky favourites so you never miss a programme. And if you set a series link, you can catch up on our shows from each day at any time. If you don't have Sky, you can still join in the fun by watching us on Freeview Channel 78, on our website at sewingquarter.com and on YouTube. So tune in on Sky Channel 678 or on Freeview Channel 78. We'll see you there. Hi, I'm Victoria Pete, and here are my top tips. My first tip is when dressmaking is to wash your fabrics. As soon as you get home or as soon as it arrives in the post, stick it in the wash. Wash it as you would do with the finished garment. Get it ready so that when you're ready to sew, you're ready to go. My next tip is posture. When you're sitting at your sewing machine, particularly when you're doing something like quilting, pay attention to how you're sitting in the chair because quite often when you're really concentrating on quilting, you have a tendency to hunch and before you know it, you'll end up with a bad back. So my last tip is to not sew when you're tired. So many times I've sewn when I'm tired and I make mistakes and you find yourself unpicking or wasting fabric. Sew when you're nice, ready and fresh. Don't forget, shopping with us is easy and simple. You can just contact us at 0800 112 4433 and speak to our UK-based call centre to place an order or shop online with us at www.sewingquarter.com. Join us on Sunday when we'll be joined by the fabulous Angie Atwood who will be demonstrating the hugely popular Storm at Sea quilt. Angie will talk you through creating Lynn Goldworthy's beautiful Storm at Sea quilt, featured in issue 55 of Love Patchwork and Quilting magazine. Lynn's design uses foundation paper peating diamonds and triangle cornered squares for a fresh take on the traditional quilt. Our exclusive sewing quarter kit includes a gorgeous array of solid coloured fabrics to create a rainbow effect of jewel shades. From deep purple and red through vivid yellow to jade green and turquoise. So don't miss this show at 10am on Sunday the 21st of January with Angie and me, John Scott, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 678. 
As soon as you place an order with us, we get to work on making your shopping experience that extra bit special. Our warehouse team pick your items and cut your fabric with the greatest care and precision. Cut fabric is neatly folded and packed in a tissue paper lined presentation box. And when we're satisfied that it's just perfect, it gets the sewing quarter seal of approval. So whether you're giving a gift or treating yourself, you can shop with confidence, knowing your sewing quarter purchases will arrive in style. Welcome back. Deep breaths as it's all got a bit rushed this morning. So let's calm it down. We've got Paul Clark in this hour. We've got a really lovely dress in this hour, which I've actually got on at the moment that Paul made this morning. So I'll give you a little twirl so you can see we've got this lovely panel at the side and then the zip at the back and then all the way around. But what's lovely about this is the neckline that Paul's got to focus on today. So you really get to see how you do that, how you use the pattern to implement that. So you get that really lovely, it's quite a flattering fit, I think, where it's not as, it's not too tight around the neck. It feels nice and comfortable. And it's nice and roomy as well, which we all need after Christmas. So, you know, we all like a nice roomy, comfy dress. So this is a really lovely one from Vogue. And we've got this in two different sizes. I'll go through that pattern shortly. And Paul's going to teach us how to do it. Any questions, get them in so you can let us know. But first, this is our special offer for the whole day today. So I'm going to be talking about this this morning. And these have been flying out. It's a special bundle. It's an offer price for today only. And it's 36 fat quarters. Here's the still. So you've got the yellows, the blues and the greens. So essential colours to add to your stash. And you also get the sewing quarter pinking shears. Oh, hang on, that's a different uh, words at the side of that. That's for the wrong thing. We'll just change that. The <laughs> that's, there's an overlocker coming up, so that, the, what it said on the screen was the wrong one. They're just going to change it upstairs. But what it says at the side of your screen is right, so it is 124.96. You get 36 fat quarters. So let's start with the blues. Beautiful batik print. So you've got that lovely kind of tie-dye effect where you've got those mottled colours going through in a whole array of blues. So you've got more marine blues, you've got navies, you've got powder blues. I'm going to just go all the way along with those. Let me move them up so you can see. And then we go into really lovely soft blues as well. So beautiful, um, maybe for a newborn. Then we move into the yellow family. So let's go for those really, look at that punchy, bright sunshine yellow. And then you've got some softer lemons. You've got a nice, more of a neon yellow there. Again, all those different shades, all of your pastels, some ivories as well. I'm bringing in a little splash, splash of orange. And then we move into our greens. So you've got khakis, you've got forest greens, you've got deep greens, and then you've also got some pistachios. Then we move into the brights. You've got limes. And then moving more towards sort of spearmints and turquoises. What I love about these is that sort of texture that you get from the mottled effect there. So I'll show you one of the, and let me show you on this one. So you get the idea of the size of a fat quarter. A really popular pre-cut size. It's a useful size. It's something that you can really use as a blender if you want to use for patchwork and quilting. But it's really beautiful fabric, 100% cotton. It's a great as a quilting weight if you want to mix and match them. And as they have all got that lovely marbles effect, they do pick and mix really well together if you want to interchange them. So you save £25. Not only do you get those 36 fat quarters, but you also get the pinking shears. These are from Sewing Quarter. This is what Jess was just using in the show before. So as we were saying, they're great for giving you that lovely um, edging. They're also great for clipping. So if you want to cut into things to rather than um, they give you that serrated edge, you can just see there. But they give you that... Um, the edge that's not going to fray and they also stop you from having to clip into little small intricate fiddly corners. I know Joe Carter sometimes uses them for toy making as well, just so you can turn things out a little more easily. So the anthology bundle, you've got the 36 essential fat quarters and the pinking shears. These are the sewing quarters own brand pinking shears, 124.96. That's for today only. So if you do want to take advantage of that offer, there's everything you get. LD GC 55. 
124.96. And you can always give the call centre a ring if you want to add that to your basket. 0800 112 4433. Now, because people are checking that out in their baskets, we are already, oh, we're in the teens on availability for that. And we've only just started that in that nine o'clock hour this morning. So if you are wanting to take advantage of that anthology fat quarter bundle, 0800 112 4433 LDGC 55. Now, dressmaking we promised you I'm modeling the dress this morning really been spoilt by Paul We've got a lovely dress to wear today and we're working with Ponte Roma fabric which is absolutely brilliant if you've not seen it or worked with it before there's the dress on the mannequin who wears it better I wonder <laughs> we've lost the head there but you can just see it's a really flattering cut you've got those lovely panels at the side as well and then you've also got the, uh, the neckline, which we're going to be really focusing on. Now, this is a Vogue pattern. This is a premiere demonstration of this today. We've never had it um, shown on the show before in terms of how to actually make it. So it comes in two size variations. I'll start with the 6 to 14. So they're exactly the same. They're both for the same dress, but they're two, just two different size options. So you've got two variations. As you can see here, you could make it in one fabric. So you don't need to interchange it if you don't want to. Or you could mix and match it like the one I'm wearing. So we've used a, a striped fabric and a solid navy. If I show you on the back, you can just see those two options maybe slightly more clearly. As I said, this is sizes 6 to 14. And you can also um, you can adapt these according to cup size as well. So you can take your own measurements, obviously your waist, bust, hip measurement. And from there, you can adapt it so it fits you perfectly. So you know you're going to get something that's got that lovely comfy feel. Again, on the website, you can look at the back of these patterns. You can zoom in and have a look if you want to check uh, the meterage and the sizes and things. But two meters of fabric is what you need for up to the largest size. So if you want to do the mix and match, so version A, where you've got the two fabrics, you'd need a meter of one fabric and a meter of a contrast. If you want it all in one fabric, you can just go for two meters of the same print. Now, I mentioned this Ponte Roma fabric. The lovely thing about this, this is a double knit jersey. So it's got some give to it. It's got a little bit of stretch, so it's nice and forgiving. It covers the lumps and bumps and curves really beautifully, and it doesn't crease, which I love. So you can shove it in your bag, take it on the go with you, take it on holiday, and it's not going to end up all screwed up. So we'll start first of all. This is, the, uh, this is a navy, so it's a nice dark navy with your cream. It's beautifully soft. I really can't emphasize enough how soft this is. And it's also a really lovely wide fabric. It's 150 centimetres wide. So two metres of fabric if you want to make the dress. If you want to do it with the two con contrasting fabrics, you'll need a metre of each fabric that you want to choose or just two metres of one. Now, we sell in units of half metre fabric here from Sewing Quarter, so we cut it off the bolt for you, but you can have as much or as little as you want. So if you want two metres, you'll just need to order four units of fabric, or you could order two units of the stripe, two units of the navy, and so on and so forth. Now, if you do want more than three units, so a metre and a half, it's probably best to ring the call centre, so that number on your screen. Sometimes people have difficulty adding more than that to their basket online, so you can always ring UK-based call centre. Uh, it's completely free, and they'll be happy to um, add that to your basket for you. Moving on to the navy and white stripe. Now, Paul was saying as well that you could work with this both ways. So directionally, you could turn this... Um, you could turn this straight down or you could have it running horizontally if you wanted to. But as we were saying, it's lovely because it is that wider fabric, so it means you don't have to buy as much as well, which is a bonus. Then we've got the reverse of the spot on, so the navy and cream with the navy spot. Bit of a 60s feel to that. So as I said, it doesn't cling, it covers lumps and bumps really nicely, which we all want to do. It doesn't crease. that on there. I'm going to carry on with the navies while we're there on that. So the one that I'm wearing is the uh, navy and cream stripe. Personally, I prefer a navy to a black. I just think it's a little bit softer. It's not quite as harsh. Um, and, it, and it is dark anyway. You know, it's a dark navy. I can assure you that is a navy in comparison to the black. You will notice a difference. Or this way if you prefer. So if you want to make the dress that I'm wearing, you'd need a metre of this one. So the navy stripe. And then you would need a metre of the, the plain navy. I just want to keep touching it. It is really lovely and soft. 
The nice thing about a jersey is you do get a bit, a bit of stretch to it, so it's not quite as, um, you don't have to worry about it not, it not you know, fitting comfortably. Now, the solid Ponte Romas are also 150 centimetres wide, so you don't need to order any more fabric for the dress. Two metres is all you need. You could make it completely plain. If you like the pattern as well, what you might find is you might make it in one fabric and then you might go, oh, it's a really comfy, nice, flattering dress. It's a bit of a staple item that you could wear. You know, you could jazz it up. I've just got it on with, with sort of boots and tights, but if you wanted to, you could wear it with leggings, you could wear it with trainers, you could wear it in the summer, maybe without tights if you wanted to. So you've got loads of options to jazz it up or down. And you could maybe add a jacket, you could add a blazer or a cardigan. It's like that nice dress that sort of transitions quite well from daytime to evening. So maybe if you're out and you're going to go for dinner or, or something, it's it'll also be comfy for work. Now you've got the, moving to the blacks now, so they were all navies, all of those. This is a black and white polka dot. Again, that lovely soft feel. It's a great price as well, 3 99 for half metre. JFGQ85. Continuing with the blacks, we've got the black and white stripe. Again, the Ponte Roma. just coming with your cream and black. So it might depend as well. As I was saying, I tend to prefer navy to black just because I find it a little bit softer. But saying that, if you want to wear it with black tights, black shoes, black boots, I know probably people tend to have more black shoes, um, then the black might be something that you'd prefer. And then you've got your solid black. So you can obviously team that with anything you like. You could jazz it up with a colourful cardigan, with a, a pashmina or a scarf. BDJQ07. Our producer Hannah saying, I'd go for all black. She said, it sounds depressing, but, but she likes it. She's a fan. And we all know, a black dress, you know, goes with everything. Slimming. So all of those, eight different choices there. You've got the choice between spots, stripes and solids three blacks and five navies, and then all using the Vogue pattern. So I'm going to take the patterns over to Paul. We'll get cracking with how to make the dress. So, oh, Paul, nice good to see morning. you. Good morning. How are you? Very good, thank you. And you? I'm good, I'm good. Good. Tell me about your shirt. Remember last time I was working with you? Yes. I was working on this shirt. Oh, I And you it said was. I look forward to seeing the Liberty. The, it's your Liberty shirt. The Liberty, yes. You did it. You Win, were, winter colours. Because awesome. you said, I'm going to treat myself to the fabric, and then you hadn't finished making the shirt last time I saw That's you, right. had you? Yes. Well, so, thank you for finally, wearing, got wearing, made. wearing it today. It's got to get its, <laughs> get its airing. Yeah. So, the Vogue pattern for this dress, mm -hmm. have, have you made this before? Or was this a first time nope, for you? No, that's the first make. Not a bad first make, <laughs> is it? It's, and a good fit. And it's yes. comfy. It's yes, just really easy it. to wear. Yeah. I don't know if you can see because of my hair, but the neckline, if we come in a bit, it's it's slightly wider, which is nice, yes. isn't it? It's like yeah. an open. What would you have? It costs as a boat neckline. A boat. Yes, a it's boat basically neckline. a straight neckline. There. Yeah, but I like the shoulder detail there, yeah, it's... where it comes together at the neck, rather than running straight into the shoulder. My mic there. It's just like a little that. bit different rather than, because we see a lot of round neck collars, don't we? Yes, yes. And I sometimes think that can feel a little bit little girly. This feels a bit more grown up with that, yeah. with that wider neck. But also what I liked about it is uh, how it was finished. It's not um, a stitch on facing. It's, it's grown on th when you're cutting the, the pattern out. And it's not uh, bias binding. So it just, it it's folds right. I don't know if you can see here. I've field. got my mic on there, but it just folds. I show you the face. <laughs> it feels a bit strange to just be showing you the inside <laughs> of my dress. But this just folds straight in. You as Paul said, you don't have to worry about binding it. And then you just get that lovely straight finish. Obviously, you can press that to make yeah. it nice and crisp. So you want to focus on the neck first of all, just so we can. Well, I was going to put the zip in first because okay. that, um, that's we need that. To we do need the neck. that in before we can do the <laughs> neck. So uh, I thought I'll, I'll, I'll do that, or I could go on to do the neck because zip zip putting in can. What would you rather do? I'll do the neck because okay. then, then if we run out of time. We can always put the zip in. Most, most people will know how to do. Okay. So, assuming that we put the zip in, which was just going to go through, but never mind. Standard we'll zip. Pretend that's there. Standard zip. Just so you have would, to use the imagination. Yeah. <laughs> stitch, stitch down the back, put the zip in, open up the, the stitching. Okay. So there's your zip in. So, as I was explaining about the neckline, it's interfaced on this top bit. I don't know if you can see that bit because I've done. White on white. Can you just see but there? There's a small amount of interfacing across the top. You can just see it here. 
You could see it more clearly on the dress I was wearing as it was a darker one, but there is an interfacing just, can you see where it stops? It's just, it stops just here. Yeah. So it's only sort of a couple of inches wide. And the reason okay. for that, that gives you the fold of the neck. The, the neck folds along that line and it just gives it a bit more body on the inside. So it's going to lay nice and flat yes. as well. Yeah. Now, in terms of, the, we've got two interfacings here. We've got a black and a white. Right. If you're working with a lighter fabric, that's why you've gone for the white there. Yes. So that's the white one. Oh, the black is in the graphics, but the, I'll show you the black first of all then. So that's what you've used on the navy. I have, yes. Yeah. Just so it sort of blends in, I guess, yes. so it's not too obvious. And then the white, and this is an iron-on interfacing? It is iron-on, yes. Um, More than enough in there to do that. Plenty, more than plenty. You need two strips for the uh, two back pieces and one strip across the front. Okay. So that is all. So where you are putting the zip, you, stop, you start attaching the zip below where the fold of the interfacing will be. Of course. And that will fold over and stitch down. So don't start stitching your zip from the top up here. Because effectively that's not the top. Before. Do you want to no, show that on here? That's not the top, yes. If I turn around. That. If you just, on the inside, this bit folds over and then gets stitched down. So the zip starts. This would be the fold at the top. It would be slightly higher. So the zip, that gets folded over and then stitched down. The back. So the when it's zipped there. up, the zip comes right to the top. They're setting up so she's a robot, you can see her wire. <laughs> <laughs> you can turn me off, Paul, now. <laughs> Just... <laughs> okay. So attaching the, the front to the back. Now, I've already pinned the side panels onto this just to uh, save a bit of time. So okay. we can maybe get the side panels sewn on. So this is where it's, it runs slightly different from the pattern. You may see that I thought those pieces should have matched up. So, but okay. the cut of the pattern was slightly different. Even when I went back and looked at the pattern, it was slightly different. So I just thought, well, I'll match up the edges because that's more important. And again, if you look there, it is going to be slightly out. So oh, yeah. I just made sure I'd matched up the corners of that V because that is the only bit you're going to sew for now. So if you match up those corners, and at the moment, this is the side of the dress. This is the, the neckline here. here. This, this is the point of the neckline. Just in there. <laughs> and you're going to sew it. The, the markings are on the pattern. You're going to sew along here to the point where the collar comes in. So if you wanted a narrower neckline, yeah. you could take this deeper in. Oh, okay. So you could, just, depending on so, what you yeah, want. Yeah, depending how, you how wide you want that, that gap to be. But the pattern was saying about there. There's a circle on the pattern, so aim for that. And then flatten, flatten out the, the fabric so it will sew together. So you're basically sewing that V. OK. Yeah. Oh, we've had a message in we'll from that Anne. Sides. That's a brilliant pattern matching on Amy's dress back. Thank oh, you. Across the end of the... <laughs> see? see, people take... You wanted to see the back of my robot wires, didn't you? So we could see that. Thanks, Anne. <laughs> That's the beauty of sewing that seam first before you put the zip in. Because you can get it. You get that match up perfectly. And then once you put the zip in, you just open it up and it should, the, the pattern matching should be there. So I'm just going to pin that other side. So what I'm saying here, this is where it goes away from, or not away from the pattern, but the pattern says to sew from this top edge yep. down in and out of the V. Okay. If you sew from there down to there, you can't then open that to form the collar. Ah. So you need to start sewing from the point of that, pat, that pin to the point and back out. So just that V. Just creating that sort of shape. Yeah. Okay. So the pattern will say to sew along there as well as that, but don't do that. Okay. It won't work. Just before you stitch <laughs> that, Paul, we've yep. got this bundle this morning. In case you're wondering why we've got two machines on the desk, if someone's looking at this and going, what on earth is that? <laughs> Talk to me about this. So this is an overlocker. We've got overlocker. a special bundle this morning, which is why we've got it here. Overlocker. It's that fabulous for when you're working on jersey. Okay. But it's mainly for when you are constructing. You can use it for constructing, but also for finishing. Uh, constructing, 
in, when you've got a straight seam, so for example, I'll, I'll use the overlocker for this seam. This is the side seam where I put the panel in. Yeah. Now, overlockers are brilliant for, for attaching two pieces of jersey because they allow some stretch as well, but they also uh, make it nice and solid, a nice solid seam. Because we see overlockers quite often used just for finishing, but what you can do, as Paul's just saying, is you can use it for construction as well. Yeah. So this particular, we're gonna use both today, so I'm just gonna show you this now so you know, you know what it is. But we're gonna use the overlocker for, um, for finishing, but you could use it for construction too. Yes. So it is a multi-purpose tool if you want to use it for both. But the offer today, look at that, you're saving 42, 48, 449 pounds. You're also getting the jersey needles, which you will need if you're working with a jersey fabric but you use those in your sewing machine. Yes. And then you also get the serration tailor's shears, which you use to cut jersey fabric. So it's going to grip the fabric really nicely between the teeth. So you get a lovely smooth finish as you're cutting it. It's gonna stop it from curling up at the edges. So it's perfect for working with jerseys or for Ponte Roma fabric. So it's great if you are going to use it with your overlocker as well. So an amazing saving there today, £449. That's a special offer for this morning. And we're just going to show you that as we go through the show for some finishing, but also you can use it for construction too. Hence why we've got two machines on the desk this morning. Okay. So just doing, going back to this V for the, the neckline. Okay, let's just okay. quickly see that. So we've got before. the... Just where Paul was before, where you had the cut in. in that we talked about before. That's it. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to yep. pin along, or sew along from standard seam allowance on this is five eighths of an inch or one and a half centimeters. So coming along there. And if you find a point where you're right on the edge of the interfacing, yeah. you probably can't see it because, as you said, it's white on white. Pivot around that point and then come back out. Okay. And I'll, show, I'll show how this works in a moment. Make sure everything's flat underneath and come back out to that point. Now, on the subject of working with jersey, this is a, you use a different needle when you work with this sort of fabric. Yes. Um, so if you, if you haven't worked with jersey before, what would you say about that? Jersey needle. Go for a ballpoint, jersey or stretch needle. You, They'll come in three different names. Yeah. <laughs> um, they are slightly different, but if you go for a jersey needle, it's a rounded end to the point. So instead of piercing the fabric, it will find the, the space in the fabric. Because so of the weave, it's able to sort of... Yeah, yeah. so therefore it doesn't, you don't get any um, fraying. Great. So it's a slightly rounded needle. So uh, it does stitch Roma, better it, on a machine as it, well. This when is a double knit jersey. Well. It yeah. is a jersey Ponteroma, so you will need that jersey needle to work with it. Yeah. Because it has got that bit of give to it, which is nice. So now you need to clip in right into that point where you've sewn that. So if you see where we're going with that, clip right up to that point. Going for sharper needles, sharper snips. Right up to there. Now this is where the, the collar is formed. Now if you'd have sewn along that bit there, you would not be able to fold this back. If you'd have sewn along there, you would not be able to fold this back and create the shoulder. Right. So what you do with that, that folds over, open up these seams. So you open up that seam. You open up that seam, put the two together and that creates your yeah, neckline. Yeah, nice crisp collar, almost into the shoulder section. It, it yes. moulds, doesn't it? And I'm just going to pop a pin in there to hold those two together. One pin, one pin in there. And that, when you look at it from the outside, your, your interfacing is folded in on both sides and that has created this lovely detail, detail here, here on the shoulder. So you've turned it in, then you've opened the seams out, pinned those together. Yeah. And now I'm, what I'm going to do now is just baste those two together. Now basting is a just a straight stitch, usually a wider stitch, but you're doing it closer to your your edge of the fabric. So that when I stitch the shoulders in, or when I stitch the sleeves in, um, this will be in the seam allowance. 
So if I just so it's just about holding it in place. It's just really. to hold that neckline back and just hold it in place. Oh, the jersey needles. I've just had some. Have we got some? Where have they gone? Oh, they're here. We had some delivered to us as we were just talking about Jersey Needles. So um, they're in the Overlocker bundle. So if you do buy that this morning, you get these for free. But if you do want to just buy some Jersey Needles, if you're going to work with Jersey for the first time and you do just need a different needle for your machine, as Paul was saying, just uh, they're slightly round so they're not going to pierce the fabric. So these are for your sewing machine. You get five needles in there, two 10s, two 12s and a 14. 249 BTPH47. Or if you're going for the overlocker this morning, you get these for free. And then you also get the um, serration scissors, which are great for cutting gold serration scissors. Look at those from Prim. These are gold edition scissors, which you can use to cut your jersey fabric. It's going to stop it from curling. Just because it grips it between the teeth, so you're going to get a nice smooth cut. And the overlocker itself, which is obviously the main feature of that bundle for getting that lovely professional finish. It's the stitch that you'd recognise from most of the clothes you probably bought in the shops, where you get that lovely finish on the hemline, maybe on the, um, the armholes as well. But a really great saving, 449, but you're making a 42 pound saving with that all bundled together for you this morning. Are you doing the same again? Yes, yeah, so all I'm doing I is, is the, other, the other V <laughs> on the neckline so I can um, basically finish off that neckline. So just to recap that whole process, you put the two edges together, yep. then you pinned it, then you stitch in a V around that with the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, yes. and then you've turned it through. And then I'm cutting into, right I'm into cut that in point. Cut in and then turn through. Yeah. Right into the point where you pivoted. That's a bit of a test, isn't it? Okay. Like quite how far right. you can snip. <laughs> And then you open up the seams. You can press these, but with jersey, sometimes it doesn't lay flat when you're pressing it. Put those two seams together at the shoulder. There and there. It's quite a forgiving fabric to wear. It's, Is it to yes, work with? Yes, it's nice to work with. Seems to sort of behave there. itself. Generally does. <laughs> <laughs> so that will turn it the right way out. We've had a question in from uh, Mandy for you, Paul, if you're all right. To, um, hi, all. With this being jersey, could you do the dress without the zip? I, I suppose you could. Just straight over the head? Yes, yes. Suppose so would. The, on the pattern, um, you can just see it here. This is the front of the dress. Yeah. But I suppose you could just go straight over the head, couldn't you, if you yeah. didn't, want, didn't necessarily yeah. need to unzip it? Because it's got a fair amount of stretch. It's because it's got stretch and also because the neck, because it is that it's a, neck. It's, it's a, a wider, wider neck, one, yeah, so, so you, you can get it over your head quite easily. Without um, having to worry about the zip. Yeah, you, I'm sure you could do that, man, yeah. if you wanted to. I think to. it'd have to be a pullover rather than a pull off. Yeah, I'm not sure. You'd, you'd, you'd wiggle through that. Get over, <laughs> over your bottom. So there, there is a neckline with the two shoulders. If you do do that, Mandy, tell us how it goes. Let, let us know if you do manage to do that. Yeah. <laughs> what you could also do, you could top stitch along there to, to, okay. to stop that facing turning out. But once you've got it on, it doesn't seem to turn. No, it seems to have stayed. But I think if you top stitch that as well, it would, you'd lose a bit of the, the, the drape of it, I think. Okay, so probably so, just leave it. There we go. So moving on to the side seams. Now we can do a bit on the overlocker now. So like. you could do this all on, on your standard machine. Not a problem, this machine will cope with it. I did all mine on the standard machine. All the stitching of that was on the standard. I only did the finishing on, on the, the overlocker. overlocker. So we'll come around to doing that later. So, so it is lovely to have an overlocker, isn't it? As an, as an addition to your sewing. It's a know, speed thing as well. I find it, it's, it's faster. Because um, sometimes when you're doing seams, you've got to, sew them, clip them to make them narrower so that when you turn things through, they hang better. Yeah. With an overlocker, it does the two together. It does the stitching and it does the trimming. All in um, one. And it's very fast. Yeah. <laughs> so when I first exactly. got an overlocker, it's like running away with me. I'm like, <laughs> slow down. <laughs> Put on the pad a little bit slower than I'm not used to. You just get uh, used to that and then you, you quite do. quickly are going to be finishing garments with that professional finish quicker. You know, yes. You can get through them more quickly. Yes. So we have a go I'll, I'll do this, yeah. I'll just um, I'll put a dart in there. There's two bus darts yes. on the front. I did those earlier. They get folded down. 
as per the pattern. And actually with the pattern, well. you can just see here, you can custom fit the cup size as well. So in terms of the dart, you can obviously figure out exactly where you want that to go, where that will um, sit in terms of the fit for you really and your particular measurements. And obviously the lovely thing about dressmaking is you can work with your exact measurements, figure out exactly where you want the, you know, the shoulder to sit, where, how long you want the arms, the sleeves, where you want the length of the dress, if you want to adapt it at all. That is the joy of dressmaking. You're making something that is going to fit you perfectly. It's not off the hanger. It's yes. for your body. You know, it's for yes, you. Yes, because I think it was the front piece that came in three different sizes. So it's a, a, B, or C. So I don't think that was cup size. I think that was just slim fit, medium fit, or, or curvy or, fit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it was a nice, nice one for that. So I okay, can let's scoot around. Uh, can I just Shall I move? move <laughs> Do we to take it? Yeah. Thanks. Go and drop that on the floor. That's it. So overlocker, careful with your pins in the way with your overlocker. Don't put your pins through the overlocker. So I pinned a lot here because I don't want it to move. So lift up the foot and then... Now, we don't have a camera because we have the camera on our sewing machine. So we'll only be able to see this once it's finished so you can see the actual finish of it. But right. Paula, you're able to just... Obviously, Ex you've got four <laughs> um, spools of cotton there. Yeah. So what, what's actually happening? It's just using more thread to get that finished quickly. Yes, what, what happens, you've got two rows of actual stitching. You can use uh, just one needle in the overlocker and uh, it will be a three needle finish. And that will create your row of stitching, which is your, your seam. Yeah. The, the other two are the looper threads. Now, the looper threads are the ones that go wrap around the edge of your fabric. When I've done this, you'll be able to see it. Now, what I can see from where I am, this is a bit of a tease, isn't it? But it's trimming the fabric as it goes through. So it's finishing that edge, isn't it? Yeah. It's trimming the fabric before it's finishing the edge. So it's cutting and stitching all in one. It's cutting stitching and wrapping the edge of the fabric. So I've done this in a grey, in grey threads, so we'll be able to see this quite well. I tend to use grey most of the time on my overlocker, because grey will sort of blend with anything. How quick um, is that? So what that has done, it's, it's sewn your seam. On here you have, you have two rows of straight stitching, one you can see there, and one that's slightly further in. The first one there, yeah. that will be where your seam is. So when you open it up... That's, that's the one that's going to yes. be... Yeah. So you've got to make sure that one is on your seam allowance. OK. You don't want that first one on your seam allowance, otherwise you're getting a little bit less of your seam allowance. So you want to make more. sure that yeah. this outer is this the line of stitch that hits the seam allowance line. It's where your seam allowance would be. That's your five-eighths line. Okay. And your markers are on your overlocker, so you'll be able to line that up well. Now, also, if you couldn't... Obviously, you couldn't see this. But what's happened is it's trimmed this off. So the excess that was on the edge of that... So you can take the tray. There's a little tray. So this is the pro, a pro overlocker. That's so you have this rubbish. little tray. <laughs> and what this does is just... It sits on the back of the machine here, and it just catches it. So <laughs> in there, you've got all of your scraps. So that just attaches to the machine. As you're feeding your uh, seam through, it just goes through, it's cut, trimming that off Cuts and then stitching off. it over. Yeah. That's one of the features of this. But also in this bundle, you're getting the scissors for free and your needles for the jersey needles for your sewing machine and your gold scissors. So these are particularly, the reason we put these in the bundle today is because they are great for jersey fabric. So you can just, I don't know if you can see there, they've got little teeth really small little teeth in there that grip the fabric so you get a lovely smooth cut as it runs through. So these are free. Your jersey needles for your sewing machine are free. These are brand new scissors to us here at Sewing Quarter and we've popped these in the bundle this morning. So you save £42 with those free gifts that have popped in with the overlocker. So you've used that there for construction, haven't you, actually? Yes. The, the straight stitches of construction, the ones that you see going back and forward, back and forward, they are wrapping around the fabric and they are causing, uh, creating a lovely finished edge to that. So if you're working with something that does fray a lot, like cottons, this is brilliant for them. It's not just for jersey. No, use it you can use it for cotton. Use it for wool, use it for anything, where you want a bound edge without putting bias binding on. So it creates that sort of finished seam, and it gives <laughs> still, still a bit of stretch in it, but it also 
finishes that edge off neatly. And with that bound edge and the loop, as you were just saying, that's going over the two layers, mm -hmm. so it's sort of encapsulated that. What are the benefits of that? Is it that it's going to make, keep it nice and strong? It does keep it strong, yes. But again, it stops the fraying. But with Jersey, you look at that, it's, it's not fraying. Jersey doesn't really fray, or very rarely. No, that's some, another benefit. I think some does, some doesn't. It. But uh, it's great on, on a Jersey because it allows that stretch and just gives a bit of strength. So if you're using here. one machine, uh, just a normal machine, if you're doing a straight stitch on that and you've got a very stretchy Jersey, as soon as you put it on, you'll hear that, mm. that rip of your stitch going. So you can use a stretch stitch on the machine as well if you've just got the basic machine. So I was just going to say, if you haven't got an overlocker, you would go Jersey needle and a stretch stitch. Yes, to, which, to which is that. like a like a, um, lightning strike. Okay. It's on your machine. It's, it's like a zigzag <laughs> on, your, on your machine. Just going to recap those bundles, Paul, and then we'll come back and carry on with okay. the assembly of the dress. Right, if so I just carry on pinning and okay. everything together. <laughs> Let's take the pattern. Okie doke. So this is the dress. This is the one, if you haven't seen it full length, this is what we're making this morning with Paul from the uh, Vogue pattern. So these come in two sizes. We've got the six to 14 and then the 14 to 22, I believe it is. Yeah, 22. So here we go. Now for both of these, if you want to make the dress, um, you can do that with two meters of fabric. So if you want to do it in contrasting, you can have a meter of one fabric and a meter of a contrast or just two metres of one fabric if you wanted to make it, say, all in a solid black or all in a solid navy. This is a premier demonstration of this. We've never made this one on the show before. So the um, larger size is going across the bottom of your screen there, and the 6 to 14 is the main graphic. Over a third of the stock of both of those have already gone this morning. So if you are thinking you want to invest, invest in the dress, and then you will need to check the patterns out um, in your baskets. Now, in terms of the fabrics, the one that I'm wearing, I'll start first of all with that, is the uh, navy and cream stripe. So you need a metre of both. So you'd need a metre of this if you want the panels at the side. So that's the navy stripe. A really lovely soft fabric. And then you've got the navy solid. So if I just pop those together, you can see how well they do work as a team. A bit of a nautical feel to that um, stripe as well. But the Ponte, no uh, Ponte Roman navy, the, just the plain one there, is across the bottom of your screens. As I said earlier, it is a very forgiving fabric. It doesn't cling. It's going to just skim any sort of lumps and bumps. And it also doesn't crease. So, you know, that's what we all need in January. We just want something nice and comfy. Um, and, it, and it isn't going to, to crease if you want to take it on the go with you. If you need to fold it up, pop it in your bag, it's going to, you're going to be able to get it out and put it straight on. Carrying on with the navies, we've got a navy and cream spot. So as Paul said, if you're working with this with your regular machine, for any dressmaking, you could make a top, you could make a dress, you could make a little uh, cardigan or jacket. You just need a jersey needle, and then you can use that stretch stitch on your sewing machine. Then we've got the um, stripe, but in, a, in the reverse, so with an ivory background and a navy stripe. Again, a nice nautical feel. In fact, you could interchange the navy and cream, couldn't you, if you wanted to? Might be quite nice. So the cream one there. That's the ivory and navy, ASJQ62. Now all of these are 3.99 per half meter. So they're cut off the bolt for you. You can have as much or as little as you want, but two meters is what we need for the dress. Oh, we've had, Teresa, did you say? So we've had a message in that Teresa's having some problems adding fabric to her basket online. If you are struggling with that, you can always give the call centre a ring. So sometimes multiple units um, over a metre and a half, you can't always add them to your basket online. So if you give them a ring, that number on your screen's there, um, they'll be happy to help you. It's completely free. They're happy to help. They're, they, all, they know what they're talking about. It's a UK-based call centre. So you've got your navy spot on. AIJQ06. So those are all of your navies. 
which do all interchange really well. So perhaps if you, you know, you could go for a solid with a spot, you could go for a spot and a solid and a stripe if you wanted to, you could mix and match the stripes, you've got a whole array of different ones there. Or you could just go for one whole uniform dress without the side panel. All it is is that side panel there and the sleeve that's in the contrasting fabric. Then moving over to the black, so if you would prefer to do it in a, in a black, you can. So we've got the black spot, again with the um, ivory. We're just changing that one there, sorry, that was the plain black one. So 3 99 again per half metre. So effectively, you could make a dress, 16, less, just under 16 pounds, two metres of fabric. Obviously, once you've got your pattern, you can always reuse that as well. You've got the black and cream stripe. As I was saying earlier, sometimes black's nice if you want to, maybe if you've got a little a leather jacket or if you've got boots that you want to wear it with or black tights, maybe black might be better for you. The navy might be better as we head more into summer, maybe if you're going to wear it as a, as a um, holiday dress. And then we've got the black on its own as well, so the black solid. And this is a nice wide fabric, it's 150 centimetres wide, so the pattern, if you did want to work with a um, fabric that's narrower, you might need slightly more fabric, but you only need two metres when you're working with that wider width. EDJQ07, again 3.99 per half metre. One quick recap of this bundle that we've got, only because this is just, we were in the teens at the start of this hour for this bundle. We're now in, what are we in now? Oh, we're still just in the teens. So I'm thinking maybe we're on 13. Um, so this is a, a bundle that we've got this morning. This is for today only. So if you do want these, um, you will need to check out your baskets on it. You're making a saving of 25 pounds. It's a fantastic stash builder. So you've got 36 fat quarters. You've got 12 blue, 12 yellow, and 12 green. So you've got all of those beautiful greens. And the lovely thing about this is it's almost got a batik finish to it. It is a cotton, it's 100% cotton, but it's got a marbled effect. So it's got that lovely texture and depth to it. And you can mix and match all of those. Those are all of your greens. Just working through the, um, through the different shades there. Then you've got your yellows. I'm just gonna move those out of the way. Again, in all of the different hues, so you've got your darker ones, you've got your creams, and moving into some more orangey tones there. And then you've also got blues. It's kind of like the grass, the sun, and the sky. <laughs> um, so you've got your marine blues, you've got darker blues, you've got powder blues. We don't want you to feel blue in January. Cheer yourself up with some, with some fat quarters, especially if we've got our birthday coming up. We're nearly a year old. 31st of Jan's our birthday, we would have been on air for a whole year. So if you've just joined us on Sky, we're going to have a birthday bonanza that week. So get ready for some, for some fun. Now, also in that bundle, you get your pinking shears as well. So these are Sewing Quarters' own branded pinking shears. Great for finishing if you want to just trim those edges off so you haven't got any fraying on your fabric. So you're saving £25 there. I just wanted to make you aware of the limited nature of this bundle, as it is for today only. So £124.96, a saving of £25. Lots of you adding that to your basket now. So if you do want it, you will need to make sure you check it out. It's not a guaranteed uh, purchase until you've checked it out to the end. And remember that fat quarter size is a pre-cut that's something that's really useful to have. You can interchange those for quilting, for, um, for patchwork, and also as a blender if you're making cushions. Or It won't be on tomorrow, that's today only. So if you do want to take advantage of the uh, fat quarter bundle, then that's one that we'll need to check out today. So where are we up to with the okay. a lovely dress? Uh I've given up with the overlocker. <laughs> Pardon? I've given up with the overlocker. You've given it, up with it? Yeah, basically it turned um, jammed on me. So, oh. And to re-thread it would take me the rest of the show. Okay. <laughs> it normally does, it, it does minutes, normally, so. but it does normally at home. So I thought I'll just try and finish off without using okay, the overlocker. That's and we fine. can explain what I would have done. Uh, so I'll move on to doing the sleeve because we do that without doing the overlocker, using the overlocker. Um, I've carried on pinning and I've just done a normal seam on that. And you can see how there's still a fair bit of stretch yes. with a normal seam. That's done on, on this, gonna, this machine. Just going to give that a stretch for us. So <laughs> you can see there is still a little bit of stretch in that and that's just with a straight stitch. So quite nice for you to see the option if you don't have the overlock yes. and you want to just work with the jersey needle on your normal machine. You can still do that with the one of straight stitches. It's yeah. just that it might... 
it not have quite it as much strength. It might not pull as much, but yeah. then this isn't a very stretchy um, it's not jersey. Crazy it's not elastic. No, you get no. some on, on the pattern that will say you can stretch it from this bit to this bit. It's, you, you can use it. Sometimes there's a stretch oh, guide on the back on some, how much on some patterns, can... yes. Uh, but this, it's got a nice, comfortable stretch, but it's got a lot of body to it as well. It's, what, nice, it's got some weight to it. It isn't yes. as thin. Sometimes I think a completely cotton, um, just a regular cotton dress, feels a little bit airy-fairy sometimes, does it? Unless yeah, it's lined. Yeah, it can be a bit too floaty. Yeah, whereas this yeah. Is, it does feel... I'm, I'm, I always feel the cold, I'll be honest. Right. I'm, I, I'm all, so I want something a little bit thicker with a little bit more to it. Bit of warmth to it. Yeah. Bit of warmth, right. So, sleeve. Um, this sleeve did need a little bit of gather in the top. Um, so, to gather the sleeve. I've had a few sleeve lessons with you, Paul, haven't I now? We've <laughs> done some yeah, shirts. Yeah, I, I like to sew, <laughs> sew the sleeves in open, like I do with a, with a shirt. Yeah. But uh, this dress you couldn't because you had to put the side panels in. Um, so it's going to force you to so do it with So you haven't clothes. got that under um, seam going down. So you can't do it as, um, as an open sleeve. So there were marks on the pattern. I think, uh, I can't remember whether they put notches in, but basically it's the head of the sleeve that you put a running stitch in and gather it along there. Okay. But I, found, I did that on one of them. And on the other one, I didn't do the gather. I thought, I'll see how, if there's another way I could get around it. And there seemed to be. So okay. I'll see if, <laughs> see if I can explain secret. that. And I don't have to do the running stitch in the gather. But simply, the gather, you can do a, a very long stitch on your machine, do two rows of stitching between those two points around the head. And then you pull the bobbin thread. Oh, yes. Because that is the looser one. You pull that and then you ease the gather. And it just And you starts ease it between those two points. Okay. And you will find that you will stitch from, or you will pin from there to there on your sleeve hole. That will be straight pinning. And then the rest is gathered between those two points. Right. And that will be a straight patch. Should we see that in action? So we'll see how that works, but I'll, sh I'll show you the... The non Christine's just messaging as well how much fabric you need for the contrast dress. So the one where you've got this um, different fabric for the sleeve and the side panel um, is two metres of fabric. In fact, all of them are two metres. If you wanted to make it just in one fabric, again, you'd need two metres, but a metre of each. And, oh, Teresa's asked which colours I'm wearing. This is the navy. So you've got the um, navy and ivory stripe, and then you've got the navy um, sleeve as well. So those graphics are just coming in now. So the navy solid... 3.99 for half meter is the one that's just popped up there. So you'd need a meter of that one, and then you'd need a meter of the nautical nautical navy stripe, which is just coming as well. Um, also, please do check out on the solid navy. That's the one over 30 units in baskets at the moment, so that does need to be oh 30 people over 30 people with that in their baskets and multiple units. So you will need to check that one out. And that's your navy stripe. Okay. Okay. I'll try and explain this. Yes. Is this tricky? <laughs> Normally, I would put a sleeve in from, you put right sides together, so you turn the sleeve. Is there a right, right side with, this, with the solid fabric I in the jersey? I couldn't really see one. Because quite often they're double-sided. That's one of yes. the joys of jersey. You don't yes. have to... Okay. It's clear on it's that obvious one, but, the not. Stripe, but So, right sides together, so turn your sleeve right way out. Yeah. Now, I find best way, pop your hand in the sleeve, grab hold of a bit. Careful of those pins. Pop it up the dress. And you, you then you've got your notches. Your notches on your sleeve, you've got a double notch at the back and you've got a double notch on the back. Can you see those? You there see we there. go, can you see them? There we go, yeah. And there, yes. So those two go together. What's the double notch for? The double notch is always the back of the dress or the back oh, of okay. the sleeve. I didn't know that. Because uh, that is a slightly different shape to the front of the sleeve. There's more material in the back of the sleeve that's to allow you to reach forward. Ah, yep. so I can go, oh, I'll yep. come up to you. <laughs> and there you have a single notch at the front, if you can see that one. So I'm matching those two notches up. Yeah. Okay, because you have not got an underarm seam to match up. You have on the sleeve, but not on the dress. So open that up, match that up. 
So you said you straight pin this whole section and then it's the top fitted part of the yep. sleeve that's going to take that little gather with the bobbin. Straight pin this all the way round up to where the gather would start. Now this is where also where the top of the neck is. So what I found to do on this, I don't know if this right, wrong way or whatever, but I just found it worked Your for way. me. Your way. Yep. I turned the whole thing so that the sleeve is on the outside now and the dress is on the inside. Okay. And when I came to pin that, instead of it being like that and you've got all the, the gathering on the inside, You're hiding when it you out. turn it that way, the sleeve stretches over the outside of the, the armhole and then you can pin it that way. Should we just show the fit of that on here, if you can see? So there's no gather, there's no sort of puckering, there's no gather at all. Just there. And when you go all the way around with that, so basically you're draping over, and where, where the, the shorter fabric, which is the body of the dress, yep. is on the underneath, you can almost stretch the that a little bit, you stretch the sleeve over, so your pinning is then done from that side. So if you work that all the way round, you end up with, in my mind, I did not have to gather it, and yet it still, <laughs> it still fitted all <laughs> into place. So it saved me a little task there. Because if I'm not, you've got to look at maybe yeah. doing a pleat, haven't you? Or sort of doing a, a sort of folding it in. Yes, or... yes. So carrying that on round. This is the Vogue pattern. So if you've just tuned in this morning and you're wondering what we're working with, um, there are two different sizes. So the, um, the larger size variation is sizes 14 to 22, or you've got 6 to 14. So the one on the bottom of your screen is that larger size. Now you can always check on the website. You can look at the back of the pattern. Um, at sewingquarter.com if you want to check any of the measurements. But two metres of fabric is all you need to make it up to a size 22. Um, and you've got two variations on that. So you can do a contrasting panel on the side, which is what I've got on at the moment, or you can go for one completely um, uniform dress just in one colour. You've got that lovely uh, bust dart as well there, the zip on the back, and then that flattering panel at the side, which just breaks up rather than it being sort of tent-like. It just sort of gives it a bit of a streamline, doesn't it? Yes. With that side panel. And I wondered how it looked nice with the black uh, centre, or the yes, solid centre, and, and the stripes stripe. down the side, or, or even the, the um, vertical stripes as well, instead of oh, horizontal. Oh, yeah, you could run them that way, that's a good yes. idea. Or a spot you could just have, couldn't you, like a spotty yep. uh, sleeve. So, as you can see with that, because I've done the sleeve on the round the outside of the armhole, instead of seemingly on the inside yeah i've not had to gather that and it fits all the way around without any any pleating needed if you turn that to the inside you can see how you would have those had to gathers yeah. are now there i just tip that just so we can see can you see there just where paul's turned it in all of a sudden you create a gather if you can you just see sort of that ripple here whereas when it's turned that way what paul's saying is you eliminate the gather it, it lays flat because it lays flat Great, that's a good tip. So then when it goes through the machine, I just, I always pin that way, but some people will pin that way. You could put loads more pins in and just keep that in place. So just keep pinning round and that will hold your gathers even more. So what would you like to do next? Would you like to, we've got about three got? minutes. Three minutes, oh, okay. Um, well, I was going, what I was going to say is, about overlocking the, the hem yes. and finishing the hem. So we need or, to re-spread out. We can but show. I'll just lift my sleeve rather than me lift my skirt yeah. up. It's not always ideal <laughs> with it on a Friday morning. <laughs> Who wants to see that? <laughs> what I've done there is just a single row. I haven't um, put two threads of, uh, or two layers of material through. I've just put that through once. So I basically overlocked right on the edge there, right on the edge of the material. And you open up your, your seams, you go all the way round. And it will trim it as you go so through the edge. So it trims like it and you've got a nice neat edge there. So then I'm just doing one fold over and then a stitch on this machine. Oh, okay. So you then top stitch on this machine and you end up with one row of stitching. Part of the reason for that was I couldn't find my twin needle. Oh. <laughs> <But you laughs> I know, Jer Jersey, you would do. normally twin needle that on standard machine. 
you'd get that two rows of stitching and you'd twin needle across just the edge of the fabric. Yeah. Yeah. But the Folded. thing is, what I love about that is but that I like looks that like, finish. That's the finish that you would see on a, on a top yeah. that you bought in a shop. That's the thing, isn't it? You don't look at that and think, oh, it's a bit, it looks homemade or it's a bit scrappy. Yeah. That's, it, it's a really professional edge. And, yes. I like, and the top stitch and as well, again, just matches, finishes it so, off. Again, oh, you could go for a contrasting thread. Could go with a contrast with the thread like we got there. You could do there. that in a cream yeah. like you've done there. Yeah. So you would overlock the um, so sleeves. I would overlock the sleeve edges and the, the, the bottom hem. Yeah. And literally it's just one fold and then top stitch that round. And the way I've top stitched on that one, I've, used, I've top stitched in the navy. With a navy thread, with a navy thread, I've top stitched Can we see? in the navy. I'm on oh, in the navy. Um, rather be, than really trying to go onto the white. Okay. So you could so see the, the stitching navy there. thread onto the navy part of the fabric. Yeah. Well, on this, I maybe would do so that I would be doing the top stitching. I do it in cream. Along yeah. that oh, line of oh, black, if I could. Okay. And then when you go across this bit, you won't see the stitching. Just a couple of stock warnings. So which, which fabric was it? Well, first of all, just going to talk to you quickly about the overlocker bundle this morning. So remember, you do get those free scissors, and we've never had these on before. These are from Prim. So these are so the serration shears. You also get the jersey needles for your sewing machine. We're on single figures for that bundle now, so it, we, will only, we have only got that for today. So if you do want to take advantage of that offer, you save £42. So £449 for that. So that's the Elna Overlocker, you've, the 664 Pro. So you've got that lovely attachment there. where you, it, So it's cutting your fabric as it runs through, also looping over so you get that lovely professional finish like Paul was just showing on the sleeves. Great for finishing things off, but also for construction as well, as um, Paul showed on the panel adding to the main body of the dress. The patterns, a quick recap on those. So if you do like the Vogue pattern this morning with that panel in the side, it's in two size options. Both of those are on the website either size 6 to 14 or 14 to 22. And the fabrics, you need two metres of fabric for that dress, up to size 22. So loads and loads of you with people in your baskets this hour. So if you do want something, you do need to check it out to make sure it's guaranteed to be yours. So Jess is back in just a minute and Paul's back at 11 for a scarf and a bag. We've got bags galore for the next two hours. Don't go anywhere and we'll see you in three minutes. Join us on Facebook. Simply search for The Sewing Quarter and like our page for the latest news and more. Love Patchwork and Quilting is the best-selling modern quilting magazine that shares your passion for fabric. We publish 13 times a year, featuring must-make projects, essential techniques, interviews, news and reviews from the world of modern quilting. Every issue also comes with a free gift. So today we're going to be learning the prick stitch. Now the prick stitch is very similar to a back stitch and they're basically very tiny stitches which are visible on the front of the fabric uh, and very long stitches on the back. So first of all you need to start with the needle at the wrong side of the fabric coming through to the front and like I said it's very similar to the back stitch where you're going to go backwards rather than forwards and you want to make this stitch as tiny as possible so taking a couple of um, th strands from the fabric itself and then the length of your prick stitch could be entirely up to you so I'm going to make it quite a large one so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going through the fabric and then I'm going to come back again taking a couple of strands from the fabric to come down. You want to keep these as even as possible as you're going across the line. So there we have our prick stitch. Get ready for a day of sewing delights on Saturday the 20th of January. Join me, John Scott, and Becky Blees, and Rebecca Reed this Saturday morning for not one, but two fantastic projects from Simply Sewing magazine. 
At 9 a.m., Rebecca Reed will be showing us the casual and chic carry all bag, exclusively available as a kit at Sewing Quarter, and first seen in Simply Sewing issue 38. This easy to create bag is the perfect accessory for weekends away. And at 11 a.m., you'll be singing in the rain when Rebecca creates a charming raindrop cushion using a selection of pretty blue hued fabrics. It will be the perfect accompaniment to your favorite chair. So don't miss these stunning projects on Saturday the 20th of January, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 678. Did you know there are multiple ways you can contact us even if it's just to ask a question? Our friendly team are always on standby. You can call our customer service team at 0800 112 4433, email us at help at sewingquarter.com, visit our Facebook page, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter at Sewing Quarter and even message us through our website and our presenters will answer your questions live on air. We might have been wondering what was going on if you couldn't hear me. If you're wondering why you've, if you think you've just tuned into Sewing Quarter, you're thinking, why are we seeing pictures of a dog? That's my new puppy, Teddy. I got permission to show you a little picture of him this morning. We had some requests to see him yesterday. And no doubt I'll be talking about him. So we picked him up on Saturday. He's only, he's, well, he's nine weeks old now, so he's tiny. They're saying upstairs he looks a lot like the cushion. In fact, that might be a, it might be a slipper he's sat on there. But he is very, very cute. And I'm looking forward to having some, um, some little makes some little coats to take him out, take him out in. So he's my new, new addition, Teddy Burrows, or Ted. <laughs> he, he, so yeah, he, he needs a full name, of course he does. Producer Hannah said, does he need a full name? It's very official, Teddy Burrows. That's what they'll call out in the vets, won't they? But yeah, he's very cute. He's a multi piece. He's a cross between a Maltese and a poodle. He's gorgeous. Can't wait to see him when I get home tonight. So in this hour, we've got loads and loads of bags, hence all of these fabric bundles. But we'll start, first of all, with our bundle of the day. So this has been really popular this morning. This is our essentials bundle. You're making a £25 saving bundle. So you've got 36 fat quarters. You've got 12 yellows, 12 blues and 12 greens. Producer Hannah just used the phrase, I'm alarmed by the amount of you with these in your basket. So if you have got this in your basket, the anthology bundle, you do need to check it out to guarantee that it's yours. So you also get the pinking shears. They're the sewing quarter branded pinking shears. You've got 12 yellow fat quarters, 12 greens and 12 blues, which you can just see here. So let's show you those. These have got a really lovely um, sort of mottled effect. And I'm just going to show you that whole array of colour so you can see. Look at that. All of that fabric for your stash. All of your spring colours. This is like an accordion. <laughs> I'll just show you one example of those so you can see just an example of what that batik sort of um, marbly effect looks like. Let's open this lovely powder blue one. Nearing single figures on that. Now, the thing is, if you're watching later on in the day, so we're now on Sky, as some of you, well, you can see behind me, it says on our, um, on our screen there. But this is on, we're on Sky Channel 678 and it's played on a loop all day. So the show that you're watching now will be on... Um, until eight o'clock tomorrow morning. So basically that does mean there's a, probably a bit more competition for the products that we have got on. So if you do want this this morning, take advantage of the fact you are watching live. Check it out, LDGC55, 124.96. And you make a 25 pound saving. That's just one example of one of those beautiful anthology fat quarters. I'm distracted now because I'm thinking about going home and seeing Teddy. I just need to forget that. We've still got, we've still got two hours of sewing. Okay, 
There we go. That's the anthology bundle with the pinking shears. So don't keep Hannah up alarmed upstairs. Check out your baskets if it is in there and you do want it do you want to make it yours? Just make sure you process that through to the end. Now, in this hour, Jess is doing some bag making with us. So we've taken this from the Tilda Spring Ideas book and we've got two gorgeous little bags. So we've got this clutch with our little bow and then we've got this little, little bag that's great for, I think this is lovely for holiday if you wanted to take a little bag out in the evening. You don't want to overly take too many bits and pieces or a summer or spring wedding. Let me just, oh, a little bridesmaid's bag, actually, Jess just said, that's a good idea, or a prom. But you can just see, it's quite nice, isn't it, to have a clutch that you can just hold at the side. This has a variation with a ruffle, but Joe's, um, oh my goodness, I did that earlier. I keep put Joe on the brain, Joe Carter. Jess has done this with, um, with a bow today. So let's have a look at that inside. So this is from the Springtime Tilda book. We love Tilda here at Sewing Quarter. I'll start first of all with the bundle that we've got for these bags. Now you get a metre and a half of fabric. You could make three bags out of this bundle. So you could make three clutches or you could make um, two of the, um, the, the smaller bag and then one of the clutch. So this is from the Blue Cottage collection from Tilda, which is their newest collection. A really great, great price as you're getting two Macau fabrics there and half a metre of Tilda and your thread. JRGC77. And you don't have to make the bag, so you could make anything from the book if you wanted to, to just add a metre and a half of fabric to your stash. Now, next up, another one in the cottage collection. Now, this is again with Tilda, but this is a slightly different twist on this. So you get half a metre of green, of the um, bright green, half a metre of the spot on pink, and then you get a Tilda fat quarter. So again, that's from the cottage collection. So that's half of a half metre, if you get what I mean. It's a quarter of a metre. So 14 99 JRGC 55, and your threads as well. Then next up, we're back to the original uh, combination where you've got three half metre cuts and a thread as well. So a lovely teal shades in this. Which designer is this from? We'll just check that. It's a gorgeous print. Then you've got your crosshatch detail in the red and you've got your turquoise spot on. Turquoise bloom. Oh, this is from Art Gallery. This is from the Love Story range from Art Gallery. JQ GC 99. Then bundle option number four is our greys and a lovely springtime yellow. So this is a really gorgeous fabric with your spot on grey, your linear look grey. And then you've got your Barry J, the yellow fabric there with your floral. This is one of John's favourite fabrics, the lemonade bag, 1949. And then finally, we've got the bundle that Jess is making in this morning, which is my favourite. Really gorgeous. You get three different design prints in this one. So rather than teaming it with a solid, you've got beautiful florals, lovely pinks. You've got the tulips there. Again, this is art gallery fabric from the Dollhouse range. That's a really lovely bundle. And again, you don't have to use that for the bag. If you wanted to use it for something else, maybe you wanted to do a patchwork or you could do a cushion or you could do anything you fancy, a little storage caddy. JQGC 55, 25.49 for that one. Obviously, you've got the three patterned prints in that bundle. All really gorgeous. Now, we've also got two other bundles on the desk. Um, they're for a different Tilda bag, which I'll show you a little bit later. But this is from the Tilda Springtime book, the lovely clutch that we're going to do with Jess this morning. I'll take the book across with me. Let's head over to Jess. What's wrong with me this morning? Right. Joe on the brain. I'll answer Sorry, Jeff. Just don't call me Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> he used to be called Jeff. <laughs> Jeff the days when I was a smoker and my voice was deeper. I will call you People Jeff. People would phone up and say, is that Jeff? And I was like, I don't know who Jeff is. Well, you're Jeff. No, I'm not. No, I'm, I'm Jeff. Jeff. Um, Come on then, Jeff. Talk to me what we're making. <laughs> so um, we, we used actually the, 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 both books. The, um, the, the clutch. Spring one. I'm just yeah, the clutch one. comes from uh, this one, page 14. 
We love the Tilda books here. Let's look through the book. Let's just have a quick look first of all. So page 14. We'll get to that one in a second. But I, I love it as well because she always does them when she brings out a new fabric range. And I love Tilda. I've been buying Tilda for years. So um, I recognise some of these. They're really good for fussy cutting. Really nice because the pre prints are so detailed. Um, and she has things, and of course you can photocopy this if you're doing paper craft. She, oh, yeah, that's in the back, idea. I think she I think for this one there's actually little templates of little birds and bird bird cages. So really that's it's a very yummy typical book. of of Tilda, yeah. isn't it? That style. And also these dolls, or she calls them her angels, doesn't she? They're she, really pretty. They always pop up in different styles and, and she has these different seasonal books. So this is a spring one. I I, I have this fabric, it's it's just divine and it's as I say, fussy cutting, a bit of bond web on the back. You just cut that out, it's a really, really nice little detail. It's nice because all of the collections are interchangeable. Are. There's the bag. But also they're iconic, the prints. They are, they 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 they're they're I mean, they, there's no sort of time frame on them, really. There really isn't. They're gorgeous. And if you love Tilda, you are a Tilda fan. Yeah. You know, you, you know am, Tilda in and out, and oh, you can yeah. spot it. And I've started as well. You spot things that are made out of them, or if I'm out and about, and I'm like, oh, that's Tilda. Little you girls' start dresses, to know. Yes. you usually see loads, don't yeah. you, Tilda? So this one, this book has got the clutch in. Um, I did this, um, I did them back in ju in June, I think the 10th. I think Han will be able to confirm okay. that. I think it was the 10th. So you can go back so on YouTube. You can go back and you can see how I did the frill on doing the bow today. Um, and then the templates are in the back. Uh, just so many little ideas. I mean, look at the little denim jackets for, you know, dolls and things. Really, really pretty. It's a, and it's a really nice paper. It's got yes. a really, really nice matte finish yeah, that's to it. It's like really nice quality. Nice to use up with those angels as well. Look, if you want it's to just, use all oh, that. No, it's, it's just, it's really image heavy. I love books which are really pretty and lo loads of thoughts gone but into it's those styling. It's colours as well. It's yeah. got that, that sort of um, very soft feel to yes, it, hasn't really it? really soft. Um, it's just, and look, loads of like, ideas because it's, it's not just um, pay, um, fabric in her book, she also does the paper. So you had to make little, little paper boxes and bags and things. It's a really nice idea for gifts, for, for gifts and, yeah. party bags, all that sort of Look stuff. Look at that. I know, it's just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And um, I mean, it's, it's also, you want to go to that house, don't you? Yeah. I want this sewing studio. I want, I <laughs> want, I want, I want it. It's just gorgeous, isn't it? It really makes you go, ooh, I want to go to fabric shop and get loads Have of Have you seen in one of her other books, she has photos in her house in her Scandinavian. Yeah, I've got, it's I've like got a, a little cabin. one at home and I think it might be her, the, the, the one inside her house. I might have to go home and have oh, a look at honestly, it. Oh, honestly, it's one of those books where you go, I want to live here. <laughs> it's like a I was supposed to go back to my, to live my house where everyone, everyone else is in there and I have to have them as well, <laughs> as opposed to, this is all my style. <laughs> But they're just, I mean, it's look, very feminine little pink book cushions. As well. I know it's it really nice because it's not just bigger projects, it's little projects. So loads, loads, and using up scraps. I mean, look, little sewing labels, little ideas, because she does loads of paper. Work. Yeah, really, really nice little gifts. And at the back, she has all her, her gorgeous templates as well, which are really handy. Little dresses, oh, little sewing machine, look. And the angels as well yeah. that you can see. But you can know, it's a little detailing. It's really, really pretty. I and love now with post Christmas as well, you can start to make things for you again. Yeah, <laughs> don't just have this to be present. This is for me, no one else. We need this on our shelf. Look at that. Um, that is gorgeous. Tilted with a sewing machine. That's really, really pretty. Have we got the the, um, the birds at the back as well? I think the birds it's at the back of this one. Oh, here we go. Here are the templates. I'll tell you about template stuff in a minute. So maybe it's not on this one. Maybe it's another one. You get all but of those in there. Really loads. And we look. Oh, that's, that's, that's similar to my wing. I don't know, a bird. Oh, little tag. If you're doing a little tag, you can do a little tags. fabric tab with a little edge. And that's for the box, obviously. That's as well really bag. pretty. Oh, there we are. You see, this is it. These oh. you can photocopy. Get a good, or get a good copier. Yeah. Obviously, not to actually, you know, to sell, but actually for yourself. Lovely idea to actually photocopy that and put it on a card or something to give you us a gift. You could use that image. You could use that image. They're Especially really nice if you images. gave it with the angel with that mirror oh, in it. Oh, that'd, that'd be, be really lovely, pretty. It? A bit of card that'd be All lovely, matching. wouldn't it? Or someone who, someone you know who actually does loads of sewing. That's a really nice little thing to give them. I, I just love it. I love how the, the fact she has the whole sort of design on everything. Anything to do with design, she does her own sketches, she does her own drawings, and she's very generous on, on giving these to you. Yeah. To use. What I would say about templates, this is just a, a thing that I always do. If I'm photocopying a template, I tend to put a ruler on the page just in case. That's clever. Because then you can also, it also gives you an idea of how much, if you're out and about, oh, how much fabric do I actually need? But also, sometimes photocopiers, if, if you're having something, scanning something, it may not be a little bit, you want to make sure it's exactly the right size. But it's a really nice idea so you know exactly how much fabric you actually need when you've got but a template also, on there. Because sometimes you scale them up. Yeah, you, you scale them up, then you know what, what you size. need. Yeah. yeah. So that's just um, what I want to say. So, temp, so here we have our, this our lovely, doing today. lovely one. The other bag is in the other book, the, the one which you've got down there. But we're making this one, so today. We'll this one today. So really clear instructions, nice and colour, so you can see. Yes. 
Um, I love the fact her illustrations use her fabric as well, which is in the photographs you get. Yeah, they're really nice. And these bundles as well, where you're getting a metre and a half of fabric, you could do any of these Tilda projects with these. Lots of them, as Jess was saying, or Jeff was saying, <laughs> <laughs> you've, got these, so you've got these smaller um, smaller projects in there, so you could just, you could use that fabric for, you might have some left over anyway. Yeah. You've got enough to do three bags, so you yeah. could just do one bag, and then you could do a pincushion and an angel, or you could... I mean, we're talking about doing this and maybe having a, 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 a chain yes. would be really pretty. Doing something I, like that? I think that hanging down at the side with a nice really long chain nice. view, or a ribbon or a ribbon whatever you actually want so with this particular bag uh it talks about you can use a really sort of stiff interfacing i've used our standard medium and it works absolutely fine still got some body to it still got some it body stands for. up yeah it stands up it's absolutely fine so what it tells you to do first of all is you cut out your template so here is my template it comes in two parts which you then stick together okay. and it's it's that's the fold so as you can see, this has been, I mean, this is the one I used back in um, June. <laughs> and this time, and it's perfectly fine. Keep this, is, of this it. is your strap. Um, so you can photocopy that or, or what, if, if you want to do the frill instead, whatever you actually want to do. So this means that your fabric is cut on the fold and also your interfacing. First of all, you cut out your interfacing first. You have two pieces, one which is the main body of the bag, which is this doubled, and one which is this part. What would you call that part? Front? The, yes. Well, the front, front room. Front gusset. Front I don't panel. know. Front yeah, panel. The, the front it's panel. two panels which are then sewn together with these points here to give it that nice um, shape. So it actually well, it means you can actually fit things in there. You put, yeah, than, you I mean, know. there's nothing worse than one of those really thin clutches. You can't even get your phone. I've you, got one like that and her. I can't quite fit my, no, can't quite fit my hairbrush yeah. in there. It's quite annoying. You, <laughs> and, and anything you put, put in there looks really bulky and yeah, a bit lumpy. You know? Whereas this is brilliant because you can put loads of stuff in there. Yeah. And um, you know when you have to stretch the button over and it doesn't, oh, yeah. doesn't quite fit? No, it's no, horrible. You've got, a, you've got a bit of room in there, which is nice. You've got loads nice of room. Yeah, you could put loads of, actually, you could put loads of stuff in there. Actually, better. you could use this. You could have it just as a makeup bag, sort of on the side, well, yeah. as a storage, couldn't you? Yeah, because um, this has been done with a popper, but you could just do it with a bit of Velcro if you wanted to. Yeah. Whatever you coat it. Oh, you, it like that's the thing. Oh, there's, so many, there's so many options. Um, so, first of all, you cut out two pieces of interfacing. Uh, you use your, I've already cut mine out because we'll make sure we get this done in time. So this is our lovely um, iron-on interfacing. You put your, fold it in half, and you line your template up on the fold, and you draw all the way around, like that. Yeah. And then it tells you in the book for your um, main body, which is the, the, the big bit, to add a, a um, seam allowance, whatever you like. I tend to do a centimetre or you could do half a quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch whatever you actually want, on the outside. And then you cut it out, which looks like that. So as ah. you can see, we've got interfacing here, but not interfacing here. The reason you don't have it here, and it shows you in the book, is when you iron this onto your fabric and then cut it round, you add your interfacing on the outside of your fabric, and then you fold your fabric over, so you get a nice smooth edge here. Yes, it's not so, too stiff on so, the... Yes, it's not there. So I will iron this onto our lovely fabric. We've chosen this okay. gorgeous bundle, which I absolutely love. The blue bundle is the one um, that Jess has made up with these two bags this morning. So you can see that that's on your screen at the moment at the bottom. So that's the Tilda Blue Cottage collection. You get the uh, Tilda print and then you also get the cream linear look fabric. And you get a third fabric as well, which is your uh, is a paler blue, which I don't know if yeah. the lining... Oh, the lining It is, it's, it's lined in there. I mean, this one I actually lined it with this lovely linear but I line that one in, in, in the blue. It's a gorgeous blue in that. It's a, it's nice, a really nice icy blue. You can see it just in it's there. really, really pretty. <laughs> just about, there it is. What so I that's would, your third fabric. What I would say is if your bag, your, your print is directional, is bear that in mind when you cut your, your pieces because you do your main body and then for your, with the template, for your other part, the front part, it's folded over, it's got the line on there. You oh, fold yeah. that over. So you have a smaller piece, which I'll, I'll show you in a sec. Um, so your smaller piece is on the front there and your larger pieces on the back. So just make sure that your pieces, when you cut them out, your um, directional print lines up so that your actual directional print yes. is like this. So I'm just going to have a quick look to see on this one. It would be more obvious on a fabric like this. Yeah. This is the, uh, the second bundle that Jess is using now. It's just going to come up on your screen. But it would be much more obvious if you had this upside down as you put yeah, the flap as of the bag would. over the top. So I'll show you what I've done on that one already which is the, um, the front bit. I'll explain this bit in a bit, but you can see the print goes like that. So your fold 
where it goes down needs to be that way up. So it will be ironed on over. the other way around. Yeah, I'm with you. And I'll show you. So it means we turn this way around. I absolutely, I saw this print last week when, when Tash was this doing Jackie Jill. This is my favourite this morning. It's gorgeous. And I saw it and I went, ooh, I gasped. And Tasha <laughs> just, just gosh, she hasn't seen this one. There it is. That's there the dollhouse bundle. So you get those three different prints. But the thing, you know, sometimes you have one fabric so that you're not as keen on. I love all three of those in that bundle. It really yeah, is. Yeah, they're really nice. I didn't cut into the um, the, the gorgeous pink one. You keep um, it. No, because <laughs> yeah, if you don't cut into it, you have to bring it back. So I'm, I, I put it on the pile in the office and sort of said goodbye Roger to me. it. Yeah. So this one, so you can see, this is now looks upside down. But when it's ironed on, it will sit the right way with the body It will of the sit bag. the right way. Okay. Okay. So, but when you iron it on, it looks like it's upside down. So I'll just quickly so iron it on. You've got to iron the on. interfacing on. That's yep. the next step. That's the next step. Um, obviously, follow the instructions on your interfacing, depending on what interfacing you're using. It, don't use steam if it says, you know, dry. Yeah. Um, this one is a dry one. So just be very, very careful on it. Because the last thing you actually want is bubbles, especially something like this. Sometimes it happens, you just press the bubble out, but it can be a bit annoying. Well, depending on the purpose of the bag as well, you might choose a different yeah. interfacing. So we've got, you know, you might want to go for a heavier weight one, or you might, if you didn't interface it, it would have a very different feel. It wouldn't have that, you know, it does stand up. That's true, it wouldn't. It wouldn't have the same feel. Um, with this, just make sure when you iron your interfacing on, that the actual top part, whatever fabric you're actually using, make sure there's enough seam allowance around the top part of your, your, your clutch to fold over. So if you're going right to the edge, if you're saving your fabric, just make sure there is a bit for you to cut A around. little tiny bit there yeah. so you can turn it over. So we'll just press this on. This will be really, really quick. Um, obviously, you'd have a really smooth ironing board. You're not doing it on the side of <laughs> on the desk. mat, on the edge of a table. Oh, no, like, the interface that Jess is using as well, just coming up on your screen, so it's already there. NXJQ17, so if you do want, that's a medium weight um, meter square of interfacing. So if you do want to yeah. use that one, then you can. But we've got loads. It's the same as I was saying earlier with wadding. If you are new to us, it, it's worth having a little look at the website, just so you've got an idea of what's going on there. But there's a search bar at the top, and you could look at the whole wadding section. You could look at the whole interfacing section. Um, haberdashery so there's all sorts of perhaps you're thinking oh I need a specific length zip to do this or I need to buy some buttons or some ribbon it is all there so it is worth having a little look around and obviously you can search by designer for different fabric types as well it's also really useful to have a load in your stash because you just don't know sometimes you might actually need a different one than the one you actually normally use so it's nice you, think, you can see something you think oh that's that, that, that and you can combine really them for idea. different projects as well yeah, you might absolutely. want different fills to different yeah. parts I mean you can if you actually want to with this particular interfacing do it double to make it thick oh that's a good idea yeah you can if you want to whatever you actually fancy we just move that down a bit it's a bit difficult when it's on the edge but we're doing it so I'm just going to grab that summer book so while you're just finishing ironing yeah the other bag this bag is I think on page 20 okay so as I was saying the Tilda books come sort of seasonally so that's the spring book that we just looked through that the clutch is from the other little bag here which would be lovely for a wedding or oh, for yeah, a flower um, girl yeah imagine we've got little girl. things in there I thought that was a little girl a little girl's bag um this is the summer book so depending what sort of season um, or what projects you like the look of I'll just flip through this one so you've got an idea of what's in here so shifting more towards um sort of greens and pinks Again, you've got your angel. She talks about her techniques at the beginning. Maybe you've already got the spring book and you fancy a different one and you've exhausted the projects in there. She makes lovely outfits for all of her little dolls. Lots of adults as well, you know, collect these, have them on their shelves at home or they don't have to be for children. As we go through. That's lovely sort of garland using her angels there. This is the bag. So you can see how in different fabrics it looks very different. You could obviously adapt that according to which bundle you've got this morning. But you get a metre and a half of fabric in those bundles, so you could make a few of these different projects if you wanted to. Lovely little dresses and, oh, that's cute. No, will work. Cushions. I love that shape cushion. Sort of a bolster cushion pop them on the sides of the sofa or in the, in the middle of the bed they look nice too this sort of, and these sorts of colours look lovely and then you've got little trinklets the word I used yesterday trinklets yeah, I love that word but you know when you've got little bits left over in your stash or bits to use up you could make little hanging uh, decorations you could pop those or you could give them as a gift you could put, make those into lavender bags if you wanted to to pop them in your um, in your drawers to make things smell nice. Our producer Hannah's been making lavender bags with her new Elna 540 sewing machine. Nice. 
that's her first project, just get the, uh, get the sewing machine going. And then at the back, you've got your patterns. She's saying her mum's going to be receiving a lot of lavender bags. She, she wants to get used to her new machine. She said she's got too many in all of her. She's practising her different stitches. So you need to do one of Tilly's stitch journals. I'll have a lavender bag. Come on, bring in the lavender bags. <laughs> and then again, at the back, you've got those um, colour accessories for tags. And like uh, Jess was saying, you could use those if you wanted to create little uh, stitch, you can stitch those on as labels. <laughs> live TV disaster. What's happened? Live TV disaster. Talk to me. Right, live TV disaster. Come is on, Jess. This <laughs> is, is a bit thick and a bit padded okay. and, a, and a bit bobbly on the edge. With an ironing board, it's really smooth. So I have done, this is live TV. So we're gonna go ahead with it, guys. I don't know what's about to what's just happened. You. Fill me so in. The, I, when your iron interfacing on, it should look like that. Okay. When your iron then interfacing smooth. on, on the edge of the desk, when it's folded over and all bubbly and all thick, you end up with interfacing like this. Okay. But well, <laughs> we don't care. We'll pretend. We're gonna pretend. It will, because you imagine this is serene yeah, and oh, beautiful. Yeah, oh, it's all lovely, it's, it's fine. All lovely. We don't mind. We don't we mind, love you. that's all right. So. We're going to carry on. We're going to imagine this is all smooth. So there we are. So I'm just going to, as you can see, when you <laughs> iron out, we're going to carry on. Oh yeah. When you iron it on, <laughs> hilarious, isn't it? When you iron it on, you tend to, with this lovely pen, lose your definition. So I'm just going to put the marks back in. So this is not going to be something that somebody's going to take away from the sewing quarter and use it in a wedding. They might take one look at it and think, <laughs> they can think this you've already made. What has Jess done? What a mess. Anyway. But we're going to pretend it's beautiful. Also, That's right. it's it just TV. goes these to show happen. it's live TV. These of things course. happen. And also, what it actually means is that if we make a mess... Everyone makes a mess. Everyone if makes a mess. Interest, though, if that did happen at home, do you need to start again, really? Yes. Would you? Yeah. If it happens at home, um, as soon as you're actually doing it, you think, oh, that's a bit wrong. I would actually rip this off. And oh, I'd right, put, so you can maintain the fabric. Yeah, I wouldn't actually put the same piece of interfacing back on again because it might be a bit bobbly, but I would actually keep it to one side because you can always... You just really smaller part little of it. bits and plastic cut. And you can actually, because this is actually cut down from another bigger bit, um, you've, you've got enough fabric to actually reuse it. So I've just, just yeah, I mean, that, so we're just bobbly. ignoring this hideous mess. <laughs> I love that she just made. quickly cover the, quick, get the paper off. Oh, <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be fine. We'll, we'll wing it. That's what we do. We wing it. Because that's what happens in life. Do you know what, though? It makes us all real. Everyone's human. Everyone at home yeah. makes mistakes all the time. It's, not, it's fine. Yeah. We had a message from Go on, Anne. You get a Jess, lot. you're brilliant. We don't care. We've all done it. <laughs> Thank See? you. Thanks, Anne. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, these things happen on live TV, folks. So we're just going to try our best with what we've actually got here. Do you know what, though? It wouldn't be right if everything just happened smoothly and all went perfectly all of the time. No, because it wouldn't. Because you also need to know how to deal with those if it, yeah. you know, if it doesn't well, How you deal with this is you go, for pity's sake, you put it down. You put a glass of wine. You cup start of tea, again. <laughs> depending on whether you're going to be in a car later. Um, yes. And catching your children. Um, and you would actually put it to one side and you would go and have a cup of tea and maybe find those biscuits that you actually bought for somebody else, you know, visitors that turn up. Yep. You, you need the to the biscuits. biscuits. Yeah, and then you actually just eat them all in one sitting with a massive cup of tea, feel um, slightly sick, but a lot better, and then start again. <laughs> so, so, that's my idea so imagine, if you will, this is actually beautiful and like that. Okay. So we're going to carry on. So we've done that. We're going to cut out this fabric. We're going to have a little inward cry because it's such beautiful fabric. There we are. Um, we're going to, right. we're just going with it. So we're just going to cut round um, the beautifully ironed on, not in any way bobbly interfacing. <laughs> and but look at this lovely fabric. Look at the lovely fabric. It's don't, really don't look lovely. At the, it's lovely. Sad, slightly disheveled mess of a fabric that I've actually done. There we are. So when you come to this top part, oh, it looks looks like a wrinkled elephant, doesn't it? When you come to this top part... I'm thinking it might be better when we turn it over. Yeah. It'll be OK. You add on your lovely... Oh, it won't be. It'll be just as hidge. <laughs> but there we are. But the lining's nice. I'll show you the lining. Yes. The lining's beautiful. Um, so you just add on your interfacing, your um, seam allowance. You're not actually going to stitch along. You're going to stitch along the edge of this particular interfacing. So uh, it doesn't need to be exact or beautifully smooth or anything. It's just so you actually have enough to turn over on the edge of your back. So Trisha Rand also messaged in, Go never on. mistakes, just happy accidents. Happy accidents, that's See? true. Thanks, Trisha Rand. <laughs> Even then when you're crying inside, it's fine. But yeah, it's true because some, sometimes you do, not necessarily this. Um, I suppose the lesson you learn from this is don't iron on a bobbly piece of thing on the edge no. of your table. Um, wearing a full load of makeup. <laughs> also, when you're doing makeup stuff like this, don't have bright red lipstick because you'll end up, you know, biting threads. <laughs> just saying. 
Anyway, <laughs> I have learnt that through this mistake because I do like a bright red lip. Right. I always think how much you see your when you have your, Thank with you. your it's the grey hair you see. I, really, I, I love your, no, honestly, your, your lip really colour. See, but for me, it'd look, it'd look all sort of washed out and a bit, I don't, bit well, ancient. I, 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 you really see bright. I never, Thank I hardly you. ever wear a bright lipstick. I feel, always feel a bit. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it suits my colouring, but I really envy people that wear them. Well, I, I, I sort of am um, used to always, but now we're, now we're talking about makeup, guys. Um, <laughs> I used to always um, wear them because I've got, I had the colouring of Snow White, very sort of like dark. My hair, natural hair dark is very, very dark. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, it's really dark. Um, I've been dying it for so many years, I had, hadn't actually realised just how, how, yeah, how dark, dark it was. Because it, it always fades anyway when you have, have grey and you're covering it up, so it fades. Right, okay, this is now beautifully cut out. Yep. Imagine. We <laughs> would love your imagination. So what are you are frozen. We're going to let, yes. it, go. let, let it, it go. Let it go. Let it go. Who would you be, Elsa or Anna? I'd, I'd have to go. Anna. Mm, maybe, maybe Anna. Maybe Anna. Yeah. Now, you what you be Elsa. I'll be Elsa. Which one's Elsa? <laughs> is she the one who fell apart? I can't remember. <laughs> no, Elsa's the one with the, with the blonde um, who let it go. Yeah. Anyway, so what you actually do is you then use Bondaweb. Bondaweb is used to, you then iron, you cut a bit, I'll show you in a sec, and you put it on your lovely interfacing here. You iron that on, it's a little strip, and then you fold this over. A bit like English paper bit piecing. Like, yeah, a bit like that. Yeah. So you have your lovely Bondaweb, and there we have it all. It might actually fit, you never know your luck. This is just the outside, outline of the template, just on the outline, but you cut a little bit further in and a little bit further in because you want it to be on the inside, not that width. So yeah. what I'll do is I'll get a pair of scissors. So just by eye, you would just take maybe a little fraction yeah, off. Yeah, just take there. a fraction off. Hope it fits, because I've now shrunk the interface. Wonderweb is on the website if you do need any. Oh, seriously, have it in your stash. I, I always have loads of Wonderweb. I absolutely love Wonderweb. Oh, we've got a photo sent in from Lorraine. Ooh. Let's have a little look at what you've made. Oh, oh look at it with a heart in the middle. Oh, I oh, love look. that. She's done both the dress and cushion and the oh, little touch bag. Got, the little touch bag's got a little sort of um, scalloped edge as well. You see the dress and cushion? Remember the book we were looking at earlier? We had the, the, the template had the little little sort of curved edge. Yes. It was like a, a little, like a daisy. Yeah. That's a similar shape, And isn't I really it? like it really with the button pretty. in the middle. It just pulls it in, Oh, I love it? the button. And does that look like it's got a, it's got white, is that embroidery around the, the heart? What does Hannah They're say? Because nice you might be able to see it better. Might be able to see upstairs. But that's really, oh, I love beautiful. that. That's really pretty. Thanks, Ryan. Oh, I really love lovely. that. How funny that you've done both the Dresden and the and the bag. Love a bag. Oh, you can't. You do love bags. bags, yeah. Well, you, and then you open a cupboard and you sort of like sneak another one in, and, that... and then you get the, the Paddington hard stare. <laughs> Another bag. My really? money. Yes. <laughs> do I like? We've got another bag picture sent in What's from like? Brenda. Let's see. Ooh, Ooh I like that one. Pom poms. Oh, it's got little buttons on it as well. We were talking about those this morning. Oh, I love the pom pom trim. trim. That's really nice. And you know what? I love a you know the, the thicker well? handle. Oh yeah. Oh, really cute. But the thicker handle as well is always great, just because it's a bit more. You have more robust, more durable, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's like really a duffel. Nice. Thanks, I love Brenda. That. We've had loads of pictures of bags, and we can't show them all on the show. We will show some as we go through. And I'll, I always look when I come off air anywhere. I like to like have to see a, all your have mates. a little look and see what have we've been doing. Now I'm just gonna because I have shrunk this for being you know sheer genius. Yeah, yeah, just trim a bit off. Just so you get the, the impression. Imagine this is an impressionist of a successful bank. <laughs> right, okay. So we just and we're just so gonna why are we putting the bonder web on? The bonder web goes on so you can actually fold the edge of your bag over because this is your lining is made separate from your bag. So if you zoom in on this beautifully made bag and bright red nails, you'll yeah. see this bit here is actually the actual lining is sewed separately on top. So it's like sandwished together, yeah. not, they're not inside out. They're okay. sort of sandwiched together. So that's why you want this nice edge, which is the same on there as well. It's also nicer to actually have a little bit more, so your lining isn't poking out when you fold it over. It's nice to move it in a little bit. So even though the it same just size. just gives you that nice, crisp, yeah, professional it gives you a nice edge. Professional, because we're all about professionalism here. Of course it is. Um, just to let you know, stock warning, over half the stock of the Spring Ideas book has gone from Tilda, so $7.99, really great price point for a book if you're looking for some inspiration in January, maybe to make some things for yourself just to, just to uh, cheer, cheer you up or to spruce up your house a little bit. So the Spring book there, the stock warning, RCJQ82, um, over half of those have gone, so please do check out your baskets if you like that one. Right, now what I'm doing is I'm very carefully, she says inwardly laughing at herself, um, ironing the bonder web onto the um, interfacing, just so you've actually got effectively your glue. 
So this kind of acts a little bit like a double-sided tape, doesn't it? It's yeah. And you were talking, remember yesterday we, we talked about the mini iron. This yes. would be a really good job for mini iron because with something this small, you might end up with a little bit of glue on the edge of your iron. So it's if something with that little mini iron. You could um, just get that would be a really nice and idea. A little, yeah, exactly. It'd be a really nice, nice way of sort of putting it on. So I'm just going to quickly go like that. We've just got two more pictures to have a look at while Ooh, I'm just look. designing that on. Oh, oh Susan's wow. made that one. Is that embroidery? I think that, yeah, on the front. That's lovely. That's lo And I like the um, a longer strap as well. Sometimes you want to put it over like a cross shoulder oh, bag. Oh, yeah, yeah, I always have a cross shoulder nice bag. Too. And then from Teresa. Is that meant to, are the balloons, hot air balloons are there? Oh, so, that's really pretty. It's quite sort of a nice, oh, what do you call it? Eight round the world in 80 days oh, feel. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's lovely. And you've got a spire quilt in the background there. Oh, yeah. The quilts are and a bag maker. Do love a quilt. Thanks to those ladies. Love to see them. It's all going wrong here today. All right, let me just shove this on. Why don't you just do that fiddly bit? You're just, peel, just, just peeling putting that it on. back. Yep. I'm just going to recap those bundles. Okay, cool. You go and do that I'll while I... I'll pause you here. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Recover from your, Recover from from your drama. So, the most popular bundle for these um, two little bags this morning. Which one is it? It's the one that Jesse sampled in, so it's this blue one. So if you are liking the floral and you want to add that one to your stash, you don't necessarily have to make the bag. You could make whatever you like. Um, it's a metre and a half in that bundle. So you get half a metre of the Tilda floral, half a metre of the linear look fabric, and half a metre of that cool blue, 17.99. And as I said earlier, that's from the Blue Cottage collection, that Tilda fabric. So that's their latest collection. Now, closely followed by the Barry J, so the lemonade, the yellow one that we've got here. So we've got the grey spot on, we've got the uh, grey linear look fabric, and then you've got that gorgeous yellow floral with a grey thread as well. Less than 20 of the lemonade left in stock, so if you do like that one, just so you're aware, not to apply any pressure, but just so you know what the situation is. And then... My favourite one is the Dollhouse um, bundle, which is the one that Jess is working with at the moment. So you've got three lovely prints in this, three florals, all art gallery fabrics with your lovely pinks and greys and little splashes of blue in there as well. 25.49, JQGC 55. And we've, as, we, as I say, it's been labelled as the doll, uh, the bag and purse bundle, but it doesn't have to be. You could use that for... Whatever takes your fancy. Then we've also got one more that follows that same uh, sort of routine with the three half metre cuts, so a metre and a half of fabric in total. You've got, again, that art gallery fabric there. You've got your uh, post box red linear look fabric, and then you've got your turquoise spot on. Turquoise balloon. 1949. And one, just to, um, just to break the trend a little bit, a more affordable bundle. Um, this one here has been teamed with two half metre cuts and then a fat quarter. So you get one, a, a metre and a quarter in this. Um, you've got your thread there, your green solid, your pink spot on, and then again from the Tilda Cottage collection, so that most recent range from Tilda in your cream and pink, 14 99 Now, we promised earlier that we'd show you a couple of other Tilda bundles because we had a bag on last week that was incredibly popular. Lots of you asking to see it again. And because we were doing Tilda bags today, we thought we'd sneak it back in for you. So Victoria Pete made this bag. Um, I'll show you. It comes from this book. This is the bag. On Tuesday, you can go back and watch on YouTube if you want to, if you want to see how Victoria made that. It's a really lovely bag. I'll just show you it on my shoulder so you can see. It's got gorgeous pocket detail at the side and that's got wadding in so if you wanted to pop your phone or something that you know you, you that needs a little bit of protection you could pop that in there lots of pockets we love a pocket for all your little bits and pieces and then inside you've got your fastening and your beautiful tilde fabric on the back there so just looking at the pattern for this it comes from the bag boutique book this book is so, so popular. We only got this back in the other day and there are so many fantastic bag, um, bag designs in here. I'll show you the front of the book to start with just so you can see. 
What a great name. Debbie Van, and I'm reading this upside down. Debbie Von Grabler Crozier. What, a, what an intricate name. So the bag boutique, you've got 20 different bags in here. So if you do love your bags and you're looking for something new, less than a pound per bag, 14.99. Hundreds and hundreds of these sold the other day. Lots of beautiful bags in here. So first of all, as with a lot of these books, you've got an intro on techniques and haberdashery and what to expect when you're making a bag, how to utilise certain pieces of equipment. Moving there into the different techniques. Inside a zip. And let's get onto the actual bags themselves. So French knots there, looking at the, um, if you wanted to embroider a bag, Come on, we have so much information on what to do. I want to see some bags. There we go. So they're all, they've all got little names. You've got the lorry bag there. Some of them have got a nice little Scandinavian feel. Lovely detail there with um, embellishments and applique. You've got the Liesel. The author of this is actually German, so you've got some really lovely... Look at... You've got the Shirley. That's a very German name. I don't think so. <laughs> but lovely different shapes and, and, and also just little bits and pieces that you could add on, so pom-poms and tassels, just to really personalise something. You've got different handles, you've got different straps, different shapes depending on maybe the occasion that you want to make it for. Oh, the Hannah producer, Hannah's upstairs, chuffed about that one. Hannah loves that bag, one of her favourites. You've got the Lottie. We've made that one previously on the show. Oh, that's nice. The Mina, do you reckon we say that? Mina? Mina? Mina. But a nice, the Mina, the nice, that's a nice simple bag but with, the, um, with your rucksack straps there. But they're all very different styles, so a nice little backpack if you're heading out on a day out. But very detailed, nice detailed instructions. Also, you've got these tips throughout for these pink boxes, just giving you little extra snippets of information. I'll just show you a couple more. Oh, I like the Margaret. So you fold that over. You've got that little um, sort of extra flap there, and then you could lift it if you wanted to see. So you could use a clip-on shoulder strap, or you could just use a regular handle. And with patchwork as well being used there. So loads of ideas. I could go on and on showing you all of the little extra things in this book. The Ingrid bag, a nice sort of a bigger bag. Maybe if you go to, go to the gym or to an exercise class and you want to take a, more of a, a larger bag with you. Got a cross the shoulder bag. Nice deep bags. So you've got hidden pockets in there. You've got slip pockets. You've got zip pockets. Children's bags, the Gertrude. It's a little bit creepy with the dolls there, isn't it? It's a little bit, it's a bit like a horror film. We don't have to make those. Just look at the bag. Scary, <laughs> Scary doll eyes. Some nice little children's bags there, though. Nice to make for, for birthdays and things. There it is. So... The Kirsten, this is the bag that, um, that Victoria made on Tuesday. So if you want to go back, you can watch on YouTube. But we've got two bundles to make this bag this morning. And I have got the actual one here to show you. So you have got the, the lovely thing about this is in the back of the book, you've got this wallet and then you've got full size patterns in here. So you can take those straight out. You don't need to scale them up. You've got all, I won't open that right up because I won't get it back in neat entirely. But you've got all of your um, templates printed on there. So you can take those from the wallet at the back. Okay, beautiful. Oh, we've had an email from, from Crafty Jane. Okay, what's Crafty Jane got to say? Oh, she's doing the lorry bag from the book and she's nearly finished it. Well, we're going to need a picture when you're done with that, please, so we can share it on the show. Loads and loads of bags in there. And this was the one that Victoria made. So I'm just going to show you the bundles for that if you did want to give this one a go. Oh, it was on on Wednesday, not Tuesday. I'm just being corrected. So if you do want to watch that on YouTube. So what date, what date is it today? The 19th? 18th? the 19th today so that would be the 17th if you want to go back and watch it so the two bundles for that the color that you can see here this colorway with the gray utilizing again the tilde then you've got the um you've got the red thread you've got a red ribbon 
you've got your two grey fabrics as well. And you've also got your zip there that you can use for that pocket at the front. You've got a me uh, two metres of fabric. So which one do you get a metre of? The grey here at the bottom, so that's for the lining of the bag. 26.99. Or if you prefer that, in, obviously you'll have loads of ribbon left in your stash as well, and thread. If you wanted to make that in more of a turquoisey colour theme, then you've got again a tilde floral, half a metre, half a metre of your, um, your linear effect one, and then you've also got your solid. Again, you've got your ribbon. <laughs> Let's throw the thread off the table. And you've got a navy zip with that one. I'm just going to show you the half a metre of that so you can just see the really beautiful design of that floral. So in either the, um, the blue or the red, it's the same print, just in a different colourway. IWGC 99 is the blue bag. And obviously all of your instructions and details are in the book if you want to buy that separately. That's going across the bottom of your screen. Loads of bag inspiration. Bags of inspiration. We'll try and show some more bag pictures because we've had loads sent in, so thank you for those. Let's head back over and carry on. So where did we get to, Jess? We're just bag making... Bag inspiration. Bag inspiration, that's a new word. You made that, you <laughs> trademark that quickly. Trademark it. You know the, um, the lovely Tilda print? You've got that lovely sort of spray. That'd be lovely if you... Lovely, lovely. If you cut it out and bond with it on something like that as oh, a little yes. detail, that you would really it, layer it, it, really it. pretty. So... What I've actually done is if I the bond word on and then you snip anything which has got a curve, you can just see it's a bit frilly, on here. The reason being is that you then fold and press. You know, like in the English paper piecing, you sort yeah. of fold and you sort of it goes over each other to get that smooth line. Make sure you don't snip right to the edge of your fabric because otherwise you'll see the edge there. You need to snip just so you've got enough so you can actually bend it, but so you can't actually... So you can just see, so you can't actually see it up to the edge. Yeah. So I'll just quickly okay. press that on. This is from the Tilda Spring Ideas book. So if you have just joined us, we're very limited on stock on that one now. It's flown out this morning. So there's loads of inspiration in there. $7.99. We've got less than half the stock of that one left now. Um, but that's what the clutch bag is from. So if you wanted to see, this is this one here. But um, if you do buy one of those Tilda bundles this morning, you'll have more than enough. You could make three bags out of those metre and a half bundles. Or you could use it for something else if you wanted to. But you can do a twist on this bag as well. Jess previously did it last June, so quite June a while the 10th, ago. June I think. the tenth, so well remembered. Oh yeah, um, I had a look the other day. The, you could do it with a ruffle, so you can either have the bow on the front or the ruffle, or you could, like you've just said, if you wanted to add some applique yeah, or yeah, because the, the, the fabric lends itself to it. There's so many. I mean, all those prints they, they lend the tildes, themselves to fussy. They mix and match. Tildes, don't they they as do. Well. They really do. Um, so yeah, you, you could easily sort of take one of the details and fussy cut it. If you wanted to sort of do another bag, you could make it out of the, the solid and then fussy cut some of the little details and put those on, add a bit of embroidery, you know, that sort of thing. And that's what you see as well in the books. So you do notice that she adds lots of little, they're kind of like little splashes of something else. You'll just cut out a little flower and add it there and you just do layer it up to sort of really build that. You do, yeah, you do. So this is actually now look. really hot. This is actually it. And then the summer ideas book. Okay. So if you're a bit confused why there are two books, the spring book, the Tilda spring book, is where the clutch is from. If you like this little bag, which would be lovely, we were saying for flower girls or for a wedding or as a little holiday bag, then we've got the summer book. So that's just uh, shifting a season along, if you fancy a, a twist on some of those. So you get some different angels and decorations and things. You can see on the back here some of the projects that are included. Fabric in there is absolutely gorgeous. In, this, in the summer in book? In the summer book, yeah. Really, I've, I've actually have some of those fabrics. So I use them so for fussy cutting. Pens. There it is. Yeah, Look they're at that. really pretty. I just think they're very feminine. That's what I like. Really they're feminine. Very... If you like pretty, pretty. And I love You're pretty. Sort of, yeah, yeah, I love things like this. Especially in a house full of boys. <laughs> really, really nice. If, oh, we've got a picture already of the, the rain bag. That um, Jane's made. Let's have a look. Oh, look Crafty at that. Jane. That's gorgeous. Oh, oh look, that's lovely. Oh, that embroidery is divine. That's fab. I love that. I love the colours on that. That, that. that sort of green really popping it. It looks really nice. With the, um, with the purples and pinks. So that's the lorry bag from the Bag Boutique book. Thanks for that, Crafty Jane. Now, are you, are you crafties and you make things or are you crafty? Oh, like are a you, fox. Are you sneaky? Sneaky, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe both. I think I'd be both. Is that, both? Yeah. Do you want to be famous or infamous? Well, who knows? Who knows, exactly. <laughs> both. 
Right, okay, so I'm doing this. Very, very careful when you're doing anything like this, you, it will get hot. Okay. So be very careful with your fingers. On the website, we do have, um, as just mentioned earlier, the Clover Mini Iron, which is fantastic if you are making some of the Tilda toys as well, and those Tilda angels, because you make clothes for them and little dresses and dungarees and outfits. There are fiddly, intricate bits on those where using a normal iron might be a bit, a little bit difficult. It might get a bit hot. Um, yeah. So it is good for getting right into those nooks and crannies. You can really sort of create the shapes that you want to using the heat and they without are. the danger of burning your fingers. It's got a tiny little... I'm just about the scissors. It's got a tiny little um, end. It looks like a tiny trowel, like a toy trowel, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's just oh, I really love it. it's small really little. nice. So this is, when you're doing this, um, when you're, uh, if you have just joined us, this is actually a bit of a mess. This is live telly, folks, but we're winging it. We had a disaster. We had a disaster, with, disaster with, um, but that's we're carrying on. So anyway, so this is now, um, imagination, beautifully ironed on yeah. as this one is. It's not, so, just so you know, in case you have just tuned in, it's not a major thing. No, the interfacing just went a bit bobbly. Went a bit bobbly. So, so it's not lying flat. We've cried about it. Um, and um, we would have sussed again if we're doing this for reals. So then you have these two bits, and then you actually sew your bag together. The way you actually do it is you do right sides together. Okay. So obviously for your, for your main front, you would do exactly the same. Add your, interface, your, your seam allowance on top of your cut interfacing and then fold it down as you have here. Yep. Beautifully done in Bonte Web. So then you pin these two sides together. You've still got your stitching lines marked here. And you stitch from, make sure they, they line front to back as best you can with something which is going a bit dodgy. Okay. And you sew from that point to, so from there, the edge, to this point. And then, so that. And then you sew on the same side, on the opposite side. All the way around. Oh, from there, rather, to there. And then you sew along the bottom. So you don't sew so you leave these this two. Section you here. leave you leave these these two curves. Okay. Because what happens? You then sort of box it in a way. And this is how we're going to create that. Sorry. Just yeah, that's right. That shape at the bottom. We're saying oh, it's quite nice because you can actually fit things in this. You don't have to really sort of pull the top over to try and get it closed. You have got some room there, some some wiggle room if you wanted to use it as a makeup bag or a toiletry bag. And we were saying as well, you could even odor coat it, make it waterproof. Yeah, whatever you actually fancy. So because this has gone um, slightly skew with, we are doing what's known as winging it. We're fine. We're fine. I and mean, hopefully it'll actually line up and be fine. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. So, so this... Before, I was looking at those shapes and I couldn't quite visualise no, in my head. I struggled with that, how that was going to come together. As soon as you put the two sides together, I go, oh... It makes sense. Well, that's, that's one of the wonderful things about books like this, is you're actually learning something new, because then you can either um, use it again for the same sort of bag, or you can adapt it. Yeah. And um, think, oh, I love that. Or Maybe I could on. try and make it a slightly different shape, but keep the curve bit, but make it bigger or longer yeah, or like a big baguette or something. <laughs> yeah, adapt it. That's, that, that's what you do. So I'm just going to... Um, but also what sorry. I do love about the book, as well, or any book as well, is that when you have got step-by-step -step photography, if, like yeah. me, you struggle to visualise quite how that's going to come together in any way to create a bag, when you see that you go, oh, no, the photograph, I am doing this right, that yeah. is meant to be there, and it is meant to look like this at this point, and then it will eventually, obviously, build into... Into something. That final product. Yeah, and also, it's, I, I, love, I love the fact of, of going to something like a wedding or a do, and, oh, where'd you get that? I made I it. Made, yeah. Yeah, I course. made it. That's part of the joy, sort isn't of it? Mildly smug, but not too <laughs> smug, but just but, smug oh, enough. But, it's, but no, I, yeah, I just fun. do this in my spare time. Yeah, and they go, oh, you're amazing, you go... I oh, am. Yeah. <laughs> We've got about four or five minutes okay, left. Okay, cool. In so that case, uh, where are the scissors gone? Here. There they are. I'll just show you this bit and then the lining, you can see it better with the lining. We can talk about it. So, let's just do this one and then I can show you how we box it. We've got another photo being sent in from Sewing Nuts. There we go. Oh, I love these names. Oh, look at these. I'm loving the Ooh. sewing names. Oh, I love those. Po Is that a net on the front? A netting? That's quite cool. We've never had that on the show before. We might have to try and get some of that. Netting? Well, yeah, can you netting. see that? It's got like a, um, you know, like a uh, drawstring bag sometimes come in. Oh, like a laundry oh, bag. Oh, yes. Love these. Like, or like when you, you know, um, bananas or something. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like one, so you can see what's behind it. Oh, I like that. And the flamingos are cool as well. Thank I you. I love for flamingos. <laughs> so we've got Sneaky, Crafty Jane, and then we've got Sewing Nuts. I like sewing nut. <laughs> I, I like anything like that, like sneaky, sewing, whatever you actually... I think they're really nice to have names like that. <laughs> Who wants, you know? Sneaky service. Mine's Jelly Be Good. Yeah, that's your Instagram, isn't that's it? That's my Instagram, yeah. Right, OK, so this would be, if you're doing this for reals um, properly, it would be... I got that one. It would be... Um, it would all line up. 
Okay. So <laughs> then we're just going to sew the bottom. Quickly sew that, and then I'll show you how you box it, and then I can show you the lining, and we can talk through the bow. Because you can do a bow, I mean, you can leave it plain if you want. I like the idea of, of just showing, showing your fabric. Well, also, it's nice to pull out if you're using the... Uh, fabric that you've used for the lining it's just nice to mirror that on the outside so yeah. you can just see these are the options with frills and bows but obviously as Jess said you could do whatever whatever you fancied whatever you actually like um because with this particular bag you only use two it only says to use two two types of um fabric if you can so i use the same for the bow as i did for the lining so or, or you could use all three but you do get three types so you can do whatever you like you can make because there is enough fabric to actually make loads you, you could make three bags yeah to, in all different colorways and combinations i would say with with the tilde one with 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 the green and pink the green and pink tilde the uh, back you, quarter, back quarter yeah. you have enough back quarter to actually make um one of one of these bags there is there is enough room to make that and a bit oh, of bow and a, a little bit left over just a little bit for your stash right okay so let's just quickly okay cool so that's what happens when it goes wrong <laughs> anyway so this you then end up with something with a bit of a ooh, what's this i don't understand that that doesn't make sense this is where we get boxing so what you do is you want these two points to go together you so can you see that more. so you've got these are open like that yeah so these two points fold together so you got you pull that up, up to there and you make sure your seams are open and you sew from there all the way to the end of the point there and then on the other side push the seams back again from there to there okay so and this is how you're creating this box this how you're shape. box so i will do one and then i'll show you the lining very quickly or shall i show you the lining what do you want me to do um, how much the time have we got? You just drop it. We've got a yeah, minute, but so maybe just talk us through how you would. Okay, have done cool. That. In that case, I'll just. In that case, I'll, what I'll do. We've only got a minute. Is imagine that it's sewn together, and you end up with because I've done it in the lining, which is beautifully done, by the way. <laughs> One. This one's fine. We've got this so many messages fine. telling you that it's look, Christine's messaging. It's you nice to know so you're lovely. human and make mistakes too, like the rest of us. So thanks, Christine. Thank you. <laughs> um, that's the wonderful thing about the sewing community. Everyone's really supporting. Oh, so I was talking to the taxi this morning. Everyone's like, oh, he was talking about his sisters into sewing. I said, contact people. People, people are chat. So it's so nice. Um, anyway, so what you end up with is you sew those those bits together, like that to that, that to that. Da, 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 da. With your bag front, of course, it's stiffer, and you end up with this. So you would drop that into the bag. So you would have this uh, right side out. Beautiful, Muriel. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> um, at least, at least the pattern oh, lines like up. That. Like, see, at least, these that lines up. Come on, guys. Credit when well, it's big as you. Anyway, and then you would actually drop this. So the wrong sides are facing. Okay. Unlike normal bags, we do it right sides facing. Uh, way around, go way around. And then you either hand sew, I know in, 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 in June I talked about hand sewing, but I ended up with this one, stitching it in. So what you do, we just pop it in, is that this. Wow, well, 20 which, seconds or That's all right. Make sure that's sort of a little bit in, pin all the way around, and then sew it on your lovely sewing machine in, in whatever thread you want, contrasting or oh, this, this perfectly well. And then you add on, you make your bow, instructions are in there and you do your little popper as well if you want. All in the springtime Tilda book. Thank you so much, Jess. That's I know that right. was a bit, of a, a bit of a rush at the end. That's the Dolls House bundle there as well. And Paul is back in just three minutes. Don't go anywhere. We're doing more bags <laughs> and a scarf. Oh, no, <laughs> I know. Bye. Bye. Follow us on Instagram. Search for our sewing quarter page and follow us to get our latest posts. It's official, Sewing Quarter has arrived on Sky TV. You can join us on Sky 678 seven days a week. Add Sewing Quarter to your Sky favourites so you never miss a programme. And if you set a series link, you can catch up on our shows from each day at any time. If you don't have Sky, you can still join in the fun by watching us on Freeview Channel 78, on our website at sewingquarter.com and on YouTube. So tune in on Sky Channel 678 or on Freeview Channel 78. We'll see you there. Hi, I'm Lucy Brennan and these are my three top tips. 
My first top tip is to experiment. It's really about um, playing and using all the different features of your sewing machine. So for example, when I was quilting this quilt, I used um, a wavy quilting stitch, which gives a really lovely texture to the quilt. So it's worth having a play about and using um, scraps or little quilt sandwiches um, to try different things. My second top tip is about combining fabric. A lot of people um, like getting the pre-cuts, which are fantastic. That gives you a whole range of a collection, but it doesn't mean that you just have to use those together. It can be nice to mix them in with other fabrics that you've got in your stash, or mix them in with solids and create something really unique. My third top tip is sometimes you just need to go for it. You can't always plan everything out. So you might combine fabrics, be making a block, and it not look exactly how you wanted it to. But until you sew it together, you don't always know how it looks. And there's always a way of combining things and making it look right in the end. Join us on Wednesday the 24th of January when Victoria Pete will be in the studio sewing a stunning Loving Hearts quilt by Pam and Nikki Lintott. At 9am, Victoria will guide you through quilting this pretty pattern from the Lintott book, Two From One Jelly Roll Quilt. This gorgeous design uses just half of a jelly roll, so it's a great value quilt that looks really impressive. We have two different colour options available for you, a pink version with ditzy florals and spots, contrasting with mint green and coral, and a red colourway that includes red gingham, spots, and the bright florals and birds of Heather Bailey's Norwegian wood. So, don't miss this show at 9am on Wednesday the 24th of January for Victoria's expert quilting tips and advice only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 678. Simply Sewing is a magazine for dressmakers and home sewists who are passionate about fabrics and love to sew with stylish patterns. Each issue is packed with technical know-how, templates and easy to follow instructions to sew yourself quick wardrobe updates, accessories, plushy toys, gifts, bags and more. Plus, each issue comes with a free dress pattern from our expanding trend-led collection. We're proudly flying the flag for contemporary sewing with stylish patterns and beautiful photography to inspire sewists across the globe at every level. Welcome back. We've got even more bags in this hour. Bags and scarves. We've got a lovely infinity scarf, so perfect for spring. We're going to jazz it up a bit this morning. This is the um, pleated tote that we're doing. So we've got a really lovely, both of these designs are from Rebecca Reed, who is also in tomorrow morning. So you'll get to see her, um, editor of one of our sister magazines. And we've also got a Tudor fabric here and Tudor Pink is coming in. So we're really lucky to have her coming in in February and one of the designers of one of our fabrics. So let's start actually with this bag bundle. And I'll show you the scarves in a sec. So this bag that I've got on here at the side, each of these come with a metre and a half of fabric. So you've got your pleated tote instructions. There's the bag. So you can keep these, obviously you can file them away. And inside you've got all of your step-by-step -step instructions and a diagram for the pleating. So you can get that lovely um, pleated detail at the top. But you've got finishing the bag, cutting it out, making the pleats, notes on what to do, nice and clear. In fact, if you've ever read any of our magazines, you'll know that the instructions are really simple, straightforward, easy to follow. And Rebecca Reed, who's in tomorrow, this is a really nice, simple tutorial in how to make this particular one. So in this bundle, you get your gorgeous print fabric there with your greens and, and aquas. This is your Atula pink fabric. So you have a metre and a half of that, great for spring. Then you've got two solids, you've got your grass green and your pistachio. Now also in this bundle, you get one of these straps. Now if you haven't seen these before, these are really fantastic. This is, you, put, you wouldn't necessarily use this whole strap for this bag, but it's, if I just show you, it's quite, it's quite small for you to see, but just so you get an idea, you can use these on duffel bags, you can use them on rucksacks, you can use them on satchels. On this particular bag, obviously we've used it as a shoulder strap, but it's just got a bit more thickness and durability. You can just see if I turn it to the side there, 
it's just going to stand the test of time a bit more than perhaps um, a cotton strap might do. Then you also get your thread in that bundle and those instructions. Now, two other colorways for this bag. So if you fancy a red one, then I'll show you that one next. So we've got the Heather Bailey fabric, first of all, in that Blackbird. This is from her Beatles collection in your reds and pinks. And then you've also got your linear look and your red. Now you get a red strap with that one and it's color matched really well, your instructions and your thread. Just quickly look at that with the strap too so you can get an idea of how it works together. If you fancy something a bit more vibrant. And finally, we've got um, more of a, a sort of a cooler navy um, version. Always really popular, it obviously goes with everything. If you want a bag that you're gonna be using day in and day out rather than an occasion bag, then the uh, blue might be what you like. So it's actually very similar to the bag on the front of the instructions, if you can see that there. So they've selected a navy version of that and they've teamed it again with that neutral sand colored strap and your thread, $24.99. I'll just show you once more the bag itself so you can see it. I always say I like a bag with a strap where you can sort of get your hand underneath it so it sits nice and comfortably on your shoulder. It doesn't feel like it's going to keep slipping off. And you've also got loads of room in here for lots of, it's a nice big bag if you can see. If you wanted to take it to the supermarket or take it to the shops, then you can do. And that's that pleated detail you can just see at the top there. This is why it's called the pleated tote. Now, the other thing we've got in this hour is an infinity scarf. Now, if you're not sure what this is, obviously, that's it on the mannequin. I can't really put it on just because it interferes with my microphone a bit this morning, but um, I'll hold it up for you. If you're not sure what that is, it's rather than, obviously, we always think of scarves as being one big long length of rectangular material, but the infinity scarf is a circle. So rather than having two ends, if you can just sort of see it like that, can you see that loop there? So what it means is you can just pop it straight over your head, you can just wear it as one big long loop, or you can double it over to add a splash of colour to an outfit, or just to jazz something up, maybe, or just to keep you a bit warmer if you get a bit cold, like I always do. My hands are freezing right now, I'm, actually, I'm always cold. I've got the aircon on blasting out in here. Um, so you can just wrap that round, you can double it up if you want to. Um, but you can also wear it like a pashmina over your shoulders. There are loads of different variations. In fact, if you Google how to wear an infinity scarf, I think there are seven or eight different ways you can wear one, not just in that loop. Now, I'll show you the different um, bundles we've got for these. Again, you're getting instructions. So these are from Rebecca Reed. These are from Simply Sewing. So I'll just show you those instructions here. And then you've got the step-by-step -step photography and um, the, all of the makes going through there in detail. And then showing you what fabrics you get. So you get five different fabrics in this bundle. You get two and a half meters of fabric. Now you might be thinking that sounds like a lot, but this is a double-sided, obviously, scarf, remember? So it's not just plain on one side. It's kind of a patchwork uh, sort of style to it. Now, the one that we've got here on the model, I only had, um, Paul will tell you about this in a minute, but it only had five panels in it. If you wanted to, you've got enough fabric here to make seven. So you can make it slightly longer if you wanted to double it round and have a bit more room. Totally up to you, you can customize it. So that particular bundle, those are those five fabrics there in your greens and blues. Next up is the purple. So again, you've got your instructions and your thread. Oh, this is a really unusual fabric on the top here. Dina Designs is this top one here. So again, these are all 100% cotton. You've got your dusty purple there, sort of a crushed purple, matches my nails. You've got your linear look, and then you've got your two Macau solids there too, plus your thread, which I can just see sneaking out there, and again, your instructions. Especially with purples, you could wear that all year round if you wanted to. I always think too, if you want to wear a scarf, maybe you've got neutral jackets or a neutral coat or a, um, maybe a blazer or a smart jacket that you wear for work. A splash of colour in a scarf just lifts it, doesn't it? And obviously to have the colour near your face, it just really does sort of inject something a bit more interesting if you're wearing something a bit plainer. And then finally, we've got our red bundle. 
So as I said yesterday, which we found out is true, everyone can wear red, anybody, any skin color, no one, they're all laughing at me here, but you can. I've checked this, if you wear true red, you can wear red. Paul, I'm gonna get you in a red postman's outfit in a minute. <laughs> you can see those there. Because it's, why a postman? Because postmen wear red. Of course they do, post boxes are bright red, aren't they? Come on, produce Anna. So you've got five uh, fabrics again in there, half a metre of each of those, two and a half in total. Your instructions and your thread. So let's head over to Paul. Are you ready, Paul, to get your postman's outfit I'm on? Ready for this. Can you I, wear red? I do wear red a lot more yeah. now than I used to. And yeah, you've got in red in your shirt. Yeah. But you honestly, they say that everybody can wear it. Obviously, there are different colours, tones yeah. of red, but I never, it is never that used one colour. To, I used to hate red on me. Do you know why? I think it's because you have to be brave to wear red. It's quite, <laughs> it's quite bold, isn't bold. it? Bold, yeah, definitely. You know, it's, it's yeah. quite a... I'm just going to grab the mannequin and pop the scarf on there. But, okay. Um, so just talk to me a little bit about this to start with, Paul. Right. As the pattern, as you said about the pattern, it said to do five squares. So, yes. Um, but that turned out to be quite a small scarf, okay. looking at it. So I thought, well, you've got enough fabric there to cut um, three 13-inch squares out of each half metre. So that would have meant 15 squares. So you could do... Yeah. You Seven need, you need you even numbers. Yeah. So therefore, I thought, right, I'm going to go for... Um, I've done six on this one, but you okay. could have, you've got enough to do seven squares. Because you obviously need to double it because it's double-sided. You've got to double, double it so you have to match up, so 15 wouldn't work. But you could make your squares longer. They don't yes. have to be square. Oh, OK, so you could so adapt that you, side you if you wanted to. You can adapt that way to just really go get a, a good length or add other colours in that you want. Do you know the other thing I love about a looped scarf is that I quite often find with a scarf, especially nowadays, they seem to be really big and bulky, yes. a lot of scarves, <laughs> and I have to tuck it in my coat, but then you look, you get, become like a bit of a puffer. Or oh, it's dangling of, out the yeah, bottom like that. the bottom where it's all too long, so it's, what's quite nice about that is you can just pop it straight over yeah. and it sits over the top of your coat, almost like a collar, yeah. um, so rather than it being like a big stuffed sort of... Uh, front section, it yeah. does just sit nice and comfortably. Somebody asked me to knit them a scarf recently and said, could you do me one? It showed me a picture of it. And uh, it turned out he wanted twice his height. Really? I said, that's going to be about 10, 12 foot of scarf. What? To wrap said, round? So he liked it like double wrap round and really down to his knees. So I thought, that's so okay, long. it's going to take me forever, but I'll have a go. <laughs> so maybe doing one of these. Yeah, that might, <laughs> might be the safer option. option. Yeah. So how do we get so started with this? I've, I've gone ahead, I've cut all the squares out and I've you lay them out in the pattern that you want. So making sure no colours are together, that was the idea. And so despite the fact this is a circle, it's all straight lines. Cutting. It's all straight line sewing. There's only one little fiddly bit towards the end and that's when you come to join it together. Yeah, so but quite I've, good for a beginner then. Yeah, 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 I would say so. So I've done all those already. Six, try and keep the colours far apart as you can. Lay the other ones out. So again, you're not matching them across either. Yeah, so because you want Because when those you join to them be... together, you wouldn't want those two to match Just, up. Yeah. So I try to get them as far away from each other as possible. You okay. could do it more so when you've got, and you've got one of each, but when I added an extra colour in... You could lay them out. It depends how many squares you do. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a bit maths, isn't it? You've got yeah. to figure out where. But if you do a lot of patchwork, this will be, you know, big, <sighs> these great big squares will be a doddle in comparison doddle, yeah, to, to doddle, blocks. Doddle for the you quilters out there. <laughs> so I've done all that one, and I've just one left to do on that because okay. it's just straight sewing. Literally. So literally just rotary cutter, ruler, cut away. Yes. All your squares. Off you go. And I think it was um, five eighths of an inch. Okay. One and a half centimetre seam allowance. So you get instructions in your kit um, from Rebecca Reed, so you've got all of those step-by-step -step points there anyway. She's in tomorrow, actually. Yes, she's heard that. tomorrow morning. Has she been in before? Yes, she has. She okay. been in, I don't know if she's been on for a while. She's the technical editor of ah, Simply right, Sewing, yes. so um, one of our sister magazines. Right. Knows what she's talking about. <laughs> she <should> do. <laughs> <laughs> so you would um, press that seam open. I have done with the others, but... Um, the old locker there, I won't, okay. won't shuffle that out of the way to get the, the iron in. Again, you could use the overlocker for this. Oh, right. This Where would, would you brilliant. use it for this? It's just straight seaming. Oh, right. It's just straight through. For construction, for putting it together? For the putting it together, yes. It would be brilliant for that. If because you, you do that and you would lose all this fraying. So where with the jersey, we had no frame for cotton. It's actually really useful to use the overlocker. Yes, 
to get for all those threads. If you missed earlier this morning, we've got an Overlocker bundle special just for today. So um, obviously the Overlocker giving you that really lovely professional finish, um, like Paul showed earlier on the sleeves, he's used the Overlocker here. Yeah. So it's looping those threads around to give you that really neat finish. I don't know if you can just see here, if you want an idea of just to see what that looks like. But the, um, the bundle itself today has been teamed with, you get jersey needles for free in that. And then you also get, these are brand new prim uh, scissors that we've got in today. And these are fantastic for cutting jersey fabric. Uh, they're serration shears, so they grip the fabric. They've got little teeth in there. They're great for cottons as well, so you just get that really lovely crisp finish, a nice smooth edge rather than any curly, curly or frayed edges. Now you also get jersey needles for your sewing machine if you are working with a jersey. Both of those are thrown in today for free in the bundle with the overlocker. So you're saving £42 there. If you are thinking of investing in an overlocker, then today would be the day to do it. It's a pro edition from Elna. We're in single figures for this machine now, so if you do like it, LCGC22. Fantastic for dressmaking and just for finishing things off, but also, as Paul demonstrated earlier, you can use it for construction as well. It's trimming as you go, as well as adding all of those um, loop threads in and also the stay, the stay stitch all the way yeah, across. Yeah, it's very, very solid stitching is when it's done, so... Very good. Very good. Gets, gets Very a good. tick. <laughs> so it's all six pieces sewn together. Yeah. And on the top row, lay your two rows together, make sure you've got nothing matched up. Just to let you know, the main graphic coming in is this bundle here. So this is the purple bundle, just in case. Right. So it's coming, it's coming. all <laughs> sort of panned out nicely like that. Yep. Running out of space. Okay. okay. So now you're putting them right sides together and this is where your quilting expertise comes in because you, you want to be matching up where these seams are. Now because okay. I've pressed the seams open, you can see through. If you pop a pin in on that seam, you come out the other side, you can see where it joins up and then come back out. So you can see that hopefully that, that will match up. Yep. So you do that all the way along. It's more important that you match those seams up. Are you just pinning at the top or would you pin, or are you pinning all the way down on that seam? No, I'm just pinning around the edges. Just pinning so the edge. Because what I'm going to do now, once you've done this, you pin all the, the squares together across the top and across the bottom. So it just takes a bit of bit of time and a bit of fiddling and then it's a straight a straight sew across. So in through that point, okay. back out through there, and then hopefully at the back. You have, if you haven't lined it up, just, just give it a little bit of a juggle. Pop one pin through, come out through there. No, it's still not there. Probably because I haven't pressed that one. It does make a difference, doesn't Into it? There, just because it gives you that there out on the seam and back through again. It just lines it up well. And then when you're stitching it, you can make sure that also lies flat. So pop another pin in the middle. So you do that all the way along for all of those. Yeah. And then the same along the bottom row. Oh, so you're gonna create like a tube? You do, you create the tube. So, so the two ends we're... will be open. Yep. Yep. So I just pop in there as well. If, you, if you're wondering what we're making, you can just see here on the mannequin, it's the infinity scarf. If I just move this to the side. Oh, I've got put, there we go. That's the uh, green one, which is the graphic across the bottom of your screen, the greens and blues. Like I said earlier, actually, if you missed as well, the dress I'm wearing today, Paul made in the earlier show, but I like to wear a lot of navy, so that particular colour combination with the blues and greens, and it's got some navy in that floral print as well, would be really nice if you wear navy jackets or navy you know, blazers or shirts or something like that, and you want to just add a splash of colour. Yeah, it's just nice additional colour, isn't it? Yeah, I just think near the face, it lifts it a bit, doesn't it? If you've yes. got something plain on, it just sort of... Especially if it's a colour that you really like. Yeah, and you could just you. add that onto anything. But if you're generally wearing dark clothing, you can put colours with anything then. Put a scarf on, a colour of colour scarf. scarf I've something. always got a scarf on. Yeah. <laughs> you feel the cold. Yeah. <laughs> something wrong with me. So what do we do? Again, match all those up. And then... I'm going to stitch along the top 
and along the bottom. So you're creating one long loop. Yep, okay. So if I do that. Yeah, okay, so you're yep. going to run that all the way through. Yep. While you're doing that then, um, is that just, so you're just going to... It's just straight stitching. All um, the way down for the whole length of that? Yeah. Okay, so that might take you a couple of minutes. We'll it just, will take a few minutes. So if you want. We'll, watch you, we'll watch you start so we know what's happening okay. and then I'll recap right. the bundles and then I'll come back to you. Right, so again, five eighths of an inch. Just keep going all the way along. Make sure that... Seams are open. Things, yeah, seams are laying flat and laying open. Okay. You get a little bit of wrinkling in one in the top bit and just give it a bit of a stretch. This is great as well if you've just got a new machine and perhaps you want to try it out, you know. Yes, it's, it could be quite Yeah, to just sort of get going with something. Have and a go. great project to jump in for a beginner. Or maybe one to try with the children as well, or with grandchildren or children. You want to let them have a little go of a bit of a straight stitch and let them feel like they've, you know, made a project that they could actually see them, and use. Let them loose with scissors and pins. Yeah. <laughs> well, supervise. Always fun. We, we can start it early. So many yes. of our designers, when you talk to them, this they say, can. you know, they sewed a lot as a child. Oh, Lucy Brennan, I've just been told, used to make hair scrunchies and sell them at school. Oh, fabulous. When she was younger. <laughs> she still does it in her spare time. She's at the school gates with like, a basket of hair scrunchies. Okay, so make sure that seems open underneath. See how quick it is to yeah, do once together, you just quickly. get started on it. And you're going to do that on the other side as well? I'm going to do that across the bottom and then um, just turn it through. So turn it right side out. Okay. Well, while you do the other side, before you turn it through, I'm just going to recap this bundle that we've got okay. for today, just for today. So this is, um, we're in single figures for this bundle now. This was just for today only. We had this special offer. So if you are still watching and you're uh, watching live, then you might still be able to get one of these if, um, if you want to check. 36 fat quarters. This is the anthology. It's a mega bundle. So you get 12 yellows, 12 blues, 12 greens, all of this gorgeous stash of colour. Look at that. Let me turn it this way. There we go. That's what I was trying to do. I'm going to open up a few of these just so you can see. And these aren't just solids. We are in single figures for this now, so you will need to check out your baskets on it. Now, you've also got the uh, pinking shears that come in this bundle, so you're saving £25. These are the sewing quarter pinking shears. I'll just show you the teeth of those, so you can you see at the side. If you're not sure what pinking shears do, they sort of, almost like a crimp. They just, um, they're going to stop the fabric from fraying. It's a great way of finishing things quickly without having to clip away at them. But let's open up the fat quarters. They're the star of the show. I'm going to just fan these out to show you. So you've got all of your greens. But these are also very popular colours coming into spring. This is why they've chosen to do um, green, yellow and green, yellow and blue. But they're not your solid colours, so I'm just going to show you. Oh, this is gorgeous. Look at this. Sort of a marbly effect. Here we go. And these are double-sided as well. So I just flip that round. You don't need to worry about right side, wrong side. But lovely effect. It's a quilting weight as well, so these are 100% cotton. Imagine a patchwork with all of these. That kind of looks like seaweed, doesn't it? It's got all that lovely mottled colour. Or like an inky splash. It's got, where it's got the yellows and greens all coming through. We can see lots of people adding this to their basket, so you do have to make sure you check it out if you want to make sure you can guarantee to make that purchase today. Um, we have been seeing those continuously being added to baskets as we go through the show. Just don't want you to miss out. But let me just show you these blues. You kind of want to spend ages, I want to spend ages indulging, showing you all of these different colours, but we do, we, I am aware that we haven't got loads of stock, so I'm just going to quickly show you a couple more of the yellows. Like it's lovely, isn't it? Like You've got some really soft ones as well that you could use as sort of um, blenders. But also if you've got, you know, if you want to do some different blocks, you could do daffodils for spring in some of these gorgeous yellows. You could do sun, you could do grass, you could obviously do sky, you could, do, you could make loads of gorgeous pictures with all of these. 
but 36 of those. Some of these yellows, I think they might look solid, but if I just, I don't know if you can just see, I'm just going to open a yellow just to show you. Let's go for this one. They have all got that lovely, almost batik effect. Can you see that there? If we come a little bit closer, there we go, it's coming. I don't know if you can see that. I'll show you one more, maybe in a green. It's quite hard for our cameras to pick up. Maybe it's better in a darker one. There we go. Can you see that one? Oh, we dropped some. What was that? Something fell off a shelf. <laughs> well, we'll pick it up this time. And one more, just show you a blue. Let's go for a lighter blue. There you go. So 36 fat quarters from Anthology. This is a mega bundle. So you get all of those greens, yellows, blues. Just kind of shimmy those forward. And you also get your pinking shears. So you make a saving of 25 pounds there. 124.96. Just encourage you to check out your baskets if you do want to get that, just because it's for today only. LDGC 55. So we're just finishing off, Paul, with the... You've gone, done straight stitches down both sides, just to start to make that into a tube. Yes, down both of the long sides. The long ends, yeah. The long sides. So then that will be the length of your, your scarf before folded in half. Yes. Uh, turn it inside out. Okay. So easy way when you've got something this big to get your so hands now we're going through. right side out. <laughs> right side out. Don't need Derek out. the Dover to be yes. small for that thing. <laughs> <laughs> now this would be where you would press it and make sure all your, your all seams lined tidy. up. But uh, brushing quickly through it. Lay it out flat. Now this is where you do the join. I think this would make a really nice birthday gift for someone. Yes. Perhaps you, if you you know you know someone that might appreciate a a nice scarf. If you know their colour style, you know yes. what's so well. I know they like blues. You could go for all blues or just add something different in. These, you know these what you could do? You could cleverly cut right so you could have um, you could have similar cut. You could sort of um, gradient. And make yeah. So the joining together. Yeah. Literally just grab one end, one short end, bring it over. Now you're going to sew the right sides together. So pin those right sides together. Bring it out, so we're joining the seams at the edge. Pop a pin in there. Lovely. Pin in on the other, open the seams. Doesn't want to play a game today. <laughs> Pop a pin this in, could be an, join a, that quite up. A, a nice afternoon make. You could get it done start to finish, couldn't you, quite comfortably? You could. Take your time over it. Don't rush it like I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> so now you're going to sew that seam. So if you sew it across there, and carry on for about another three inches along there. Along the next Along the next layer. opening. Yeah. Where I found that was good to work it. So come back along that way. By the way, great choice of buttons on your shirt. Thank you. Paul made this shirt. He makes well, all your shirts, don't yes, you? Yes, they highlight the... Um, it picks the, out as well, The, the gold um, in the yeah, shirt. In the, yeah. In the, Balloon. Okay, so pin that almost leaving a gap of about six inches. Right. Okay, pin it round, round, round to this end. So you're still leaving a little bit unturned there. So if you start at one of those sides, where you've started pinning, 
Because effectively, you're having to sew a whole circle, but you need yes. to get it turned out. So it's, That's you've right. got to leave a little gap, I yes. imagine, so you can turn it through. So starting there, just make sure you're not catching more than you need to under there. Opening up your seams. This is the purple bundle, so the one you can see on your, um, on your screen is the saffron, KCGC11. What colour is saffron? I saffron's saffron like a gold, yellow. a yellowy gold. I was gold just standing here thinking, are we sure that's the saffron? Okay. Oh, it's the name of the fabric, one of the fabric oh, with okay. the, um, right. I see. I was thinking, I wondered if it was meant to be the other yellow one, but no, that is right. So the purple bundle is called Saffron, okay. KCGC11, <laughs> just to confuse you. But you get two and a half metres of fabric, um, so you can make it. This was just with the five, so then you'd have some fab five squares, so you'd have some fabric left over. Or you could up it to six or seven if you wanted to make it slightly longer. Um, you've got enough fabric there to do that. And then obviously, all of your instructions, which I'm just going to grab up to you, to show you. that come with, with it. Okay, so having sewn all of that round, you would then just pull that back open on itself and then that So effectively you've will gone fold on itself. So you've gone, you've gone round. You go from there all the way round and back to here. So all you're left with is that bit to hand sew. So if you did a uh, ladder stitch Really, that's there. a quick make, isn't it? That was quick, yeah. It's, obviously, you had to do the cutting. Obviously, the yes, cutting I've done all that. And I, I have to say, I prefer it with a couple of extra squares in, just in terms of, I wonder if I, I know I've got, I have to be careful with my mic, <laughs> but with the, um, that's I just, just think it hangs. That's just one extra square in now. It, but, it uh, will ha you could loop it a bit more comfortably. Yeah. Oh, you probably can't hear a word, <laughs> but you could loop it more. Yes, oh, you've you got a higher loop. one up on It depends on where you want it to sit. Yeah. But, um, Lovely, really nice, nice straightforward make. So okay. we've also got some bundles for the, um, I'll show you, just recap the bundles for the scarf and then we'll come back and we'll get cracking with the bag. Right. That's okay. Okay. Shall I leave this one with you? Yes. Okie doke. I'm wearing that on the way home. Let's <laughs> <laughs> see you walking out. wear with this shirt <laughs> in the car. <laughs> okay, so uh, the bundles first of all for the scarf, let's just do those first up. So we'll start with that purple one, the uh, sneaky saffron, that's not really saffron at all, but we can skim over that. So you get two and a half metres of fabric. You've got your two uh, solid macaws. You've got your dusty purple spot on. You've got your linear look in your grey. And then this is the saffron fabric there in that lovely slate grey and soft greys as well. Plus you get your instructions and your thread. Is that one most popular at the moment? That's the most popular bundle, KCGC11 for our purples and greys. Maybe you just love the fabric. You could save the instructions for when you want to make a gift for somebody else, but it's a really lovely bundle of fabric and they have been, the colours have been put together um, really well. So if you do want to use those for a different project, then you could. Kind of those lavender tones. Then we also had the other bundle that was made up, which was the greens and blues. So that's the one that's on the mannequin over there. So I was saying this is a bundle that would be nice if you wanted to wear it maybe with some navy or with some blues. So you've got your floral on the top. That's the chicory fabric. Chicory Chelsea. And then you've got your greens, your sky blues. You've got a, an icy blue on the bottom there and your linear look fabric too. KBGC99. And finally is our red bundle. So you haven't seen this one quite as much, but you've got your solid red there at the bottom. You've got a solid pink as well in that. And then you've got, this is what I sort of call a saffrony colour. And then you've got your burnt orange and you've also got all of your florals there too. And that's the red bud. If that one is in your basket, we had the least stock of the red. So if you do want that one, KBGC55, we had much less stock of that to start with this morning. So if that's in your basket, that's the one that will need to be checked out with a little bit more speed, 26.99. Or you can give the call centre a ring, 0800 112 4433. 
Now, that's the scarf, that's the infinity scarf. But we've also got another project in this hour this morning. We're giving you two for one. So we've also got the pleated tote. Now, this is another project made by Rebecca Reed. I'm just going to grab the bag, actually. A nice comfy bag, particularly as all of these kits come with a really lovely, thick, durable strap. So you've got one there that's going to sort of stand the test of time. And if you can just see this lovely pleat detail on here. I'll show you the different bundles. So first up, we've got the Tula Pink bundle, which is the one that I've got out on my shoulder at the moment. So again, you get your instructions. You get your instructions with all of these bundles. And then you also get a metre and a half of fabric. It's got your step-by-step -step instructions in there. I'm trying to do that with one hand. <laughs> um, you've got the strap and the thread. Shall I just open up that fabric? Let's have a look at it. Tula, Tula. Let's see. Really exciting. We've got Tula Pink in in February. Look at that lovely detail with your greens and pinks. Now, you could always, again, same as I said with the scarf, if you wanted to quilt with this fabric instead, obviously you've got solids that have been matched with that perfectly um, in terms of the colour palette. You could just save the instructions for, some, for when you want to make the bag another time, or you could use the strap for a duffel bag or a rucksack or a satchel. So, you know, we're not limiting you to that, but we just like to try and give you some ideas of what you might want to use the fabric for and obviously giving you the instructions so you can get straight on with it when you get your delivery. Now, we've also got a red bundle for this one. So this is a Heather Bailey. This is from her, uh, uh, her collection inspired by the Beatles. So this, you've got your red blackbirds and then you've got a red strap with this one. But the colour match is really fantastic there. Again, these are 100% cotton, so perfect if you did want to quilt or patchwork with those instead. But you do get your instructions too, again, with that. Talking of the instructions, those are the step-by-step -step photographs that, and you've obviously got the reference points in the text there too, plus the diagram for the pleating so you can get that exact accuracy in the top band of the bag. And then the blue one, which we think is very similar to the bag actually that's photographed for Simply Sewing magazine. So you've got a navy there with a floral and then you've got a soft blue and then a navy this one here isn't a solid it's a cross uh, linear look fabric so it has got that depth and texture to it and this is paired with the sand strap now we haven't started making this bag yet i'm just heading over to paul now but this bundle is already in single figures so for the blue zzgc81 if you like the blue flower give the call center a ring 0800 112 4433 i would just encourage you to check that out now if you do like the look of that one it looks like a skirt with that label. It does. Like that. <laughs> Are we making a rah rah skirt? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, is this the first time you've made this bag? It is, yes. And so how just, did you find it? Um, I, I overdid what I should have been doing. <laughs> um, I'll come back to that later. But I read the pattern that the pleats were right from the top to the bottom. Oh, okay. Uh, so, I'd pleated across the bottom as well. Yeah. But only on one piece, but I've just been able to unpick that. So okay, the so pleating just is there. just across the Look top. A little green mannequin. This is me not reading the pattern properly. Full instructions in there. Don't read too much into it that isn't there. <laughs> you don't need to. You can tell us now how we yes. do it. Um tells you what sizes to cut your pattern pieces. You need two two a front and a back and yep. an inside and outside. So, so two lining, lining pieces. Uh, front and the back so you could do those two different colors the front and the back okay so you could interchange them if you want contrast to. piece for the the band across the top, the top and then your your straps go on later okay so directional fabric yes little with our little birdies so i'm going to put the pleats across the top so i'd actually pleated right down to the bottom but then i realized that the bag is it's sort it's of wider, it, yeah. So it, it's, it's got not a wider base, the bottom, so which I thought see. it was. So, um, I can do that. Which I suppose it could be done. Could be done that way. So mark your. I've used a mark pen to mark the uh, the pleats. You start, How easy are pleats right, to do? Fairly easy. Easy to follow. But the instructions are there. You've got all your sizing for your pleats on the instructions. 
you start and these with are in centimeters just to say it does say it there yes start with your center fold your fabric in half the solid lines are where you are folding your fabric to and the fold the dotted lines are where you fold the fabric okay so you're starting with your center one which is a box pleat and then the other ones are knife pleats. Now, a box pleat is where the two sides come together yep. to create like a, a pleat okay. together. So you so see like on this one. the bag... Where they join there like, like that. Two joining in the centre there. Like that. The other pleats are coming in towards the centre from the outside, so they are knife pleats. So these are called... This is more what you would just associate as sort of a, norm, a, a regular... Pleat, isn't it yes. really? That's just, you know, you've got that norm going all the way along, but that one there in the middle. It's where two knife pleats come together in, in ah, opposite that's directions. That's what it is. That's you want makes to it, that think makes of it that way. Pleat. Yeah, that might make more sense. So you've got your centre. What I've done is just folded the fabric in half and pressed it. So you know where so the centre point is. So I know where that is. line is. I've gone along with marker pen, which you can't see on this fabric. <laughs> so therefore I put pins in instead. So way of doing that, start from one side, one pleat there, oh, I'll put the pin back in, the pin there where the mark is, that comes to the center fold, so I pop that in and pop the pin So do you, in there you put all of place. those pins in so you can use them to lift the fabric to where they need to Partly for lifting to. and also partly I knew this was air erasable. It's going to it's disappear, going to disappear in a while. You need so, a water erasable pen. You need one yes. of Jess and Joe's <laughs> a, a fan. Air erasable is great at home, but in the studio with all of our lights, it, it dries super goes, quick. It goes in no time. So box pleat, you're bringing one side in and then you're bringing the other side in. So again, put your pin where the line was and bring it in to the centre. Then you can use that pin pop the pleat in place. So that is your first box pleat in the centre. You can centre. already see that You can see shape that starting in. to form. The other pleats are knife pleats, so that's the one you're aiming for, and this is the one you want to bring over to it. So that is your centre one. So bring that over towards it, pop the pin in, take that other one out. If you can see the lines that are there, you're, joined, you're taking the two dotted lines towards the other one. Okay. So again with that one, bring it over, join it up, pop pin in. So it's creating So your, it's just two either side pleat. of the box, please. Two, either so two sides, knives either side of the box. So you've got, that's your centre one, you folded that towards there. Yeah. That's your next one, you fold those two towards there, the dark line. You fold those two dotted ones towards the dark line. And, and that so is all explained as well. Oh, is it here yes. as well too? Yes. So if you do get, if you get it home and you think, oh, I forgot that oh, bit, you can always go back and watch sense. on YouTube. Yes. But yeah. um, it does say there too as well. So you have got all of those. But it's great that you get that diagram so you can use that as a reference point to go, oh, that's the bit where you, you pull it into the centre. Yeah. I've turned it upside down for you. <laughs> that's okay. You can read upside down now. <laughs> so again, you've got your centre fold there, you've got that as your dotted line, you're bringing that towards your solid line, creating your pleat. Okay. Take that one out. These are all upside down. Of course. <laughs> that is your dotted line. That is your solid line. You bring in your dotted line on the other dotted line, fold towards the solid line, fold it, pop it in. Great. That is all your pleating done. Okay. So I'm now going to base that. Which is, is that the difficult bit? Is that the tricky bit? That is about the tricky bit, yes. Okay, great. So the rest is pretty straightforward if you're used to sewing. I'll sit back and so, relax. <laughs> <laughs> basting that in place. And that is, is there a particular way you should try and catch the fold as you go, like a certain direction? Because obviously some of those, at the moment, you're going to be going over towards the fold. Um, but when you get to these other ones, you're going to be going against the it. The other ones, yeah. yes, yes. So the machine, you've got to make sure that you've you still the got the, those lined up. And don't be too worried about getting your fingers too close to the machine. You know... <laughs> <laughs> 
you can't, don't worry you, if you just you, find your feet because you I'm there. You can hold it's away fun. from the needle and hold yeah, away no, from the know. foot <laughs> and, still, and still get there and then let the machine do the rest. Okay, so just about feeding yes, under the foot. it is. Okay. Don't put your finger under the, <laughs> under the foot. You it's not advisable. <laughs> <laughs> so they are all your pleats put in place. Now you could press that to... Make I sure really like the box pleat in the middle. I like that a lot. That's a nice... It sort of just like it peeps through, doesn't it? Yeah. So then what's next, the band? The next top. bit, adding the band on, and the band should be the same size if you've done all the pleats right. So start at one end, hopefully I've built, brought the right piece. One end there, the other end there. If you find that the bag is slightly bigger, don't worry, just get that centre bit in place. Get that centre part of the top lined up with the uh, with the box pleat. box pleat, which is there. This reminds me when I was at senior school, we had to wear a kilt, <laughs> and my mum used to moan every. She was like, "I hate ironing this kilt because like, <laughs> we couldn't have a normal skirt. We had to wear these." We used to get the Mickey taken out of us. We had green kilt. It's not oh, an no. ideal school uniform, no, is not it? Not a good colour, no. Some people like it, though. Yeah. I like green. Well, we've I had like another green. picture sent in from Barbara. Let's have a look. Oh, this is Barbara's own design. Let's see. What, what... Oh, look at that. Is that um, cross stitch? Is, is it cross stitch? She used a cross stitch and then popped it into a picture frame and then into a bag. What a lovely idea. So the bag kind of acts as an even bigger frame. Oh, they look they're really lovely. But no, and so is the... that on a quilted mat I spy as well? Look at us. I just analysed the whole picture. <laughs> but it looks like I can spy some quilting there as well, Barbara. Thanks for sending that in. But something like that, if you do that sort of detailed work, it's nice to be able to take it out well, with you. Well, you want to use it. You don't just yes. want it to be put you away in a drawer. You don't want it just to be put on a, on, a, on a wall and people might not see it. So this is what we were saying yesterday about take the, it with you. Um, the magnets that you can use to hang quilts up and things. Sometimes you want to, have, you want to display what you've made rather yes. than it just being hidden. So all I've done there, attach that to the, the pleated top. Okay. So you've got one, and there's one I prepared earlier. That will be the back. Okay, perfect. So these two put, are put together. Are you sure this isn't a skirt? <laughs> <laughs> You're very short and very, yeah. very small. Quite a small waist. <laughs> so you would sew that down. I think it goes down the side, yeah. All the way down the side, so you press your seams up, press the seams towards your... The band. The band, yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking of a word then. So press those up. Um, so all the way round, and then what we're going to do at the end is do a... Do the box, not the box, please, the box at the bottom. Oh, to box it in. Yeah, so yeah to get box that it in. So we'll come to that in a minute. So that's the two front pieces. The lining piece. You see there, that box detail that I was talking about. Yes. That, you know, these other scarf then. would be a great beginner project. Where, where sort of would you rank this in terms of experience? I would say beginner on this one. Still this a beginner? First, it's the first bag I've made. And you, <laughs> so confident <laughs> I'd beginner. I have made it, yes. <laughs> so, so yes, you can, you can yes, tackle that. Yeah, simple enough to do. Um, the lining is done differently, it's just gathered. Because you don't need to worry obviously don't about that. No, no, so you're not, not so bothered about it. So what I've done, simple running stitch with a thread. I've marked the centre and the quarter points on your casing or your, your top of the bag. So yeah. I'm going to match that up. Made right sides together, so I'm going to match that up with that. Always put the pins in the wrong side. <laughs> that quarter point, match that up. And match the end up. Same on the other side, quarter points, centre points already there. And at the moment, the lining obviously looks wider, but it's going to gather in. Yes. Yeah. Again, you just gather in the top, don't need to gather in the bottom. Okay. I double stitch at the end there so that it wouldn't pull through, and then you just pull that, and it That's gathers satisfying. your lining to fit. So then even that out, 
If your throat across. broke when you did that, <laughs> you start I know again. that's really bad luck, <laughs> but you'd have to start again. You would just that, start yeah. again, just thread it through again. Um, once you've got your quarter points in, put another one in the centre once you've, you're happy that that's all evened out nicely. Okay. And then stitching that into place. Now, with the handles, would you, do they go in much closer to the end? Am I rushing ahead? Uh, no, they, they get attached about now. So okay. I just pin that there. So what you get then, what you end up with is another one of these. So we end, ultimately you've ended up with four pieces. You've got you've a front got and back pieces. lining and a front and back external yep. of the bag. Yeah. So sew those both together, right sides together. But with this, you leave a gap there. Okay. To turn it all back out the other way. Yes, when I'm with you. it together. I'm with you. Okay. Don't sew that bit, just a, down the sides. And then we're going to cut into here. The bag, the handles, they go on when you put the, the right sides together. So say, for example, that's sewn right sides together. You then put that inside the lining, which so okay. they're all right so sides together. So they're going to end up okay, right sides sandwiched together. between. Yep. The bag handles would go up into there. Good colour match, so those straps. So it is, isn't it? So one gets put in there. Are we nearly done? We are. We've got mm -hmm. a, couple of a couple of minutes. This is the okay. red bundle, by the way, the Heather Bailey bundle. So you also get the um, instructions, you get your thread and the strap there. So that's the one on your screens at the moment. Right, so... It does say on on the bag where to put the straps, so I'm just sort of okay, so just, popping yeah, it on that's quickly right. there. For that's now. all right, so we can get through it. <laughs> okay, and then that gets stitched into the lining when you put it both through, both together. Same on the other side, so that when you get all gets turned through, your handles are that is your handle, and then you would top stitch all the way around the top. And turn it through, and then that becomes really it's reversible. That becomes is it the not? inside of your bag. Yes, totally you could turn, reversible. You could completely turn that out the other yeah. way if you wanted to. Yeah, because the lining, all the stitching for the lining is on the inside. You probably find that there's just some Maybe hand odd, stitching yeah. there to close that gap where you've turned everything through. But you could add a pocket if you wanted to. You could do a little zip pocket. You could add a yep. little slip pocket. I love a pocket. They always they think I'm <laughs> nuts about. I am nuts about pockets. But you could you pop need a pocket. Pockets for things, yeah, you could pop a pocket. On the lining on the inside, you could put one there. Yeah, you could just have it add a little. So you've got that's that's your handle. That's the inside of your bag. You got a little pocket inside there. Yeah. yeah. So you could just slip something in if you wanted to yeah. to, to hide it away. But as you say, reversible as well because uh, you just turn all that inside out. Haven't got your pleating on the outside. No, you could, that's true. You could true. pleat the lining. Yeah, because you've got you enough fabric. Yes. It's exactly the same. You know, it's same the same process. as gather. You're cutting exactly the same. So. Lovely. That so quickly is a bag. This is the, that is this <laughs> done a bag and a scarf in an hour. That's not that's no mean feat. Um, so we've got the green, the red, and we've got a third uh, bundle for the bags as well. So I will recap those. When are you next back in, Paul? Uh, not till February now. Not till February. Uh, so eight, good. Eighth, something a little like that. while. Eighth or ninth, yeah. I think Tula's in on the Tula Pink's in on the seventh of oh, February. Just you just missed. I have to watch. <laughs> I will. Um, and just quickly, would we need a different needle for that handle? That's, I don't think so. No. no. Uh, most needles will sew through a bit of canvas, a bit of jeans. Okay. You can't get jean needles or denim needles. So if you've got one that you If you, you really can, feel yeah. you know, you're struggling with, but you've only got two thicknesses of fabric and that canvas. So that should be so, right. Yeah, to go you'll through. sew through that fine. Perfect. Well, thank no you very problem. much. I'll come and see you in a sec when we're done. Okay, <laughs> let me see you again. Um, so let's have a look at these bundles for this. So, first of all, the um, let's start with the bag bundle. So, the red one that we've just seen in the pleated tote is the Heather Bailey. So, you've got half a metre of this. You've got half a metre of your ivory and half a metre of your solid red. We've got so much fabric on this table, you're not going to be able to see what's what. $27.99, they're all 100% cotton. You've got your instructions as well there, and you also get the strap. Now, all of these bundles come with a bag strap. These are, these are three metres long, um, the straps. And if you just look here, you can use those for 
If you don't use all of it, you can always use it, wrap it around for a duffel or a satchel or a rucksack. And you can also use them with um, D-rings, so you could make them adjustable if you wanted to. So you could lengthen or shorten the strap depending on what bag or, or what body it was being worn on. So that's the red bundle. Next up, we've got the green, which is this one that's been teamed with that lovely sandy, neutral sandy um, coloured strap. And the remainder of that strap that you had left would be great for a beach bag. I just think those colours really lend themselves to sort of maybe a nautical themed, go great actually with the, with the dress I've got on. So let's have a look at the Tula. So you've got the beautiful uh, bird fabric there from Tula Pink. And then you've got two uh, solid greens and your sandy colour strap. And again, your thread and your instructions. So that's the pleated tote in green. We're just waiting on those graphics there. They are just coming in. But also, you can go to the website. Oh, we just, we just flicked through a whole PowerPoint in 10 seconds. You can always go to the website and look at those underneath the live feed of today's show. There are all of the bundles on there. So if you want to recap any of them, you can. Now, we have also got a navy bundle. And that one is also available. And that's kind of like the one that's on the front of the instructions. I'll just show you the fabrics for that. And if you want to go to the website, you can always check it out on there. So you've got two solids and your floral. The graphics upstairs are frozen, so let's do the menu for tomorrow morning so you can see what's coming up on tomorrow's show. Now, I believe John Scott's back in tomorrow, so you've got John tomorrow morning, and Tashi's back next week, but let's see what other guests you've got. And Rebecca Reed's in tomorrow, if I remember rightly, who did both of the designs for these, for the pleated tote and for the scarf. So at 8 o'clock is Liberty Fabric Bundles. That will be a joy, it always is. What's not to love about Liberty? Then at nine o'clock is the carry-all tote bag with Rebecca Reed. Then 10 o'clock is Becky's bag making. Which Becky is that? Becky Belize is in tomorrow morning. We haven't met her before, so she's a newbie. She's a new addition to Sewing Call to tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, so you can check out her bag making. And then at 11 o'clock is the raindrop applique cushion with Rebecca Reed, who is the technical editor of Simply Sewing, one of our sister magazines. Oh, Liberty and Bags. Again, you've got a nice morning. And good old John's back in too, so you're bound to have, bound to have lots of fun. So we've also got the um, Infinity Scarf kits as well this morning. So you've got those three different pleated bags, um, and they all come with the instructions. They all come with two and a half metres of fabric and your threads again. Now, all of the bundles are underneath the auction of today's show. So if you go to the website, sewingquarter.com, then you can look underneath the live feed of today's show. You'll be able to see all of those there. And now we also have spoken a lot. I've mentioned with, with Rebecca Reed from Simply Sewing. We also have um, subscriptions to those magazines on our website. So if you just see that special offer there at the moment, we've got a really great offer for our Sewing Quarter viewers where you could subscribe for three editions of either Love Patchwork and Quilting, Simply Sewing, or today's quilter, you can have three issues of any of those one magazines and you save 72%. It's five pounds. So for a fiver, you get three magazines. Lots of them often come with free patterns or little free gifts as well, but they're packed with inspiration, with design ideas, with interviews with some of the different designers. They give you some insights into different fabrics. And lots of our designers here. So Jess Entwistle, who was in this morning, Joe Carter, they all designed for the magazines as well. So you can see those in there. If you do want to subscribe for those three editions, just five pounds. It's a really great way of maybe trying the magazine to have a little tester, get those delivered to your door. Those are the forthcoming issues that are coming out. So you can try those. Now, let's just show you as well the bundles if you do want to check them out on the website. So if you go to the watch icon on the Sewing Quarter page, that shopping list I was telling you about where all the bundles are listed, we'll show you that now. So just underneath the live feed of today's show. There are all of the products. That's it, if we just scroll down. So you've got the infinity scarves, you've got all of those Ponte Roma fabrics, though so the dress I'm wearing that Paul Clark made today. You've got the Tilda books, the spring and the summer books. You've got all of your bag making bundles. You've got your pom poms, you've got your sew line glue. It's like a big recap of everything we've done this morning. You've got all of your um, Dresden packs as well there for the cushion that Jess did this morning. 
And we've still got a couple, if you're quick, of those, sa of those fantastic essential saver bundles this morning. So the Fat Quarter, um, the anthology bundles, where you've got 36 different Fat Quarters and teamed with some pinking shears. You saved £25 on that bundle this morning. They're in single figures, so if you do want to make the most of that, that offer today, you will need to check out your basket on that. Thanks for your company the last couple of days. It's been great to see you. Great to be back from Pantoland, and I'll be back in again very soon. I'm off home to see my, uh, to see my little new puppy, Teddy, but I'll be back in shortly. Enjoy tomorrow with John and Becky, and I hope you have a lovely afternoon. Bye. Get ready for a day of sewing delights on Saturday the 20th of January. Join me, John Scott, and Becky Blees, and Rebecca Reed this Saturday morning for not one, but two fantastic projects from Simply Sewing magazine. At 9am, Rebecca Reed will be showing us the casual and chic carry-all bag, exclusively available as a kit at Sewing Quarter, and first seen in Simply Sewing issue 38. This easy-to-create bag is the perfect accessory for weekends away. And at 11am, you'll be singing in the rain when Rebecca creates a charming raindrop cushion using a selection of pretty blue hued fabrics. It will be the perfect accompaniment to your favourite chair. So don't miss these stunning projects on Saturday the 20th of January, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 678.